Because if you're just out of city, then you, you should be a little bit closer. You'd have a bus car. Oh, man, that'd be way bigger than gas. That's the Mexican split country kids announcing school on the duck. Yeah. Here's what you can do. You know, there's no ladders for free. Do not ever get on the ladder for free. I learned that when we were hanging our Christmas lights. My buddy Mike oh, you hang, you hang Christmas lights? Thank you. Well, Ollie Twinkle, Clark, you're not Twinkle. Yeah. <laughs> I got to the top of the ladder and I was about to hop over the <laughs> hop over the gutter and hop on the roof with my buddy Mike. I don't know, know Marlo. I got to the top of the ladder and I'm like, no. And I was like, Mike, I'm gonna stand down here and watch you close them off. You got to the top. Where are you shaking? Okay, boys, we'll be turning back to practice on the high end.
about Brandon Barrett from down there. Okay, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulty this morning. For whatever reason, um, system resources on the computer were just not uh, not keeping up with uh, what was going on here. Uh, it's worked all weekend, but all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, poof, right when we're getting ready to get going. But uh, my name is Mike Flanagan. I'd like to welcome you in to the 2023 Hammer Holiday Doubles. Action underway in progress. Game one of 12 for you here today. Joined by Lee Bedoris and Andrew Orff in the booth as well here today. Welcome, guys. Good, Good morning. morning, Mike. We've got a loaded field here today. We've got a lot of great teams that made it into this top 12. We had 46 bowlers per squad. We had an A, B, C, D, and E squads. And then a five-game round of 46 last night. All pinfall carries over. And we should be in store for... Some great competition here today. Making it into the top 12 in this event is very prestigious. And uh, all the bowlers this morning were just buzzing with excitement. With just even making it into this cut. Would like to take a minute to thank our uh, sponsor, Hammer. Of course, uh, Hammer has been the sponsor of this event for the last eight years, going strong. They've done a couple of cool things here for this one. First of all, you have an opportunity to win a hazmat and a new blue hammer. You can do that by going over to InsideBowling.com and clicking on the banner that you see right there, and you can be entered in to win that. We will be giving away each ball on Monday. You'll get an email letting you know the winners of the hazmat and the new blue hammer bowling ball giveaways. Thank you to Hammer for that, for interacting with you, the audience, and giving you an opportunity to win some great products right before Christmas. Also, there are 11 bowling balls on our website at InsideBowling.com that are discounted, and you can head over there and take a look at that underneath the holiday deals portion of the website. And last but not least, if you're looking for some hoodies and T-shirts, we sell those as well at InsideBowling.com. You can save 20% through Monday with promo coupon code HOLIDAY. Also, would like to thank Matt Schellebarger and his entire staff here at St. Clair Bowl for hosting this event yet again and having us here. So, guys, right in front of us on lanes... 35 and 36, 37 and 38. We've got the team of Adam Barda and Elizabeth Johnson, along with AJ Johnson. And his local partner, Lee, that you know a lot about this guy, don't you? Yep, Stephen Jarvis, known him for a long time. No Sinclair Bowl inside and out. Not surprised to see him. He uh, and AJ both at McKendree University, as did our special guest. It's called a segue. Yeah. Andrew Orff. Mm -hmm. Mike, Andrew thinks his headphone sounds a little bit loud. It's, okay, so, so here is, uh, just for future reference for everybody here, these are each individual channel right here. So this is number two, so you can adjust up and down. That's Perfect. you right there. So okay. just go ahead and move that to whatever you like, Beautiful. and you'll be good to go there. All right. And then right next door, we've got Cameron Doyle, bowling with Packy Hanrahan, and we've got uh, Tony Lambert bowling with one Mike Wolf. No surprise to see Mike Wolf here, considering he's the greatest bowler ever to lace him up. And then uh, over on lanes 41 and 42 and 43 and 44, we've got stream number two. We've got two streams for you here at St. Clair Bowl. I see we've got uh, Chris Johnson over there. And who's his partner again this year? McLean? Chris Johnson's partner is Tommy McLean. They are from Maryland. Yep, no I would say, a long time. I would say the great state of Maryland, but I've never been there. Yeah. Nothing against it. And Lee, also on Channel 2, who are they taking on? 
So their opponents are Daniel there. Farish and Brandon Flora from Louisville. And then right next door on 43 and 44, it looks like we have Cleveland and Lay, the locals, and Martell and McGaney. Yep. Uh, Mike Lay said their uh, team shall be known as Cleveland and Cleveland until further notice. <laughs> Because uh, Mike rode Matt's coattails to make it. Matt started something like uh, eight a plenty for the first three last night. And then uh, I will invert our main feed here. Our leaders, Pollock and Biondo. See Eric Pollock right there on the left side of your screen, taking on Thompson and Buttriff. Greg Thompson Jr., Jacob Buttruff. Buttruff should be in plastic most of the day. He's throwing a hammer axe. Pretty interesting note to watch him throw plastic. We've also got Jerome and Howard next door taking on Jared Thompson and Kyle Troop. Troop and Thompson looking to go two for two back to back right here on Inside Bowling. They won the Nightmare Doubles just a couple months ago right here on our network. And Kyle Troop had never bowled the Nightmare Doubles and won that one. I talked to him earlier this week. He said, wouldn't it be a sweet repeat right here if he were to win the first time he's ever entered the Hammer Holiday Doubles? So a lot of storylines happening out there. we got some locals. We've got a lot of different states represented here, big fan bases. we got a large group watching already this morning. It will continue to grow. I'd like to welcome everybody into our chat room. Thanks for being here, everybody. Buckle up, it's gonna be a long day of bowling, but it's gonna be a great day of bowling. A lot of high scores, they're bowling on the house shot. We've got Andrew Orff and uh, Lee Doris here to bring in the action here uh, throughout the day. And the count, Mike, for the 24 bowlers that made it, 13 are right-handed. So it's almost an even split. Andrew, you bowled this one. You made it into the round of 46 last night. Mm -hmm. What did you see from this oil pattern going across the house, and how did they play down on this end? Um, so I guess we can start kind of last year. Um, they used the same uh, oil procedure as they did this year. The, uh, the custodian ion, which is the red machine on the low end, and then their walker on the high end. And I thought last year that they played significantly tighter on the low end, and they hooked more on the high end. Um, typically, in my opinion, I've bowled a lot in this building, I think the high end of the building is normally tighter if they were to use the same machine all the way across. But the high end hooked more this year, but I didn't think they were as extreme as they were last year. So def definitely a, a noticeable difference, but nowhere near as much as yeah. last year, in my opinion. Is that what you guys yeah. kind of see across the board? Yeah. And this morning, they used the low end machine. Up for here. match play okay. for the second year in a row because it tends to play tighter. Right. We're bowling 12 round robin match play games. We need, we got, at least it's a better chance to hold up. Correct. Yeah, that was a decision we made last year. I was talking to Jerry and uh, we just we just sprung that on the competitors and they were all in favor of it. So we're doing it again here this year. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, um, we've got a lot of strikes right here. That's why I switched back over to these two pairs. And kind of a funny story, you know, Mike Wolf and I have a very special relationship. We like to give each other the business, and we've been friends for quite a while. And yesterday I made the joke when he was in the booth that he, because he was wearing a blue pullover, a light blue pullover, that he should throw the new blue hammer the entire block and wear the pullover. <laughs> so last night he threw the new blue hammer, the first game in bowl 270. Yeah. He proceeded to bowl 850. Uh, I think he got out of that ball after the first game. But what I find funny is he's throwing it again here the very first game. Yeah. The new blue hammer. But which, no but no pullover. No pullover, which I'm a little shocked. But he does have the light blue Brunswick uh, embroidery on his black <laughs> shirt today. It's nice to see Mike dress up for the occasion today and actually put on a polo shirt. So we do appreciate <laughs> Mike showing up in a big way. And Mike is showing up with the front nine already mm -hmm. this morning. You know, to add to that, Mike, I saw Jerry this morning, Jerry Anderson, before I came into the booth here, and he's like, hey, look at this field. Who are you going to take to win? And I said, you know, I think I'm going to take Packy and Cam Doyle, and they both have the front eight right now. So, yeah. Looking good. Yeah, my pick today is Buttruff and, and, and Greg Thompson, and, and it's because they are going to start hooking a lot, and I think Buttruff is going to have the best look out of all the lefties the last four games because he's going to be in that plastic ball. What do you think, Lee? 
I'm going to take. It's a hard one. I'm going to take. This is a good one. I'm torn between Biondo and Pollock and Thompson and Troop. Okay. A lefty and a righty. Biondo, when it gets nasty later, can counter it with ball speed. Troop, when it gets ugly later, can counteract it with he's one of the best right-handed bowlers in the world and can play as far left as he needs to. Okay. I'm. We're going to play an exacto box. Yeah, sounds good. And I'm being corrected in the chat. The axe is not plastic. It's weak reactive. But it 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 just watch when he throws that ball. <laughs> it, it goes straight. That's all you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's very kind mm -hmm. at the at the back. I actually feel like the player oh boy. that played the lanes the best um, yesterday coming through uh, was Adam Barda. I, I think yeah. the, the low the low diff balls on the hooking into the building was uh, kind of the kind of the play yesterday, and he was using uh, obsession tour with a lot of games on it. Mm -hmm. Adam controlling the pocket, and as they oh. started hooking, he just kept throwing it harder and harder, projecting it down the lane. Adam Barda, it's great to have him in the field. And he and Liz should be tough to contend with here today as well. I just know when they start really hooking and when Liz has to get in, she does lose some carry down the stretch. But it doesn't mean that Elizabeth Johnson and Adam Barda couldn't take this thing home either. And, of course, A.J. Johnson, he loves this place. He's going to be striking. Everybody's going to be striking. But nobody's striking more right now than the Pac-Man and the Cam-Man. We saw 599 on this pair yesterday. Mike Khan, 299. So I got a question, Mike. Yeah. Um, I didn't really like this pair yesterday. How have the scores been overall, other than the 599? Feast or famine. Feast or famine. Yeah. Okay. Feast or famine on yep. this pair. And right right now we're seeing a lot of yep. feasting. And in uh, Lambert right now, the famine. <laughs> yeah. Friday night, Mike, this pair got brutal. Yeah. Yesterday, it, it was much more well behaved. And today, although I, I had to draw my second map of the weekend for Tony <laughs> Lambert <laughs> after he has flagged three seven bins. I, I tried to tell him you are here for the seventh, but he says right now he's here. He's I'm, I'm looking around. I'm, I don't know where all the cameras are right now. I'm looking for Packy's cameraman because you know he's got the he's got his vlog right, and behind, right behind us. Right behind us. Mike Mike Wolf rings the ten. Looks extremely upset about it. <laughs> Packy looking for uh, an opening 300 game for all his fans. So they subscribe to the house bowling, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he only he needs to get to about two hundred fifty thousand subs. Hey, not bad, not bad, not bad. I really think he should have saved yesterday's jerseys for today, but that's okay. So Packy, Packy threw the uh, Brunswick Rattler that game, and that is Mike a Vera Papa six hundred. He threw three hundred the last game of the Casters round. He sure did, and he threw three hundred. This morning, and I think Game Kyle, one. I think Kyle Troop kind of, kind of got him going too, because uh, there were some folks cheering for Packy as Cam's looking to double up here and Front make it back to back three hundreds, <laughs> bowl six hundred out of the gate. The thing is, to have the high game on this pair this weekend, he needs the next two. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's incredible. Troop, uh, Troop was calling was, was calling him out last night a little bit. Uh, there was there, there was some noise happening, and and Kyle said, uh. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and um, this morning, Packy says, oh, yeah, well, here we are here tomorrow, and here's three bills, and his partner Cam's coming right up behind saying, hey, I'm here. I'm here too. Cam, a local St. Louis resident now. He's a local. Going phase two, I believe. Mm -hmm. Front 11. Man. Mike Wolf is such a great guy. He he's a ball rep for Brunswick, and he also lines up uh, the opposite team he's bowling against. So <laughs> the, the 600 can be credit to Mike Wolf. <laughs> Mike says, "Let me get these scores, guys. You guys just keep striking." <laughs> 
So here we go. Is there any pressure here on Cam? I mean, I don't think so. No? I don't think he's been here enough. This is, I mean, we're looking at the 600 opening game, gentlemen. Yeah. This, is t this ties a world record with a strike. It oh, no. 599 is all we're going to have off of this pair. That's two 599s on lanes 37 and 38. Also, the pair that Pete Weber bowled Walter Ray on the last ABC telecast right here at St. Clair Bowl. Two 599s, one pair in one weekend. If only the proprietors around to get this pair a little easier so they could carry all these well, Oh, wait, there he is. Let's take a look at that shot again from the, the one non-strike, of course, we're going to highlight here from Cam. Watch the pen action, everybody. Looks good off his hand. He didn't look nervous. Might have just been a hair firm. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, it was pretty good. It was pretty good for a possible 600 game. So looking around at the other scores, it was 475 for Barta and Johnson. A.J. Johnson and Steven Jarvis, their opponents. Looks like they are going to finish out with Four, 502, 502, so they get the W. Of course, Packy and Cam get the W over Lambert and Wolf. We will jump out of here and head over to our other matches taking place. Greg Thompson and Jacob Butcheriff. Greg Thompson off to a pretty slow start here. That looked pretty good, though. Looks like he finishes with 205. Buttriff can finish with 223, which can get him to 428. Really need him to turn off the dashboard graphics today. <laughs> I'm driving crazy. Jared Thompson can bowl 201. Kyle Troop only 202. So low scoring down here in this bay. So uh, quick chat with, with Cam and Packy. The uh, quotes, which I will translate for Cam, what he thought of his last shot was terrible. Yeah. Said he hasn't felt that much juice throwing a shot in a long time. Really? Yeah. It's like 600. I don't know. I just figured Cam, I know he's a younger guy, but I figured he's been there longer, you know, been here enough. I didn't think he'd be too nervous. But I. Jerome and Howard going to get the win over Troop and Thompson here. And a low scoring match. Pollock opens with one, 188. 188. Mm -hmm. 246 left here for Biondo. It's either 188 or 185. I can't see. That's 188. Eight. Eight. So 246 and 188 puts him at 36 over. Would that be right? Did I do that right? No, that's not right. 46, 46, 46 minus 12. 12 is 34. 34, and we've got uh, 203. So butcher striking makes beyond those strike. Yeah, 220, so that'd be uh, yeah, 20, 28 over here. I think Brandon's got this. This is a 40 pin shot. We talked to Eric Pollock in the booth last night and he talked about how Brandon just absolutely whacks him and just throws dead BBs right up the track. That's what he does every year here and it does so well. They've made they bowled this five times, and they've made the top 12 four out of five times. And he throws the same ball every year, too, Mike. What is it? It's a storm lock. A storm lock? Yeah. Nice start uh, for Farish and Flora. They've... Pulled a nice 500 on 41 and 2 very late yesterday to help get them into the top 12. They're going to do it again first thing this morning. Yeah, this bay finishing uh, last. You've got uh, Cleveland and Lay. 255 for Cleveland. Lay can get to 208, it looks like. Now 197. Martell and McGaney can shoot 59 59. They're going to get the win there. Guys, I'm going to let you take this home. I'm going to go to the front desk and see if they'll turn off the dashboard graphics and also Sounds swap good. out the graphics on channel two. 
a uh, Lee uh, Packy just asked me if they get a Christmas present. Yes. They do. Yes. All right. We well, got to have them open that. All right. So here, if you want to turn up, turn three down and four up. Just answering your question, Packy, you are still eligible for Christmas presents. As long as there's Christmas presents left, and that includes your 300 to finish last night. So I gotta go get. So you get presents. two. All right, I'll probably get them in the middle of this game. Take whenever you're ready. We got plenty. Thank you. <laughs> so have you been? Uh, has everybody been opening theirs on camera this year, like they did in the previous yep. years, or? Yep, uh... yep, most of them have. Some have been busy. It's just personal preference. Mm -hmm. What they gotta wait anyway. So the one thing I noticed, Andrew, you know, you, you do the cashers round in tournaments like this because you've got different squads. You want to try and at least give everybody the opportunity to bowl mm -hmm. against each other on the at the same set at the same time. Only two of the top twelve changed between the end of qualifying and this round. Really, Johnson and Barda came from twenty first. Farish and Flora came from 22nd. Mm. Everybody else was in the top 12 after qualifying. Yeah. And it's still there. And it was pretty close. It's not like these 12 had pulled clear. Right. It, it was very, very close. And yet here we are with 10 out of the 12 teams. I was looking at the scores a little bit last night. I got home a little late. But didn't Martell and McGaney only have about 150 over in the in the cashers round, I thought they were. So they, I thought they made. They so did. they were. They went from 754 to 951. Okay. So they averaged just a touch under 220. Yeah. But when you're in second after qualifying, you, you got give a yourself room, some room for sure. Yeah, in the last game, they they, they jumped around on uh, Andre uh, Gonzalez and uh, Andrew Anderson. Mm -hmm. they, they were they were in 12th and. Uh, that last game, Martel, uh, his team, they they bowled enough to get in, and but they just snuck in. They're kind of bowling on a free roll here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there were there were only a few teams that were really close um, to the number. I mean, you could have popped five somewhere and jumped, but you had Anderson and Gonzalez and Lamond and Timmerman crossing together. Mm -hmm. They started 39th and 40th. Yeah, they were 12th and. 14th or 15th after four and hit the pair that obviously wasn't very good. They went plus 12 combined. Yeah. All four of them. Mm -hmm. and Guys, uh, let's talk about our game two matchups here. We'll take you around the horn. We've got, uh, looks like Kyle Troop and Jared Thompson taking on Liz Johnson and Adam Barda. That's over on lanes 29 and 30. Over on 31 and 32, we have A.J. Johnson and Stephen Jarvis. They are taking on I'm looking. Thompson yeah. and Buttruff. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And then uh, we look the bottom left of your screen in our picture in picture. Lanes 35 and 6, 37 and 8. Who do we have, Lee? Martel McGaney against Jerome and Howard. And then we have Johnson and McLean against Cleveland and Lay. Or Cleveland and Cleveland. And then on uh, channel 2 that we have on YouTube here today, take a quick glance. Down there are matchups. Who do we have there, Lee? Beyondo Pollock, Doyle Hanrahan, going for the unlikeliest of consecutive three bills, three in a row. Farish and Flora, Lambert and Wolf in an all Kentucky home mm -hmm. match. Thank you, Lee. At least they work in Kentucky. I think one of them actually lives in Indiana, but mm -hmm. close enough. Andrew, it's nice to have you here in the booth with us here today. Pretty excited about our partnership with Rayors Pro Shop on InsideBowling.com. Again, everybody, don't forget, you can go register to win a free Hammer Hazmat bowling ball or a new blue hammer with the giveaway that we're doing with our friends over at Hammer. And also, we're now selling bowling balls, bags, accessories, and soon-to-be shoes. Those are a little bit tougher to get on the website. Uh, but we have all that at InsideBowling.com now as we have entered into the e-tail space. And we're looking forward to Andrew. Uh, eventually here in phase two of the rollout, mm -hmm. Andrew's going to be able to drill bowling balls for folks. Yeah, I mean, hopefully hopefully that's the plan. I don't exactly know how we're going to do all that to start with, but uh, I'm I got looking, a plan. I'm looking forward to it. 
I'm looking forward to it as well. And Andrew's also been appearing in some videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, he's on Storm Staff, and he reviews Storm Bowling Balls. So, uh, and Roto Grip, of course, in 900 Global. We got to shoot some more. We've been very busy, but uh, look for Andrew to be on our uh, on our Inside Bowling uh, YouTube channel quite a bit in 2024. So, thank you for that, bud. Yeah, like I said, I, I look forward to it. Um, video making is not really my uh, expertise, so I'm, you know, kind of leaning on you to show me what's up with all that. But, you know, so far it's fun. I know we only have a couple videos out there, but, you know, I, I think it's going to be a really good 2024. So. And we did beat Packy in the strike challenge. So oh, yeah. Uh, and him and Brent Bowers, the toe, the Wichita toe, I think is what they call him. <laughs> so that was fun. That yeah, was enjoyable. For sure. And you don't have to strike every time. Yeah. Sometimes the most valuable ball videos are when they tell you, yeah. this maybe isn't what this is for, mm -hmm. but this is what this is for, oh, and I then did, go do that. I'll be doing mm -hmm. plenty of that. <laughs> I'll be able to tell you what no bowling balls are for. Can't believe Dole's sending me equipment right. for me to review. Uh, Thompson and uh, Troop, you know, they just saw 599 bowled, and they're like, you know what, why don't we bowl 600 this game? And so far, they still have it left, as they both have opening triples. These uh, pairs are a little bit ahead of uh, 35 through 38, as well as lanes 41 through 44. Mm -hmm. Lee is going to go down and do a uh, score correction for Chris Johnson. Lee is the jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> He's pretty good at the horse racing, though. Yeah. Him, him and my dad are pretty good at that. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that, Lee? I did not. He said, you're the jack of all trades, master of none. I said, you're pretty good at the horse racing, uh, just like my daddy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the jack of all trades part is very true. Master of none is sometimes true. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes more often than I. Yeah, such is life. Eric Lettig is disappointed. No chance of 600 on 37 and 8. Yeah, he was in the booth for that big game yesterday. That was a that was a fun day. Fun day. I love my fair share of grueling patterns and and challenging patterns, but this is just a fun one here to watch everybody come in and strike around the holidays. Absolutely. And look look at who we have in the in the top 12, too. Uh, a lot of these teams would be ones that you would have picked for the top 12, and no matter the condition. No doubt. No of course, doubt there were a lot of really good teams that, that did not make it. Uh, we even had some miss the, t the top 46. Uh, you know, we were really surprised that, that, that A.J. Rice isn't here today, and that he didn't even make the cut. Normally, he is a shoe-in for this. Um, I hate to call you out, AJ, but uh, you know we just we just think every year when you bowl and he bowl with Gene Perez that those guys would be a factor or at least uh, make a run at making this top 12. You know, to add to that as well, um, I crossed with Go Hagen and Jordan Horns. That's another and, good one. Yeah, you know, they're always they're always right there in just about every tournament they bowl. So I was uh, you know, figuring they would be in there as well, but you know, it wasn't their weekend. And just in the so we had 12 teams cash but not make. Uh, cut squad last night include fantastic bowlers like Tony Resnick, Tom Adcock, Jason Queen, Jake Peters, Austin Bolds, Ronnie Fujita, Rich Blake, Pete Weber, Brandon, Brandon Bone, yeah. Aaron McCarthy, Dupree Dickey. Cash but not make the top 46. It's just a yeah. loaded field. I, I think we should just spend a lot less time in the future worrying about these lines. Just look for Bruce David Jr. and Tim Hyman. Every year, <laughs> they're within three spots of one of the numbers. They were 55th. The cash number was 58th. I know before they've been the last team in or the first team out or maybe both. Right. You just find them, and that's where you that's where you need to be. We saw Liz Johnson uh, miss a 10-pin. That's very uncharacteristic for Liz. And we still see Troop and Thompson are still mm. perfect. Adam Bard is starting to get a lot of change of direction through the pins. He'll either increase his ball speed or move a little bit left and keep his break point the same. A 
Barta is usually uh, quite a bit ahead of the moves. He's a very smart player. He's got so many 300 games, but I think a lot of people don't really hone in on just how smart Adam Barta is with less is more, but he's got enough rev rate that he really doesn't lose much carry compared to, you know, the big two-handers, the younger players. Barta can strike with the best of them. That's why he's got so many 300 games. He's got that little trick roll that he does. And when it comes off the end of the pattern, he's got the ball rolling very forward through the pins, which gives him a much better chance of uh, having a higher strike percentage. No 300 for Packy, Mike. We'll have to spare him first frame. Okay. He shall be disciplined appropriately. Again, if you're just joining us, what Lee is talking about, Packy finished with 300 last night in the five-game advancers round, semifinals. And uh, here today he opened up with 300 in the first game with his partner Cameron Doyle, who bowled 299, 599 again on lanes 37 and 38. And there's Barta with the adjustment. Now he's, now he's ringing 10. So run over the rack for a 9-pin on the right lane and a fallback 10-pin there. And Greg Thompson there, 4-9. They got off to a very slow start, 0-1 in match play. And now this game here, Greg Thompson, after starting with the front five, leaves the 4-9. That's just not fun when that happens. Kyle and Jared, they are like, hey, 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 599. Halfway there, Mike. That's right, living on a prayer, man. So I'm sure it's been touched on 8 million times in the booth this weekend, but. Um, have you guys talked much about the some lanes with uh, new aero panels as well as yep. new head panels? Yeah, I mean, we mentioned it. Okay. Um, that, you know, the second panel has been replaced. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. That means they're supposed to hook more or less because it's a fresh panel. You would think less, but. Right. Yeah, I do know, like I'm, like I said, I'm sure you mentioned, every, every lane should have new aero panels. There, oh. there is some lanes, though, that have new head panels as well. And some are with the pair. Some are just one lane or the other. Um, I don't know how well it comes up on the screen, but on, for example, 29 and 30, they, they have new head panels and new aero panels as well, whereas 31 and 2, C lane 31 there, does not have a new head panel, and 32 does. So... There's, so these last two blocks, though, 35 through 38, 41 through 44, there's none of those extra panels. Yeah, so. But you can see the difference where Jacob Butcher oh, is absolutely. standing yes. versus the lanes on both sides. Correct. So one would think a newer panel would mean that it's cleaner through the front, probably sharper off of it down lane. I really didn't notice them being too much different, even on the lanes that, you know, for example, 31 and 32, where one has a new head panel, one has a new, or one doesn't. But that's just something to look out for. Some people may be tricked, you know, if they didn't know that and they figured it out going in. So I mean, it's pretty obvious just by looking at it oh, that right. it looks different. Absolutely. Kyle Troop on the front seven. What did Jared Thompson leave? Uh, the I missed seven it. pin and uh, the four hit hit it. The, the four went into the wall and it just it just kind of wiggled a little bit. That's when I said, "Oh." Looks like my computer is officially recovered here, boy. This morning oh, that good. was that was. Uh, that was weird. The fans were blowing. Everything was going crazy, and I didn't do anything different. It was weird. As soon as I sat down, that's when that happened. Yep. So. Yeah. It's all on you. Mm -hmm. Black cloud. Packy seems to be immune to it, though. <laughs> nice shot there by Elizabeth. 
We're up to 19 three hundreds for the weekend. 19, huh? I would have bet the under on that. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Last well, year there was not that many. If I wouldn't have been here, it would have been 35. <laughs> I stopped so many of them just by noticing, hey, he's got the front seven down to 43. Oh, turn eight. Yep. Thanks for coming. Do you guys have a record of how many there were last year? I, I want to say there was less than 10. It was certainly down, but I think we certainly got to 10. You think so? Just quantity. You, you think so? I want to say there was like seven. I, I really don't think there was that many. Do you remember it all, Mike? No. Uh, I, dude, I do so many events, I can't, I can't keep it straight. All right, looks like we got a game one scoring update here. I guess I'll let Big Lee or Mike you, go you, after. You, you go for it. Welcome. All right. Hopefully I don't Get. butcher this. Do you normally start at the bottom or do you go from the top start down? Start at the top. All right. All right. So after one, we have Brandon Biondo and Eric Pollock still leading at plus 13.37. In second, we have Cam Doyle and Packy Hanrahan at 12.89 over. In third, Rich Jerome and Jason Howard at 12.20 over. In fourth, Stephen Jarvis, A.J. Johnson, plus 12.15. In fifth, Liz Johnson, Adam Barda at an even 1,200 over. In sixth, Greg Thompson, Jacob Buttruff, 11.88 over. Seventh, Jared Thompson, Kyle Troop, 11.29 over. In eighth, Tony Lambert and Mike Wolf, 11.21 over. In ninth, Daniel Farish, Brandon Flora, 11.10 over. In 10th, Chris Johnson, Tommy McLean at 10.97. In 11th, Michael Martell, Pat McGainey, 10.78 over. And rounding out the top 12, the hometown boys, Matt Cleveland, Mike Lay at 10.22 over. How'd I do there? Not bad? Not bad. Not bad. Good, and I've got it on the bottom right of the screen for everybody now as well. If you want to take a look at those standings, there they are. So I know we got a lot of bowling to go, guys, but uh, I'm still gonna take uh, I'm gonna take my bet. I'm, I'm gonna go with Cam Doyle and, and Packy to win this thing. Still, <laughs> Lee, so. Lee, I know you got all the numbers over there. What, what where did Packy and Lee and uh, Packy and uh, Cam come in at? Where, where, where did they qualify? They after qualifying, they were in third. After cut squad, they were in seventh, and they have went from seventh to second this morning. That's what so I was looking for. One, 229 over, don't hurt. No. So they came into today 213 behind. And that number is now 48. Mm -hmm. The other team on the move this morning, I mean, it's all relative when you've got 599 plus 30 <laughs> around somewhere, <laughs> is Farish and Flora. They had 500 the first game with the victory. They're down on our second stream. Both have a string going. Matt Cleveland has the front eight now. But we're going to take you down here as these matches are going to finish first. Adam Barta and Liz Johnson. 257 left for Barta. Elizabeth finishes out after missing that 10 pin. Throws the back half of the game here and then some. Last seven for 245. They can get to what, 502? Mm -hmm. But that's not going to win because Jared Thompson just bowled 264. 60, yeah, 68. Eight. 268. Oh, 268. Thank yeah. you. And uh, Kyle Troop here can bowl 300. He's already in pretty deep. He is. Kyle Troop has such great touch at the bottom of the swing, and he's not throwing it super hard. That's that's the key to Kyle. I talked to him about this. He goes, you know, I like to get in a little bit deeper than everybody else on this St. Clair house shot here. That's what he that's what he saw so far, and he was like, I like to get the ball to tip. I can create a I can create about a dollar bill at the end of the lane, meaning a big spot down lane, and it doesn't matter how he gets there. 
and he can and he can get it to hit from from anywhere hitting the dollar bill down lane. Some people got to hit a dime, right. not on a house shot, no, mostly a half dollar. But what Kyle's been able to do is being left of everyone. It's kind of the Belmo factor on tour, right? You know, when you when you're playing, when you cross with Belmo, he's left of you, which means if you it, it creates no hold for you. Kyle Troop's got the best hold out of probably the 24 players we have in the field right now. He has created more hold, and with his touch down lane, he is able to get that ball back from even when he misses right, and then when he when he aces one, it's 10 back every time. Kind of like that. Yeah, it's yep, just it's, it's a thing of beauty. And Chris Barnes talked about this about five or six years ago. Troop really elevated his game. Uh, about six, seven years ago, and Barnes really recognized it. He does a great breakdown of it. And he talks about how Kyle used to just be right up the back of the ball and not quite one-dimensional like a Eugene McCune or, or a two-trick pony, but when he developed the touch and the speed and the ability to, to, get it, to, to adjust his release just a little bit, he became a much more versatile player, and that's when his career has skyrocketed. Remember, this guy won over $500,000 just a couple years ago setting the all-time single-season record on the PBA Tour. I'm happy to have him in the field here, and he's happy to have the front 11 right here. And I know he wants a Christmas present bad, <laughs> real bad. Oh, that's Look, in. That's well, in. watch. Oh, no, not enough. Oh, that was almost. Too got much, away too with much of a miss, but great game for Kyle. You know, Mike, it's funny. Um, I had never heard of Kyle Troop about five to seven years ago, and the first time I ever saw him was at your tournament at at Tropicana Lanes. Remember the IB Open? That was his first, like... That was a big win. A huge win. Like, kind of like a he breakout had, thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, he had won some regionals, which yeah. were big wins. And at the time, he really liked the black hammer. Mm -hmm. he, he was using urethane back then. Mm -hmm. Of course, he signed with Storm, went on to use the pitch black. But, yeah, he won the IB Open. And then he won in Oklahoma his very first uh, PBA Tour title mm -hmm. just about two months later. Mm-hmm. This other match here, Lee, 229, 211. So it's very close. So that would be uh, 440. You got 258 and 201. That would be 459. So it's if everybody strikes out, it's a one-pin match. AJ Johnson. They can they can get to 459. But their opponents can get to 460. 460, yeah, one pin, and you got, you got. Here we go. What, what's, what's better than having Jacob Buttruff against AJ Johnson right here, having to strike out for their teams? You know, if we can, real quick, let's go over to 41 and two. It's a really close game with Packy and oh. Cam. And this, this, Paul one's, again. this one's going to finish first. first. Okay. So Buttruff left the six pin. So that'll give the match to Johnson, AJ, and Jarvis. Pollock in the Bucks for 57. Packy, 226. Here you go, we are there now. So it's going to be a win for Biondo and Pollock. Most well, certainly looks that way. Well, they got 496 left plus 30. Help them keep their lead there. If you want to continue watching these matches, you can watch it on Channel 2 right here on YouTube. You can head over to Channel 2 to watch the conclusion of those matches. Mike, are you familiar with the marketing strategy of raving fans? You want people just to become fans of you so much that they just tell their friends nonstop about how wonderful your company is? Yeah. Matt Cleveland has raving fans. Okay. Matt Cleveland has a bowling team in a league around here named after him. He's not on it. <laughs> the team is called Matt Cleveland. 279. So 
So we got winners in the books for Biondo and Pollock, Thompson and Troop, Jarvis and Johnson, Farish and Flora, and Cleveland and Lay. And over on 35 and 6, Jerome and Howard are ahead by 90. Over Martell and McGinney. Biondo did strike out for 496. Hanrahan and Doyle. Well, you're not going to repeat 599, but they shot 440. Yeah, I don't know what I was looking at earlier. It was definitely it it felt closer than that. I don't, it, it wasn't that close. 490 to 440. My apologies. Still learning. You stick around this bowling thing long enough, yeah. you might. Uh, you'll pick up a thing or two. I have faith. And, folks, I, I have been checking on the chat a little bit, but uh, Dennis is right in the chat. When it comes to Sunday, it, it really is about the bowlers. Um, I know all of qualifying, we, we, we interact with you guys like crazy. We talk about Barry Manilow. We do a lot of crazy stuff. But when we get down to the top 12, it's really about these players and, and showcasing what they're doing, uh, giving you as much insight as we possibly can, um, talking about all the bowling that's happening in front of us. Of course, we will play a little grab ass here and there, but uh, for the most part, it's all about the bowling in front of us. So if you guys have any questions or anything in the chat or something something is, uh, technically needs to be addressed, I, I do get to those. Um, but, but please, let just want you to know that we're not ignoring you guys in the chat. We love you. Um, you guys are awesome. There's a lot of great conversation taking place in there. Um, we've got a lot of viewership right now. I mean, it's very difficult to keep up with the chat when we have 1,000-plus people right now. We're 1,271 people interacting in the chat. Um, and I want to thank Dennis and some of the others that have been around for a long time that, that kind of moderate the chat and spend some time in there. Um, so, guys, just want to let you know, thank you so much for being in the chat. But... I am going to be checking it a lot less today as I want to make sure that it, we are technically sound and we're making sure we're displaying things like the standings on the screen and we're keeping up to date with everything that's happening on here in the building. So thank you for uh, understanding that. 525 for Lake for Cleveland and Cleveland. Although Mike, Mike helped that game. He's at 246. Mm -hmm. Still riding Matt's coattails, though. So we got two wins for Biondo and Pollock, two wins for Jerome and Howard, two wins for Jarvis and Johnson, two wins for Farish and Flora. Mm -hmm. 30 bonus for the team, no individual pins. Game three matchups in order, 29 through 32. McLean and Johnson against Jerome and Howard. Biondo and Pollock. Against Farish and Flora, the uh, unstoppable force against the immovable object. One of them will have to. It could tie, I guess. Mm -hmm. 35 through 8, Cleveland Lay against Thompson Troop. 37 8, Barta Johnson against Martel McGaney. And on the high bay on the second stream, Lambert Wolf, Thompson Buttruff. And then we've got Jarvis Johnson with Doyle Hanner. It's just a, le a league schedule, so essentially a 12-team, 11-week league. Mm -hmm. So you got a, a lot of teams that will just slide a pair over. You don't have a complete jumble going every which way. but Jerome and Howard are obviously the team that made it here that I know the least amount about. Um, that seems to happen quite often. A team just shows up and makes it into the top 12 that you know you don't know a lot about. And today we're going to get to know and see what they're made of. Do we have any idea where they're from, Mike? I know they're not local. I mean, um, qualifying qualifying third uh, means they can definitely play. Mm -hmm. So this is Jason Howard. On 36. Okay. We'll still shoot 500. So you've made match play before, Andrew. What's in this center, in this event? 
with uh, you bowl with your dad, a guy, yeah. a guy yeah. you may know a little bit. Um, what, what's it like out there? What, what's, what is bowling out here with all the people watching? You got a great field around you every year. What's it feel like? Um, so I, I feel like this event is is more unique than maybe like another local or even you know a really big house tournament um, mainly because there's a lot of just really good players so obviously the lanes are easy but you still have to be a good player and you still have to out bowl your opponents most of the time even though the lane condition is very easy so to answer the question I mean I, I think there's a little pressure you know at least for me when I bowl I think it was seven years ago now I mean it feels good. It, it almost feels like maybe what a tour stop would feel like in match play. You know, probably not to that extreme, but, you know, there's definitely some pressure, and it's it's definitely a good time, you know, to bowl against people that are honestly really good players. So, Got some good information in the chat coming in about these guys. Thank you guys so much. We've got Jerome has a 900, and Troy Lent knows him very well. Troy Lent, again, PBA 50 player of the year in the chat. Glad to have you in there, buddy. And uh, also says uh, it's an all-local match. They bowl together. Minus Martell. <laughs> 494 that game for a Mike, plus 30. They're 2-0 and this morning. That's a, that's a good start. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Matchups around the horn. I guess we could go down here. Farish and Flora, Fiondo, Pollock. Looks like we're going to have uh, Jerome and Howard on 30, 29 and 30. Do we know who they're taking on on 29 and 30? We went uh, through it. Yeah. But it's, it's McLean Johnson. McLean Johnson. I'm trying to put Johnson second for all the teams with the Johnsons to try and keep <laughs> them straight. Even though it's not written on the sheet that way. We got three, two Johnsons? We got three Johnsons. Oh, three Johnsons. Chris Johnson, AJ Johnson, yeah. Liz Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Then our, our mat matchups on 41 through 44. Did you go through those as well? Yep. Buttruff Thompson and. Who else are they bowling? Uh -huh. They're bowling Lambert and Wolf. Yep. And Mike Wolf came and grabbed Tony Lambert's map to the seven pin. <laughs> and uh, make sure he had it. Just better to not leave any, you know? That's, uh, he didn't miss one, but they had the score correct, so he almost did. <laughs> uh. So if you want to watch those matchups along with A.J. Johnson, and Packy Hanrahan, uh, they are on Channel 2 right now on YouTube. You can check them out on Channel 2. Glad you're with us. If you haven't had an opportunity to take advantage of the Enter the Giveaway, brought to you by our title sponsor, Hammer, head over to InsideBowling.com. Click on the Bowling Ball Giveaway graphic, and you can sign up. We'll be announcing the winners tomorrow morning to win the new hazmat or new blue hammer, courtesy of our friends at Hammer. So thank you so much to Hammer. And if you're considering a new bowling ball this winter, or maybe for yourself or for a loved one, make sure you check out all the bowling balls products that Hammer provides to bowlers all over the world. So Mike. I feel like I should know this, but I don't. Um, you mentioned that to enter in that contest to win the balls, you have to answer a question. Yeah. What is that question? Yeah, the question is, where do you purchase bowling balls? Amazon, local pro shop, online, or a combination of all? Okay. We just want to know how people are getting bowling equipment. Gotcha. That's a question we wanted to know and a question Hammer wanted to know. Yeah, absolutely. Just one question. I asked the same question. Oh, really? Which was, what was that question? Yeah. See, I got a lot of catching up to do. You do. You do. You're doing fine, though. That's why we brought you in. We brought in the best for last. I don't know about that. I wouldn't get too carried away with that. You're supposed to run with a compliment and just say, <laughs> yeah, I know.
So Mike, did you get enough sleep last night? I know you do a lot of work behind the scenes here. Uh, I, yeah, Yes. yesterday was a lot better than the two days before. It was about double. I got about six hours. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Three hours a night before, three hours a night before that. Not complaining. Mm -hmm. That's what I sign up for. It's all yeah, good. For sure. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good today. Good deal. You know, the games just go by so fast here. Oh, yeah. Lee was asking you about, you know, what it's like bowling in this, making it in the top 12 as you did with your dad a few years ago. But mm -hmm. don't the games just fly? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially when you're not maybe not bowling as good or you're not striking as much. You know, it seems to go by a lot faster. But, you know, obviously the goal is to uh, strike as much as you can. And, even you know, with the lanes being easier, uh, you tend to strike more. So. It's like uh, Kyle Troop and Jared Thompson both have the front three over on channel two. No, they're that they're, they're channel uh, one. Yeah, channel they're, one. they're yeah, okay. just picture in picture here. Okay. Got these uh, yeah. these eight lanes are here and then channel gotcha. two's okay. over there. Well Doyle and Henry have the front nine combined, so mm -hmm. that is on channel two. If they keep this up, we'll have to have to merge them. But for now, if you want to watch any of the matches, 41, 2, 3, 4, just Head over to the second channel. You know, this has got to be, a, you know, a treat for a guy like Matt Cleveland as well, local guy. We talk about how good he is in, in town and he and Mike Lay. And, and, and you look and, you know, he's on, a, he's on a pair competing against, you know, top five player on the PBA Tour and Kyle Troop, right? And it's a treat for Jared Thompson. You know, Kyle's buddy, you know, Jared Thompson's not going to bowl the Roth Holman doubles with, Right. With Kyle Troop, he gets to come out for a weekend and, and and elevate his game with a guy like Troop. And Troop is known for his hair and his crazy, colorful outfits and that. But again, I know I was talking about it during the last game. But but Kyle's game is just top notch. I mean, he's got he's got all the tricks. They talk about Simo having all the tricks, throwing backup balls, everything else. Kyle's developed a really solid repertoire of weapons in his arsenal that he can do so many things with a bowling ball you know to touch on that real quick um i didn't i don't mean to cut you off mike but i was talking to mike miniman and for for those of you that don't know mike uh he's kind of retired now but he ran he run the pro shop he runs the pro shop here at st Clair. um he said he went to the gym either last night or the night before and he saw kyle in the gym after bowling working out so that just shows you how how good he is and you know not only on the lanes but off the lanes as well you know trying to trying to better himself and and be the best in the world so oh no yeah and you know we had kyle sat in the booth with us for a game and a half the other day and you know kyle's got a lot of good things going on off the lanes he just you know bought his first home uh, with Bree and, and and you know he's 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 got a family now. He's a family man. He's taking care of his house. He's hosting Thanksgiving, hosting Christmas, putting up Christmas lights. Yeah, he's talked about earlier. He you know he got to the top of the ladder and said nope. <laughs> he's, he's doing good. Lo relocated you know to the Louisville area about 30 miles out. He said mm -hmm. 30 minutes out. I think is what he said. And, being away from home kind of sucks when you got such a nice little pad set up for yourself, but it makes it that much sweeter to come out here and, and do the best you can and focus because you are spending time away from home. Mm -hmm. Jared and his pink shoes cracks me <laughs> up. Are they even bowling shoes? I think they're just no. street shoes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but he uses them just for bowling. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, whatever works. They're, they are yeah. his bowling shoes. They don't get worn, you know, around town. You know, Martell, I, I nicknamed him a couple years ago, Lil Alby. <laughs> Lil Mike Alby there. Martell, he's an interesting cat. You know, he's he likes to slow hook it, likes to get in, just open up the whole lane. Likes to get dangerously close to our soundboard in between shots, like you right know, now. Talking about Martell, I don't even know if he remembers this, but it was probably Junior Gold. 2015 maybe we we're both really young i think he's a little older than me we were bowling one squad at uh, junior gold and i think we we're on the end pair and i think he shot either 299 or 300 the one game and i probably shot like 150 so that was the first time i ever met martell and 
you know, it's just it's great to see how how far he's come even from then. You know, I mean, he was really good back then, but now he's you know even much better now. So. Yeah, and he's battled some demons with uh, pre-shot routine taking pretty long, being pretty deliberate. He caught some slack for that, and mm -hmm. you know that's frustrating to him. Um, he's really tried to speed up his, his process, which is which he has. I think Lee noticed that the other day. He's really kind of sped things up and. You know, he, he had a couple of, of big runs on the PBA Tour this year as well. I remember the U.S. Open, he, he bowled really well. I got to have him in the booth and hear his story a little bit, introduce him to fans when I work with Bowl TV. And there, there are some folks that, that don't really, you know, care for, for Mr. Martell. And then there, there are some that are raving fans of his, like uh, to pull it back into what Lee was saying. And I, I just like the progression. I, I've watched him win up in Iowa on one of my live streams. And... I love the way he bowls. He, he can do. He can get in so deep as a left-hander. He is just solid. He oh, is absolutely. just solid. You know, kind of to kind of touch on some things, Mike. Not really bowling related, but um, when you're in the when you're in the bowling business, especially, um, it, it's really a good a good thing, in my opinion, to try not to dislike anybody. You know, maybe you don't agree with some things they do or how they bowl or what they do, but. You know, that doesn't mean you got to hate him, and that, that doesn't mean they're a bad guy or, you know, a bad person. So um, I challenge everybody watching to have an open mind and, you know, maybe try to try to talk to somebody you maybe not like and, you know, make friends. Do you agree? Yeah, there's value in everybody, as uh, Ernie Johnson says from inside mm -hmm. the NBA. Mm -hmm. Value in everybody. All right, standings after two. Biondo and Pollock still lead 14.55. Their lead's 111 pins over Rich Jerome and Jason Howard in second. We got two teams very close, third and fourth. Doyle and Handerhan, 13.29, just three pins ahead of Thompson and Troop. Jarvis and Johnson in fifth, only two pins ahead of Liz Johnson and Adam Barta. Ferris and Flora in seventh. Thompson Butcher, Cleveland Lay. Chris Johnson and McLean. Lambert, Wolf, Martell, McGainey. And remember, everybody, this is a total pins contest here. This is not a, a step ladder or anything like that. Jared with a light mixer. So right now, 1455, 111 pins back is Jerome and Howard. They're just hanging right in there. Oh, no. I think Liz can pick a 710 for us on the live stream. I think it's doable, especially in this building. I mean, you bowl league here still, right, Lee? Yep. Still, still bounce pretty good. I'll tell they you, got new pins a few months ago, so it's it's mm, yeah. not there yet. But I got to tell you guys too. Right now, I feel like this pattern is holding up pretty good through you know two and a half games right now. Moving the lane machine from the other side and oiling these lanes down here with that machine, mm -hmm. like we did last year, right? Game 8-9 is, is when I'm going to be real interested in what's going down. I mean, is Kyle Troop just not disgusting? I mean, he's just gross. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely gross what he's doing right now. I mean, I, I don't even know how else to explain it. It's um, it's a freak of nature. I mean, and, and Jared just in the pink shoes just doing his you know, thing. Hooping it up. I mean, <laughs> I, I would say, Mike, to your point, so many of your – the big rev guys that we typically see make the top 12 didn't make it. You've got a lot of bowlers here who aren't going to completely destroy the pattern. Liz Johnson, Adam Barta, Mike, Mike Lay, Matt Cleveland, Dan Farish, Butcher throwing almost plastic. Mike Wolf. They're not your... 600 RPM guys. There's only a couple of those. Yeah. Kyle oh, Troop, of course, good is one. Mar Martell plays in. He's got a good rev rate. Not Troop, oh but God. no doubter again, dude. Oh, my God. If, if you're not a Kyle Troop fan or you don't have respect for this guy's game and you're watching this broadcast right now, well, right now is time, the time to flip the switch. It's time to go from off to on. I mean... I, I think I really do think Troop and Thompson with these couple 599s in the back of their mind are thinking let's let's yeah. let's finish this. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If 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 they end up throwing the first 
what is that, 12 and 9 is 21. If they have the first 21 and Troop stepping up in a 10th frame, there is no doubt in my mind that you can run to the cage and go ahead and cash the bet that it's going to be 600. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay? That's going to happen. Yeah. This is, this is the key frame here. This is it. I'm telling you, if they can get through this frame here and Jared can keep his, keep his nerves under control here, and I know he's one of the best in Texas. Oh, that was in. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Uh, this kid, the mouse. <laughs> the mouse is untrapped. It's the, is it, it, where is he at from Texas? Is it city mouse or country mouse? I think it's a city mouse. City mouse? I think so. We got Lay in Cleveland who just shot 520. They're trying to shoot 530. <laughs> They've got no chance. <laughs> I mean, still, plus 130 isn't going to hurt your cause. If but there's going to no. be a miss, it might be right here by Kyle. You think so? Solid nine or something. Run, stupid. run over the rack seven pin. Okay. Something like that. But if this, if there's going to be one, it's it's right here. No, Never no, 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 no. I, there, I think that Jared, Jared's the key here. Jared, Jared finished this thing, and he's up quickly. He loves just getting up there, running and gunning. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. okay. Trip that six. All right. All right. Tripping ain't easy. So these guys here are looking for a world record as well. We've talked about it a few times, but. Jared Thompson, Kyle Troop looking to run them over here and be perfect in game number three here. It's a 2023 Hammer Holiday Doubles. Troop and Thompson right now see themselves in fourth position at 1326. They're looking to knock on the door of Brandon Biondo and Eric Pollock. Second shot in the 10th for Thompson. Pretty good. Ooh. Pretty good. <laughs> Uh, fun guys to watch. Very fun to watch these guys. So do we know how Jared and, and Kyle even got to be They're just They're this? just buddies. Just buddies? Yeah, they just bowled the Nightmare Doubles in one, so they're running yeah. it back here. Okay. Martell's just so excited about hooking the whole lane <laughs> right now. He can't quite contain himself. I love this. Kyle Troop's got the front nine himself. Got his phone out. Jared Thompson trying to finish off 300. There it is. Yes, Three sir. Bills. Okay, guys. I'm All calling right. it right. This is done deal. This is a done deal. This is money in the bank. This is 600. The way Troop's been throwing them, it's, it's like Picasso out there painting. Yeah, they still get presents, Liz. Liz Johnson just making sure everybody still gets presents. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Two fifty-six for Cleveland. That's not going to be enough. That's what's crazy. We're not <laughs> yeah. even. We're not even talking about five hundred. And Lake can tie them. Yeah, yeah. five twelve, and they're, they don't even have a, a chance. Price of poker is going up here today. That's why they're the best of the weekend. All right, here is one Kyle Troop. I think if he gets this one here, they're they're going to have six hundred. Oh. oh, there's the first one. You know what ball it is, Mike? I don't. It looks kind of like a hustle rip, which is a super low-end ball. Yeah, that's where it is. All right, Jared Thompson, 300, Kyle Troop, front 10. Let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Kyle, same pre-shot routine every single time. Gets it set in his hand. Ready to go. In the athletic stance. Sticks it. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. So now that is 11 in a row for Kyle. And now Jared is now telling him, come on, baby, let's finish this out. <laughs> These other guys can't finish it. You finish this. You do you. That's what he just said. You do you, Kyle. You do you. And these guys, I, I told you about halfway through this game, these guys, they, I know they've been thinking about it. 
I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if Kyle just kind of goes down to Cam and goes, that, "That's how you finish the game." After a little <laughs> bit of smack talking in the last game last night. All right, Troop. Looking Mike, to, Mike, looking Con, to do it. Mike Con's around as well. Had the he same opportunity. Yep. For six. Every everybody has stopped bowling for this. A chance for a world record six hundred to tie the world record. That's pretty good. Oh no. my Same thing as goodness Cam's. We're seven. gracious. What is up with the 599s around here? <laughs> Great bowling. That is unreal. They're calling me a black cloud. That that pair had one shot hit the pocket and not strike, and we're black clouds. Right, we had right. it on them the entire game. Right. I think we're the opposite of black clouds. Mm -hmm. Sunshine and rainbows. Wow, that is... That's a little surprising to me. Awesome bowl. Three 599s in the same event. Right in front Two of us. Two on one pair and one on the next pair This is over. a This is a historic year here. Very historic. I think their goal is going to be now known as the 599 house. Yeah. This right match here will be finishing before the left match. What do we have here, Lee? We've got... So Pollock can strike out for 200, Biondo for 238 for 438. And they're going to be short. Dan Farish uh, can get 48. He's already got one in the 10th. Flora can get 36. Certainly a big advantage for Dan Farish and Brandon Flora. That would give them their third win in a row. Chris Johnson up here in the ninth frame has a chance to extend a five-bagger going here. And his team has a lead as well. See Martell got the strike on the bottom left of the screen. It's the first one in the 10th. He can still bowl 266. 280 for his partner. Mike down on the high end. Lambert and Wolf 503 over Butcher from Thompson 492 in a game that left uh, coaches uh, not happy with spare shooting. There were Smith spares all over the place. Mm -hmm. And on 43 and 4, Jarvis and Johnson also uh, 504. Their opponents... Doyle and Hanrahan looks like 482. Sure 26, uh, 269, I think, and 213. Okay. Your eyes are better than mine. <laughs> For now. For now. So this will be the, the last group done here. I'm going to swap out the graphic down on the high end. I'll be right back, gentlemen. All right. So, Lee, we want to run up the pairings for next game? Or is yeah. it a little too early for that? Just just a minute. All right. We're still got a frame and a half left. Okay. You, you obviously know this. I mean, you've got a couple you know, a couple pairs still going. If you're bowling one of those teams, you got to wait. Mm -hmm. And all, all four teams that are bowling on 29 through 32 in game four are not bowling there right now. So it'll just be a a quick reset, if you will. Liz Johnson had that mid-game reset, 236. Problem is Michael Martell had 266. Pat McGaney's going to try and shoot 280. 546 is usually pretty good. Yeah. Except there's a 599 <laughs> next door. He just lost 50 pins to them, Michael. <laughs> he just throws his arms up. Says, yeah, what can you do? I mean, they were already 270 behind them. What's 50 more? Right. Pack Packy just tapped me on the shoulder. It's going to be present time. Okay. So when he comes over... Here's how, you, here's how you work this thing, Andrew. Okay. You I'll just, let you do it so I don't mess it you up. You can kind of hover over to these screens. Well, you got to find the cursor first. All right. So I'm going to move this cord without yeah. decapitating you. Find the cursor, which is on the other screen. Is this backwards? Yeah, it should, it should come over, I think. Well, it should, but let's see, it's Try still that there. One. Try that one. Right, I am. Oh, there, oh, there it is. Yep. Okay, they are backwards. So you have 29-32 with scores, 29-32 with booth. Okay. 
So I'll just sit here and when Packing comes over. 35 38 with scores. With All right, here he comes with these presents. And then you've got us. Take a seat. And you just hit this right arrow. Mm -hmm. And oh. through the magic of television, Packy Hanrahan appears. He had a yeah. He had a 300. Can we get a microphone or no? You want to give me that thing real quick? Yeah. Here, I got to turn it <laughs> on first. Three hundred. <laughs> Feels like a bug. Oh. So this is from last night, last game, Cash's round. A collapsible storage bin. That's oh, what I wow. need. All right. And for the first game this morning, we have. This feels like I don't know, something. Ooh, I'm a Yahtzee. Yahtzee. Yeah. You throw five in a row, you just get that out, all right? <laughs> five in a row, you just start playing Yahtzee? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yahtzee. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate it. Good ball, buddy. You got Yahtzee. All right. Yeah. Well, we got more presents coming. All, all right. right. We got Jared Thompson Jared in here. Thompson. We're here baby. Good game, fellas. Thank Good you. game. Appreciate it. Yep. Too bad he ain't here yet. Two yeah. opportunities. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the good stuff there. You're smelling good tonight. <laughs> Hold it up for the camera, Jared. Oh, yeah. That's what I use at home. Too. Yeah, good. me too, buddy. There you go. We good. <laughs> Don't even need it for Christmas now. Yep. All right, fellas. Check. Good bowling. Go get him. Yep. Do we have any bowling? Well, there we go. The only, only bowling that's going is on 41 through 4. So we'll flip down to channel 2 for just a minute. That is, if you hold the button at the bottom, and then you can see right there. There you go. Beautiful. All right. So now we can run through matchups for game four. 29 through 32, Doyle Hanrahan, Martel McGaney, who just shot 545, plus 30. Barta Johnson against Lambert Wolf. In front of us here, 35, 6, 7, 8, we have McLean Johnson with Thompson Buttruff, Farish Flora, Thompson Troop. So we got the team that's 3-0, they're shooting 500 almost every game against mm -hmm. a team that just shot 599, mm -hmm. well, one of them. On the high end, what we're watching right now, 41 Cleveland Lay against Jarvis Johnson. They are also 3-0. 43-4, Biondo and Pollock, your tournament leaders. For now. For now, yeah. Uh, against Jerome and Howard. All right. Now we're just waiting on uh, game three scoring update, which I would guess would That's be about here three frames. Pretty shortly. About three frames, four tops. All right. I, I think when I last looked, uh, there were six or seven Christmas presents left. Okay. So we just gave away three of them. And still room for a couple still more. Still room for some holiday cheer. How's the chat looking? We got almost 1,500. Uh, hi, low, Joe Labatt, Colin Horton, uh, Bradley, Power Cord's been in the booth most of the weekend. Roy, full, uh, Jake. Who let Jake Gens wants to know who let Andrew in the booth? That would be Mike Flanagan, although yeah. I fully support it. Anyone know had what Troop had first game? No, I don't. I do not. Um, nobody had last game. Mm -hmm. 299. 299. Teammate beat him. If he could just contribute right. at some point, that would be much appreciated. All right, let's let's flip to this match here. 35 through 38 with scores. Boom. That's how you do that. Cool. If I touch anything, I'm sure I'll mess it up. So yeah, I'll it, leave it, it up to you and Mike. It, you just hover and then right arrow. Got it. It's so easy. Caveman can do it. Okay. I, I had an idea for a bowling ball name yesterday. Yeah. Right. What was, was driving that? home. You know, the, one of the most famous and the best Christmas movie mm -hmm. is Die Hard. What does uh, Alan Rickman say? You know, be of good cheer and bring me my detonators. Mm -hmm. Bowling ball, we call it detonator. Yeah. And you need to tell your ball rep on tour, be of good cheer See, and bring me my detonator. I feel like the detonator has been a ball before. 
I don't. The grenade was. Yeah. But I don't think I don't remember it. And if there hasn't, somebody should hammer could. Yeah. Could say you know. On Kyle Troop, or if it was Storm, doesn't really matter. It's just I, I claim no. Uh, I don't have a relationship with the ball company, but yeah. if somebody wants to come out with a detonator, they can send one to Ray Ars Pro Shop. Andrew will drill it for me. <laughs> uh, you know, you'd be on tour. Kyle's on sync. You know, yeah. Bring me my detonator. What color would it be? Uh, it'd be. It would match the Die Hard logo, so it'd be black and red. Okay. Okay. You never know. We may see a detonator in 2024. That. that or there might be a company. And of course, the ball's going to hit hard. Yeah. Well, it has to hit hard. I would, I would hope it does. <laughs> it's going to, the, the most redeeming quality of that bowling ball is it just hits like a truck. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a truck loaded with explosives <laughs> and a detonator. So if you work for a bowling ball company out there, just send me one when you when you release it. and Yeah, you get the credits on it, right? Yeah. No, like yeah, no, 1% one, one of sales or something like that. I don't even, I don't even need that. Just, just, send me, just send me my detonator. <laughs> Uh, guys, we're in game four now, and uh, Troop and and Jared Thompson here, they are on the pair that we've seen two 599s. <laughs> Could they go back-to-back 599s, yeah. make it four on the weekend? This is going to be a historic year when we look back at the holiday doubles. This will be the year of the big, big game. I mean, I don't think we'll ever see something like this ever again. Yeah, I, 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 just, I don't think so. I don't. What you're watching is of historic proportions here for the holiday doubles. And, and I thought this year's pattern, hooking a little bit more, I, I thought overall that, that the scoring pace could, could be a little low, but it just goes to show that the, the friction equals scores. When a ball can hook, you get entry oh. angle. Oh, man, Kyle. No, I, no 600. I saw Kyle walking back from the snack bar, by the way, and he goes, I am trying to get a present so bad. <laughs> and I have donked two of those off already. And I said, yeah, but you're throwing it good. He goes, it's saucy right now, Mike. Yeah. It's saucy right now. I'm like, everything, pre-shot routine, sticking the shots, doesn't matter. He's like, yeah, I'm throwing it real good. So to those of you that are going to place any bets on the PBA season coming up, Kyle's in a real good headspace right now, and he's fundamentally – about as good as I've seen him. That's a recipe for, for success. Everybody talks about last year, Simo, EJ. Of course, Belmo got the big major win in there as well. Butcher had a nice season. Kyle Troop overlooked going into 2024. Mm -hmm. Greg Thompson. Thompson and Butcher were the team I, I kind of thought might win this thing because I like them in the back half of the day. Mm -hmm. I like them bowling their best in the back half of today. But some of these teams might just get out to such a big lead, separate themselves, that it might be tough to even get back into this thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, Doyle and, Han and Hanrahan already with a 599. Troop and Thompson came into that game in fourth. They were only 18 behind second and 129 out of first. Well, you just shot. 229 over with the bonus. Mm -hmm. Biondo and Pollock lost their match, game three. I'm going to say Thompson and True probably took the lead. Yeah. This is right in front of us, Mike. This is the this is the the highlighted game of this game four. Troop and Thompson probably just became tournament leaders. Just shot 599 against the Super hot team of Parrish and Flora came into qualifying in 21st. After the cut squad, they were up to 10th. Now they're up to 7th. They've won all three matches this morning. They're one of only two teams that can say that. They're shooting 500 pretty much every game, although 599 is pretty good. <laughs> I mean, they can only get to 569 now. Oh, darn.
you want to watch Channel 2, you've got uh, Lay and Cleveland taking on A.J. Johnson, Stephen Jarvis. You've also got Pollock and Biondo bowling against Jerome and Howard. That's on Channel 2 here on YouTube. We do have two feeds for you this year at the Hammer Holiday Doubles. Here on the main, you see picture in picture. Wolf and Lambert, Barta Johnson, and then you've got Doyle Packy with Martell and McGainey. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna invert. What? I know we got a lot of Packy followers out there. And yeah. Haven't had Packy on a whole lot here on the main feed. Got a lot of Barta followers out there too. Yeah, we do. And Mike, of course, Mike, Mike. Mike Wolf. Does he too. have? Does he have followers who aren't already in the building? Oh yeah. There's got some. All. There was somebody behind us last night, Mike, wearing a Wolf Pro Shop hoodie. Do, do they know it's? Do they know they're in a cult? <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't. Who are? I mean, even Andrew here, he's, he doesn't have a Ray Orff's Bowling Pro Shop hoodie on today. Yeah, he's got you know, a nice looking storm jacket though. Yeah. All right, Jared Thompson wants another present. And front five. So I feel like we're seeing a little bit of transition maybe. I don't know, Mike, do you see the same thing? Lee, what do you think? Um, I, I'm seeing a little more corner pins than maybe the first couple games. Maybe the oil's pushing down just a little bit. Um, may see some ball changes here soon or some hand position changes. We'll see, though. But Buttruff is out of the axe. Yeah. He at least made the switch last game. I don't know about before that. Probably a black hammer. Mm -hmm. So that is what that is, looks like. Could also be a double cross. Mm -hmm. It rolls like a black hammer. Cameron Doyle, front three, seven, ten. He's got the ball speed. Oh, absolutely. If he wants to give this thing a run. We've had everything else. We've had three 599s all on the live stream. One thing we haven't had is a seven ten conversion. A big split conversion of, of really any kind. Mm -hmm. You are right, Butters is in the black hammer. Lee, good call. There we go. One and it thought about it. The Thompson, Jared Thompson's run is over. 17 at least in a row. Mm -hmm. Could have been more than that. Good run. Ho oh, hum. Mike Wolf says, Mike Flanagan called my bowling game poetry in motion. I'm going to show the world <laughs> <laughs> what that looks like. Tripping fours and opening doors.
was a weird hit for Martel. Yeah. Kind of bizarre. Well, we're going to want to watch 29 and 30 as we go along. If you remember last year, you know, so that's the first, that's the one and two position round game, 29 and 30. And when we got to the end last year, that pair was so brutal that Andre Anderson and Andre Gonzalez next door on 31 and two. Caught him. Just, and caught him with a couple frames left. Mm -hmm. Shot a big, nice 500 and 29 and 30, but pretty much all that was out there was 440, mm -hmm. if that. And well, now we're seeing some some puzzled looks in the last couple shots on, on that pair. There's still some strikes out there, but we'll keep an eye on that. Tony Lambert follows up his teammates trip four by giving up half a mark account with the PBA <laughs> washout and then covering it with ease. Adam again says hi to his 39 kids. He's picked up three since last night. <laughs> It's going to be a fourth win in a row, Andrew, for Jarvis and Johnson. You said they were uh, four for four or three for three? Three for going three, into as this far game. as I know. Although, kind of quietly. We haven't seen too many huge scores from them. I guess they're uh, just catching the right people at the right time. They're, I, may have, I may have had that wrong. They're, they're not bowling on the correct. They could have reversed the arrow somewhere. But it's definitely Jarvis and Johnson. Stephen Jarvis got uh, 279 left. AJ 259. Cleveland 268. But Lay can only shoot 2-0. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, have Larry print out a, a sheet for us later so I can Sounds check good. my math. Standings update there, Lee. It's Andrew's turn. All right. Let's see. All right. Uh, Jared Thompson and Kyle Troop did uh, catch the lead. They got to 15.55 over in second. Brandon Biondo, Eric Pollock, 14.71 over. In third, Rich Jerome, Jason Howard, 14.62 over. In fourth, Stephen Jarvis, A.J. Johnson, 14.38 over. In fifth, Cam Doyle and Packy Hanrahan, 14.11 over. In sixth, Liz Johnson, Adam Barta, 13.76 over. In seventh, Daniel Farish, Brandon Flora, 1374 over. Greg Thompson, Jacob Buttruff in eighth, 1309 over. In ninth, Matt Cleveland, Mike Lay, 1267 over. In tenth, Tony Lambert, Mike Wolf, 1249 over. In eleventh, Michael Martell, Pat McGaney at plus 1241. And rounding out the top 12, Chris Johnson, Tommy McLean at plus 1227. And for those of you watching, that was on the bottom right of the screen, but not anymore. Well, you can, you can rewind. It's <laughs> yeah. YouTube. Yeah, you can scroll can. back a little bit. If you're watching on computer, go uh, just go to the help bar, type in snipping tool. Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to cover up Mike, Mike Wolf's calves. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to let you take this game home. I've got something I need to attend to, and I will be back for game number five. Sounds great. So, yeah, Lee, I, I really think their uh, lanes are changing a little bit here. Maybe the track's burning in a little more and some oil pushing down the lane. So seeing more corner pins, some more balls hitting the nose than normal. So we'll see what happens going forward. Uh, how some of the players will adjust and maybe what balls they'll go to and and uh, what the scores will be like going forward. So, Yeah, we just... And we had Tony Lambert on gun ball on 31, started with three in a row and <clears throat> has two spares and two open cents. Mm -hmm. Martel playing in his comfort zone. Would have been more comfortable if the seven would have Mm -hmm. Obliged from the messenger. Looks 
looks like. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. You're first. Uh, looks like Mike Clay and uh, Matt Cleveland had 467. Four. And yep. Four, four, yep. Yep. And AJ can get this one in the tenth for 527. Got it. Mm. So Stephen Jarvis 268, AJ Johnson 259. Yep, they haven't had. I mean. It, 527 is a great game. It's oh, yeah. just 72 behind 599. Right. Um, just winning matches. Getting the free pins. And they. It's just so, so quiet when Jared Thompson throws a single pin. Mm -hmm. We're used to hearing the pins <laughs> explode. There's just one left and. They're right in front of us, but we're watching Pat McGaney, who's also having carry problems this game. He and Martell have a combined zero counts less than nine and one double. Mm -hmm. If you're not a fan of, um, or if you're not a subscriber to Inside Bowling, we encourage you to join us. If you're not a subscriber to the House Bowling, that's Packy's YouTube channel, you should do that right after that. Absolutely. and After know, the tournament's over. Yeah. Or you can get a second window open. I know a lot of people out there know Packy. I don't know if everybody's met him or not, but he's a fantastic guy. He's awesome. He'll take a picture with you if you're a fan, sign an autograph. He, he's a great dude. So show him some love on his channel, like Lee mentioned. And, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, We'll see if my, my horses, Packy and Cam, will uh, come away with the win. Looks like uh, they're going to have some ground to make up. But uh, it's definitely doable. A lot of bowling to go. Down on 43 and 4, it's going to, big win, going to be a big win for Jerome and Howard. They're only in the ninth frame, but that match has been decided. That's on the other channel. Liz Johnson's on your main channel. I feel like she never ages, man. She's just... She's been as good as she's been for years and years and just keeps striking, keeps doing her thing. Got the first one in the tent there for Jared Thompson. Pretty tight match here in front of us. Yep, you want to try and flip it back real quick or you want me to do it? Uh, you got it. You, I got it? Yeah. All right, so. We're going to do Ooh, that and that. Okay. Dan Farish up on 42, 208 in the ninth, already thrown one strike in the tenth. Their team is up by five and now up by 15. 32 or 42? I think you said 42. <laughs> well, they're on 38. Oh, so yeah, I'm yeah, just 30. <laughs> I'm just all There Thompson, there you go. It's just how it's like when you got these matches right in front of us. Oh, the yeah, the yeah. scores are the same. Right. You've got a double on the for the bottom bar. You've got... Fair strike up, now it's two strikes. A five pin match in favor of the native Kentuckians. We have a transplant Kentuckian mm -hmm. with Texan. Farish keeps the five pin lead. And now it's eight. It's got a little interesting. Mm -hmm. Jared Thompson, the nice. Well-known common score of 241. 241. That's a good mystery score. Good mystery I, score. I had 51 Thursday night. Really? It's even better mystery yeah. score. Uh, you got you got to miss some counting there somewhere. All right, Brandon Flora, strike nine spare. Next seven. Trying to shoot 280. They've been shooting 500 every game. Mm -hmm. So. Can do that here with a strike. And keep their lead. 
And we can't throw any better than that. That was pretty good. Troop must respond. There you go. So this becomes a 40. We're going to assume Kyle's going to strike. Oh, yeah. This, absolutely. Be this becomes a 40 pin shot for Brandon Four. Mm -hmm. He strikes, he locks up the match, plus the fill shot. Absolutely. Well, really, it'd be 41 mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. well, he's got eight in a row himself. It's Kyle Troop, I know, you're, I know you're pretty good, but we got the lead right now. And there it goes. Great shot when you needed it. I've got them at 4 0. Oh. Flora, Flora and Barish. Really? Just just shooting 500 all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. I will again flip us back after we watch Kyle throw one more shot here for all his fans. Strike here puts them in the 500s as well. It can shoot 510, but we'll lose to, and it's likely 518. Here's, mm -hmm. here's Packy. Let's see how this match is looking like. They look to be in the lead as well. So you've got 25 and 45 left for. Packy and Cam Martell, you have 39 and 06. So not over yet, but. Hand your hand and Doyle in the lead. Yeah, I know we touched a little on uh, Martell earlier, being one of the left handers that can kind of get in and, and do a lot of stuff to the bowling ball. Packy's another one of those guys. He can throw a urethane, he can throw a reactive, he can go up the lane, he can hook it. So. Not only being a good guy, Packy's a fantastic player, and he's he's developed his game quite substantially. So, do you think the 75-foot lane helped him develop his proper ball roll? Yeah, you never know. Did a video about that. You can go find that on YouTube. We'll watch this match finish. The other other the other match going is McLean Johnson against Thompson Buttruff. Also a close match. It is a six-pin match in favor of McLean and Johnson with the double. It's in the bottom left side of your screen. Packing the books for 25. Their opponents can only get to 45. So I think any mark is good here. It's a little blurry, but. It's the best kind of mark, Andrew. Yes, sir. That gives them the win. Right, Doyle and Dehan your hand now two and two. Mm -hmm. McLean got his first in the tenth. So here's another 40, 40 pin shot. As we flip back to Tommy McLean. Yeah, so he pretty much needs this one. Needs This is another 41-pin shot. For the win. Six pin. Oh, six pin. Looked right the whole way. That is, my, by my count, the first win of the day for Buttruff and Thompson. Game five matchups. 
McLean picks a six pin. That's the last ball thrown for game four. Game five, 29 through 32. Cleveland and Lay against Lambert and Wolf. Johnson and McLean, who are, by my count, 0 and 4, against Doyle and Hanrahan. They'll just slide over. 35 through 8, Biondo and Pollock against Barta Johnson. Jarvis Johnson against Jerome and Howard. I could have looked up in front of me and saw that, but <laughs> that seems rather uh, rather complicated. 41, 2, 3, 4, Farish and Flora against Martella McGaney. 43 and 4 is Thompson Buttruff against Thompson Troop. Got it. There's a second chance event going down on the low end. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. I think uh, I talked to Jerry Mars this morning. He said he had about 33 entries, which isn't too bad. I know a lot of people, when they finish up, they want to probably get out of town and head back home. So 33 is not too bad, day after the yep. big tournament. So. There's also an over-under in town as well. So Is that up at Bullhaven? I think so. Ooh, look at this. Two Swisher 410s. Matching 410s. We want the jerseys to be color coordinated, not the splits. All right. Yeah, Jacob Buttruff grabs his axe, his black hammer, and says, "It's all I need. It's a long fly from Arizona. I don't need all these new, newfangled hooking balls." Mm-hmm. All right, so I don't mean to throw her under the bus, but uh, I think I need to step out of here for a little bit so I can uh, take the girlfriend to lunch or something. So. All right, um, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I appreciate it. If you guys don't mind, I might we'll, hop uh, back in later. If, uh, all right, well, uh, if not, we'll see you soon at uh, Ray Ors Bowling and Pro Shop. Game five, thanks to everybody for watching. If you're in the chat, I can't see it right now. Mike's doing some something. I'm sure Dennis Hacker will keep an eye on things for us. Dennis, you're still in the chat. I guess I can pull up my phone. Let me do that. Checking the chat. All uh, right. Uh, Tom and Liz. Oh, when I when I find Mike, I'll I'll tell him. We we have been posting the standings on our ex formerly known as Twitter account. I, I'll and we'll put them up on the screen here. Well. By we, I mean Mike, when I find him. I'll read them out. They're handing them to us in hard copy as well.
there have not been uh, a prize list posted, but I have one. Don't think we've talked about that today. $200 per bowler, $400 per team entry fee, 230 teams. First place, 10 grand. Sixth place, or second place, six grand. Third place, five grand. Fourth place, 4,500. Fifth place, 3,500. Sixth place, 2,500. And then we go 1,500, 1,400, 1,300, 1,200, 1,100, and 1,000 for 12th. talking last night so Stephen Jarvis on 38 throwing the yellow radioactive vibe I think there's only two colors left the vibe series from hammer has been around since 2006 plus or minus a year they could make a maroon or burgundy vibe or they could make a white one I think every other color is taken it's been a Fantastic lower to mid-level line for Hammer for close to 20 years now. If you'd like to find out more about new Hammer offerings, go to InsideBowling.com. There's 11 different bowling balls on rebate. You can enter to win a couple new Hammer bowling balls. Go to InsideBowling.com. Click the button that has the picture of those two and put your information in to answer one incredibly difficult question. And by difficult, I mean easy. Enter to win. Those will be announced on tomorrow morning. Would you like to buy some bowling apparel at InsideBowling.com? You can do so this weekend. 20% off with the promo code HOLIDAY. Jason Howard throwing the, I would assume, the re-release of the Brunswick Teal Rhino. We did see some original Teal Rhinos <laughs> this weekend with Derek Manson. Thirty-six. We got a good look at Eric Pollock, who said he's making plans for the PBA Fifty Tour in twenty twenty-five, where he'll be a rookie again.
talking a little bit last game with Andrew on transition. We, some of the bowlers have it figured out. Adam Barta is up on 35. Great shot by Adam throwing the hammer obsession tour, which he brings every year. And doesn't really throw it anywhere else, he said. It's it's a few years old release from Hammer. It's got plenty of games on it, but likes how it behaves at the end of the pattern. And I haven't seen him throw anything else. It doesn't mean he hasn't. Good shot there from Jason Howard, who apparently has a 900 series to his credit. We've seen two almost perfect doubles games today. We've already had two 599 games today. Three for the weekend. Standings for game four were just handed to me. Jared Thompson, Kyle Troop lead after four games at plus 1664. In second place, right in front of us, Rich Jerome and Jason Howard, plus 1607. Having a great game here. Here's Rich Jerome on 38. Split to start the game, and the team has thrown the next 12. They're bowling against the team in third place, Stephen Jarvis, A.J. Johnson. Jarvis has the front seven. In fourth, Daniel Farish and Brandon Flora, 15-22. They're down on 41-2, and two, which has been a great pair to them this weekend. Well, they've got a couple splits in the first five. They're behind in their match to Martell and McGaney. In fifth place, they started the day in the lead. Brandon Biondo and Eric Pollock at plus 15-10. 154 pins behind first. Right behind them in six, Cameron Doyle, Packy Hanrahan, plus 1501. In seventh, Liz Johnson, Adam Barta, right in front of us, 1491. Then we got a gap to Greg Thompson and Jacob Butcher of an eighth at 1375. In ninth, Matt Cleveland, Mike Lay, 1334. Right behind them, Chris Johnson, Tommy McLean, 10th at 1328. Martell and McGaney, 11th, 1274. Lambert and Wolf in 12th at plus 1230. So we have the top seven are within 200 of first. We'll flip down to the low end here, invert the screen where we find <clears throat> plenty of strikes as well. Cleveland and Lay behind in their match to Lambert and Wolf. Mike Wolf's been bowling first today.
got strings all over the place. Jarvis has the front eight. Rich Jerome has the front seven. Adam Barda has the front seven. Tommy McLean has the front six. Mike Wolf has the front seven. Make it eight. Mike Lay is 279 working. Rick, Rich Jerome is 279 working. Liz Johnson is 279 working. We just got strikes all over the place here. Bowlers have adjusted. Already in game five. Qualifying rounds were eight games. Last night's cashers round was five. This is 12. Troop and Thompson have a big game going as well. Troop 277 left going into the eighth. Thompson 270 left. Going into the ninth. That's on our second stream. We'll want to watch them. Our current tournament leaders. Jason Howard's string is over. Pull the shot on 38 down there at the bottom of your screen. Trip the six out. Nudge the eight. Couldn't get it to go. So we have Mike Wolf, Tommy McLean, Steve Jarvis, Adam Barta, all with strings going all at once. Flipping around here pretty quickly, given what's going on. Steven Jarvis just is on 38. He's thrown his first ball in the 10th with that hammer, radioactive vibe. Rich Jerome on 37. They're going to... Can't get the 10 out. They're going to win their match, even though Jarvis has 10 in a row. Right next door, Adam Barta has eight in a row. And at least he broke the split up. In the, whole, in the whole way for Adam. Jarvis with 11. Jarvis for 300. He got it. All 
All right, we'll flip back to the low end. Mike Wolf leaves a four pin. Mike, we just had five strings at once, and, and we one of them one of them made it to the end. We still got one one live. I am so impressed with how this oil pattern is holding up. Like these guys have continued to be right around the pocket. Nothing too startling, nothing too bizarre. It's held up really well today. Again, we did take the lane machine from the low end and oiled these lanes. We did that last year as well. It seems like that lane machine might put out a little bit more oil or a little more volume. And it's a good combination today with the amount of strikes we've seen. Two 599 games if you're just joining us. And Jarvis at 300 was the first one we've had today that didn't have 299 with it. Is Andrew taking a break or gone? He is on a lunch sabbatical. Oh, is he? Okay. He may return later. Okay. Front nine now. It's going to be another win for Troop Thompson. Flora and Farish have, are well behind to Martell and McGinney. I do want to bounce over here for just a second. What what these guys are doing here, Jerome and Howard. Yeah. 258, 279. They just had a 300 bolt at them, but they're going to get another win. And they're at 1607. Oh, look at that friendly little. Still, That's how you finish 537 right there, Mike. Still in a solid second place. I mean, it, it's. So they they were behind by 37. They're going to shoot 537. Troop and Thompson. So Kyle. Oh, oh boy. On the other stream, five count washout. One, two, four, six, ten. Makes the math a little. Yeah, so Troop, yeah, like you said, just left the washout plus the six pin. And missing the head pin for Kyle Troop, that's uncharacteristic. I don't know if lane 43's got a little bit of a puddle or he, a little bit he, of miss. He let it go and hated it. Hated it, okay. Just a bad shot. Bad shot. They've got, they're trying to reset the other lane. See if they shot. So they'll need to shoot 501 to stay in the lead. And they are not going to do it. They shot 485, so, Mike, we have new leaders. Rich Jerome and Jason Howard just took the lead. This game here is very close. 242 and 258 left. Puts you right at 500. We've got 205 posted on the board and a 300 still left. So, five-pin match here. Tenth frame. Oh, rings the seven-pin. Not going to be 300. For McLean. Cam Doyle with the first one in the tenth. They are going to get the win, he and Packy. Big shots from Cam down the stretch. Cam looking good out there today. Haven't talked about Doyle a ton, but he's found himself a nice little niche here in the amateur bowling circuit. We talked about him a lot first thing this morning. <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, let's go down to the only action that's left. This is Channel 2 on YouTube. We have two streams for you here today. We do that for the holiday doubles. We put out two streams here on YouTube. 
Dream number two. We got Martell stepping up here. Still bowl 227. Yeah, the other, uh, the highest game, that game, Mike, Liz Johnson, 278. Adam Barta, 278. Team effort, 556 plus 30. They came into that game in seventh. They were only 106 behind Howard and Jerome. They made up 20 of them. Yeah, and Jason is getting inducted into the Greater Baltimore USBC Hall of Fame this year. The dude is insane, according to Max Costa here in the chat. So by my count, Mike, we have Jerome and Howard, Jarvis and Johnson, and Farish and Flora at 401. And Jarvis and Johnson just pulled 507 in the game that they lost. Yeah, yeah. On the other side, Thompson and Buttruff have a win. Cleveland and Lay have a win. McLean and Johnson are 0 and 5. Matchups for game six, and then Mike, I'm going to let you handle this for a minute if that's all right. Yep. 29 through 32, Farish and Flora against Jarvis and Johnson, two teams 4 and 1. Cleveland Lay against Biondo and Pollock. 35 through 8. Jerome and Howard will slide over one pair to bowl Lambert and Wolf. And then we'll have Martell and McGaney against Thompson and Buttruff. Pat McGaney's trying to finish off 280 over there. 41 and 2, Cameron Doyle, Packy Handrahan against Jared Thompson and Kyle Troop. Big match on 41 on our other stream. 43 and 4, McLean and Johnson against Barda and Johnson. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, thanks, Lee. Action getting underway down here in game number six. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come down here now. Let's see where we would like to start here. Main screen. Wolf. And Lambert, tournament leaders Jerome and Howard. Thirty-seven and eight here in game number six. Martell McGaney, Thompson Buttruff. Again, over on channel two, we will have Hanrahan and Doyle taking on Troop and Thompson. Key matchup there. Bottom left of your screen. Pollock and Biondo, Cleveland and Lay. Jarvis and Johnson. Taking on Farish and Flora. Bottom left of your screen. Here's Mike Wolf. A lot of folks are throwing it pretty hard and right up the track, being nice to it at the bottom. More of a suitcase release. That's what we're seeing from Wolf right now as well. That's what Brandon Biondo does every year. And again, if you're just joining us, Pollock and Biondo, they've bowled five times together now. 
and they have made the top 12 four out of five times. Pretty cool. Oh, 6-8 for Tony Lambert. Thank you very much. Hard to believe we'll be halfway through here. So we are in game number six. Want to thank you for tuning in to today's coverage here on Inside Bowling. This weekend, we've really upped the ante with our sponsor with uh, active engagement and audience interaction and deals for you the audience it all starts with the opportunity to win two bowling balls courtesy of hammer bowling head over to insidebowling.com that's our main website it is a it is a storefront and we are adding things to it we'll be adding some blogs and some different stuff like that in the future as we roll out phase two of our website but we now do sell bowling balls bags accessories and soon to be shoes but you can, uh, you can pick up these bowling balls if you'd like to purchase them, but you can also enter the giveaway over on our website. You can click that link right there. It looks just like that banner right there is on our website, and you can win both of these balls. Courtesy of our friends at Hammer, and we're going to do the drawing tomorrow morning. We'll email those. We'll email everybody, thank them for participating, and we'll announce the winners in an e-blast on Monday morning. Random draw. In addition to that, we've got uh, about 11 different products that are discounted pretty deep bowling balls with the Brunswick family of brands over at InsideBowling.com. Click on the Holiday Deals tab, and you'll see that. And then last but not least, we've been printing merch since 2018, and we have sold thousands of T-shirts, walking billboards to spread the love for bowling brands and just bowling in general. And you can save 20% off of our hoodies and T-shirts at InsideBowling.com this weekend using the coupon code that's down on the bottom left, which uh, spells holiday. Holiday. And happy holidays to everybody out there. Holidays coming up here in the next couple of weeks. We got uh, whatever you celebrate. They're all coming up. And then we'll be into the new year of 2024. I hope it's, uh, hope it's been a good year for everybody, and I hope next year can be even better. world just seems to get crazier and crazier every year, doesn't it? It's uh, tight-knit groups and families and communities like this one here that uh, brighten my day a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but it's certainly nice to, to be able to fire up the stream here and have you know thousands of you tune in over the course of the weekend, interact with us a little bit, listen to us talk about bowling and showcase these great bowlers. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure and honor to be able to do it with you all. And I appreciate uh, everybody's time, because that's all. It's the only thing we can't get back is time, right? And I appreciate y'all very much. Appreciate Mike Wolf as well for bowling in this tournament. We've got 1,375 people watching right now, and we all know Mike has a big family. About 750 of the people watching right now are all related to Mike Wolf. So we do want to welcome in the entire Wolf clan watching here today on Inside Bowling. I mentioned it very early in qualifying because I like to joke around with my with my friend Mike Wolf and Roseberry Lambert, Brett Shepard, all those guys from Louisville. And I said that Lambert drew the short straw having to bowl with Wolf this year. Obviously, I was joking, but uh, not joking at the same time. And uh, they they really somebody somebody text that to them and let them know, and, and they've been fired up ever since. We did just see Greg Thompson 
leave the 5-9 and took the 9 right off of the 5-9. Mental error, a couple of back-to-back -back opens. Jared Thompson, or excuse me, Greg Thompson and Jacob Buttriff, they're, they're going to have to figure some stuff out here. They're very capable of winning this event. A lot of games left, seven left to go. 30 bonus pins awarded for a win. Don't forget about that, everybody. I'll have a game update after five here in just a moment. Oh, wow, solid nine. Or right, was that Brooklyn for a five pin? That was Brooklyn for a five pin. Yes, the back ends are flying. That's a, that's a good thought. Have your score update. I just saw him going to the office, punching in the scores. We'll have a score update here in just a moment after five. We'll show you how the positions changed, how they jockeyed around. So we do have some questions. Uh, you guys are wondering how, how to get to the standings. If you look at the pinned comment at the top of the chat, you'll see that we're posting every game on our Twitter feed, twitter.com forward slash inside bowling. And I know some of you uh, probably don't have Twitter. Uh, it's very easy to sign up. It's very simple. Um, you don't even have to use your account, but uh, that's, where we're put, that's where we're sending that out. Twitter is a good format for doing that. Facebook doesn't like continual text posts. It hurts your page, so that's why we don't do it there. Um, Twitter's a good spot for it, so that's where we're putting all the standings. And then I also display them on the screen when they come in. You can take a screenshot of that if you like. I'll have them momentarily. So if you look at the scores across these four lanes here, uh, score pace, scoring pace is coming down a little bit here. We do have one pretty decent sized string of strikes by one Mike Wolf. No surprise. But a lot of talking now about what's going on with the lanes. Close the next 
last night I can understand why we, we had a very tough follow. It felt like just it was crazy. We're going to go over here. Lanes 29 and 30, 31 and 32. See Pollock and Biondo just pacing 200 each. You think you'd know not to hit them so solid? You see Daniel Farish with an opening triple. Daniel Flora, or excuse me, Flora with a spare double. Jarvis just came in high for a 3 6 9. A.J. Johnson has an opening triple. Lay in Cleveland with the lead right now over Biondo and Pollock. Here come the standings. After five games, your leaders are Jared and Thompson. Excuse me, Jared Thompson and Kyle Troop. 17-79. Look how narrow that is, though, over Rich Jerome and Jason Howard. 17-74. These guys continue to impress. New to the holiday doubles. Round of 12 here, but they are hanging tough at 17-74. Stephen Jarvis and A.J. Johnson in third at 17.01. So we got three teams over the 1,700 mark now. Liz Johnson and Adam Barta at 16.77. Cam Doyle, Packy Hanrahan at 16.31. Bit of a drop-off back to Brandon Biondo and Eric Pollock. They came in as our leaders, and they have not had a great start to their day over five games. Cameron Doyle, excuse me, uh, Daniel Ferris, Brandon Flora in seventh at 1541. Greg Thompson, Jacob Buttriff in eighth at 1451. Chris Johnson, Tommy McLean in ninth at 1413. Michael Martell and Pat McGaney at 1411. Followed by Cleveland and Lay at 1350. And Lambert and Mike Wolf at 1348. So right now, three teams over the 1,700 mark. Jared Thompson and Kyle Troop pace the play, but just narrowly behind is Jerome and Howard with Jarvis and Johnson lurking. And look out for Barta and Johnson as well. Barta and Johnson are down on channel two if you'd like to watch them. They are bowling Chris Johnson and Tommy McLean. Also on channel two, Jared Thompson, Kyle Troop, your current tournament leaders, locked up in a match with our number, currently fifth, actually, Cameron Doyle and Packy Hanrahan in that matchup down there. Jarvis and Johnson. AAJ out there looking good. Spare four bagger, Jarvis still can bowl in the 270s. Or wait, I did that backwards, excuse me. AAJ 279 max. Jarvis after the open frame, struggling a little bit here. And still bowl 245. Right now, Farish and Flora with the lead. By the way, if you do hear a, a player talking, that's Ma Michael Martell. He's by a live mic up here in the booth little extra sounds from around the arena here. Thank you, Martin. Also, folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I know some of you come and tune in, but you forget to subscribe. 
Uh, we certainly would appreciate you subscribing. We are trying to get to 100,000 subs. We're at 82,000 right now. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, we, we typically drive people to our InsideBowling.com website where we have a full pro shop now and T-shirts and hoodies. That's a great way to support our stream if you're enjoying our, our coverage. We don't charge anything here on YouTube. I know we do have some ads that do play. We are a monetized channel here, but if you'd like to support in other ways, uh, we really like being able to offer you merchandise. All you got to do is change your buying habits, and uh, you can support us. So if you'd like to do so, we appreciate it. Uh, if not, just give us a like and a subscribe, and that's enough for us. That pays the bills as well. Going into my YouTube studio here real quick and taking a look. 82,086 subscribers. It's been a long journey. It's been fun, that's for sure. Just picked up a couple more after uh, talking about it. So thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. It means a great deal. Flora rings a 10. You're Johnson and Jarvis right now sitting in third you you want to get the w here well you want to get the 30 bonus pins the team i got my eye on though here on the right side is is pollock and biondo i i don't really understand why they're struggling but that's a team that can catch some extreme fire i mean they were our tournament leaders coming in tournament is not with out of reach for them by any means as you can see, they are in sixth position at 1560. They are 219 pins out of the lead. Greg Thompson making a ball chart change there on the bottom left of your screen. He's got 85 in the sixth with a double working. Buttrip with 94 in the fifth with a double working. Martell and McGaney right now have the lead in that match, but Martell only 75 in the fifth. Actually, they do not have the lead. It's, it's almost neck and neck, actually. I misread that by one frame. Bit of a grind out here on 37 and 38. Thompson and True. I have the two lanes of four different, and it's been like a gear different with my speed. It was 447 to 440 for Wolf, and Lambert gets the win on 35 and 36. They got done quick. They are done way before everybody. Greg Thompson comes in light there. Pollock now. Cleveland can bowl 215, especially after that shot there. 203 for Mike Lay. Pollock and Biondo are going to get the 30 bonus here. More than likely. Actually, let me take a little closer look at this on my monitor. 215 and 203. That's 418. Pollock. Oh. Did not double in the tent. This just got real tight. 201. 
Yeah, I take that back. I misread by a frame. Best Brandon can do is 207. Two oh seven and two oh one is only eight over. Matt Cleveland, fifteen over here. Just need count mark here for Michael A. They're gonna steal they're gonna steal thirty bonus pins here. I thought this was this was advantage Pollock Biondo, but I was wrong. Steven Jarvis back on it with the double on 29 and 30. A.J. Johnson still has 279 left. You see Greg Thompson striking with the silver ball now. I believe that's the MV Tour Pearl. Mike Lay with the strike there. Even if he got nine spare here, 193 and 215 would be 08. Well, that'd be, that would be a tie, wouldn't it? I'm having a hard time reading the monitor here. I'm, I'm looking at it on a small screen. It looks like Brandon did have, have the wood out there. I thought I saw that right the first time. A lot going on up here in the booth right now. Yeah, Lane and Cleveland get the win nonetheless. But it wasn't my best explanation of what was going on there. But uh, let's 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 jump back down here. So I was trying to keep an eye on this too. All right, this is right in front of me. I can see this, no problem. 184 for Greg Thompson, and he made a nice ball change in the seven. Martell misses the seven pin, so 184 and 192 is a difference of eight pins. So Buttriff would need to be able to score nine better than McGaney. There's a strike for Jacob. He can bowl 244, 234 for McGaney. So Buttriff can strike out. He can double in nine, I believe it is, and he and they will win. So every shot very important here for the 30 bonus pins between McGaney and Buttriff. McGaney. Flat seven, so Buttriff and Greg Thompson going to get the win. And I know Greg only bowled 180, but that was a critical ball change in the seventh frame for Greg. Helped earn his team 30 bonus pins. Jacob, here comes Jacob. It's nice to have Jacob bowl and anchor. I, I don't care. I think that might be the guy I'd want bowl and anchor for me. And he's in such a good mood, even though they've, they're not right now within striking distance. You know, these guys are uh, in eighth at 14.51. You know, they're 300, I'm sorry, 238 pins back. But bonus pins are helpful, very impactful. Standings are a little old now. I'll take those off the screen. Got this match here finishing up. Also got strikes of plenty on 41 and 42. We will take a peek there just a minute after Flora bowls. left. Oh, oh my goodness. What a break. Throw it over your toe next time there, Mr. Uh, Farish. <laughs> that was dead over the toe. Just want to take you down to bonus coverage here. This is stream two. Bringing you the action on YouTube on stream number two. Adam Barda, Liz Johnson looks like 444. And that's going to be enough for a win. Over Chris Johnson. 
and Tommy McLean. You got Packy here can bowl 268. Cam can also bowl 268. They are going to get the win. Jared Thompson only 192. Kyle Troop. Two seventy no, that's not two seventy nine. Two sixty nine. Every once in a while people hit those down there and it blurs up the screen for a second. <laughs> Kinda strange. Probably need to get a different camera for down there, but it always corrects itself. All right, back down here. Jarvis. Boom. Nice back half of the game there for Stephen Jarvis. 225. 242 left for A.J. Johnson. That would get them to 67. 467. We got 226 posted on the board. Still bowl 269 here, Flora. Needs a mark. Strikes even better. They're going to get the win. So Jarvis and A.J. Johnson, who were in third, not going to get the all-important 30 bonus pins here in game number six. What happened, Mike? I get up for a game and all the scores go away. Yeah, I know. 440, 440, 420, 390. It's a 5-0 on 42, but... Yeah, uh, scores have definitely gone through transition here. The lanes have. Getting ready to go into game number seven now, everybody. Lee and Mike here with you. Looks like our matchups here in in this game. We'll uh, we'll hang out here on lanes uh, 35 and 36, 37 and 38 as our main. Looks like we've got Brandon Biondo and Eric Pollock going to take on Chris Johnson and Tommy McLean just next door to the left. We're going to have Buttriff and and Greg Thompson again taking on Daniel Farish and Brandon Flora. Over on 29 through 32, Troop and Thompson. Looks like they're taking on Martell and McGainey. It should, uh, yep, and then 29 and 30, Barta Johnson, Doyle Hanerham. Okay, so I think I will invert to start. 
in this game seven. And uh, I'm going to go update the graphic on stream number two, Lee. And you can introduce those players. All right. If you want to watch any of these guys, the main screen, flip over to our second channel, 41, Jarvis Johnson against Lambert Wolf, 43 and 4, Jerome Howard against Cleveland and Lay. Starting game seven of 12. Game 12, it's a position round, and that's it. No stepladder. Everything carries over all weekend long. Kyle Troop, Jared Thompson after five in the lead by five. <clears throat> Barta Johnson within 102. They just pulled on this pair game five. And Chow, 278, 278. Butcher from Thompson, their opponents today is Greg Thompson. It's all the way off the other. Throwing, throwing pins around. Here's Adam. Appreciate the kind words in the chat, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a little cooler in here, Mike. 
Lee, I was just thinking the exact same thing. There's like a little draft in here I, now. I, I got up, walked around, had a quick lunch, and sitting with Sean Bybee, and I'm like, it's getting cold in here. Now I come back here, it's still chilly. Remember the one year, maybe the second or third year, you and I did this back at Redbird. We were on these little tables, mm -hmm. and it was about 28 degrees in the bowling alley. You and I were broadcasting this thing in winter coats. and It was chilly willy. You know what Mark said to Mindy, right? It's windy, Mindy. Yeah, we're not using much of the booth cam today. Uh, Lee, Lee likes to stand during this portion, and it's just kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're here. We're, we're both sitting right now. Here we are. What's up, everybody? What up out there in the world? We're bringing you this coverage right here from a little state called Illinois. We're here. We're here. There's our wonderful faces. We'll stay, we'll stay on for a little bit if you want to see us. Get those shoulders moving again like I did the other night. Chris Johnson. We do have a, we do have a team heating up. If this was NFL Blitz back in the day, we have a team heating up. Brandon Flora and... Um, <clears throat> Daniel Farish are perfect through three and a half frames over on yep. 35 and 36. Flora up yep. on the bottom left of your screen. I, I apologize. I called the wrong pair for Barter and Johnson because I was looking at the screen versus right in front of me. But either way, they've still started spare seven bagger. They had moved up to fourth after five games, only 102 behind. on the bottom left of the screen, Mike. Brandon Biondo has moved two zones to the left of where we've seen him play the last two years. It's just been throw straight, and if it starts hooking, throw harder.
if there was five more coming or not. There usually is. Nice shot there by Liz, but leaves the 10. Thanks, Sally, on the Merry Christmas wishes. One sir, Packy Hanrahan, spare double, spare, spare. Oh, nice messenger. Don't have to shoot the spare when you throw them around like that. Brandon Biondo with a nice shot. He is actually curving it a little bit now. Brandon, curving it a little now? Why? Really? Interesting. Brandon uh, Biondo, I was just talking to him. He uh, his claim to fame in this tournament is throwing throwing BBs up like twelve, All and, right. and he uh, he he can't do it with the oil lane or the oil machine uh, from the low end on this end. He says it's just he's placking too many tens. After six, Jared Thompson, Kyle Troop, plus eighteen twenty nine. Rich Jerome and Jason Howard right on their heels, plus eighteen fourteen. Jarvis and AJ Johnson. Barely in third by 1768. They're only three ahead of Cameron Doyle and Packy Handerhand in fourth, who are only 14 ahead of Liz Johnson and Adam Barta in fifth. All by themselves. Farish and Flora in sixth. Almost 100 behind fifth. More than 100 in front of seventh, Biondo and Pollock. Thompson and Troop, 1829. Jerome Howard, 1814. Two teams in that 1800 mark. We got three in the 1700s. Only one in the 1600s. So Biondo, Pollock, and further back. Those teams are going to have to put on a show if they're going to make a case to try to win this thing this year. You probably need back-to-back -back fives with wins to get back in the conversation. Yep. Very doable. Oh, absolutely. You just especially have to do with, it. Especially with the overall uh, scoring pace being down a little bit. But even the teams, if you look at the standings here, your last four teams are 28 pins apart, 9th through 12th. We went through the prize fund earlier while we were gone. It, it's not that big of a difference down there. It kind of picks up once you get to 6th. Where you get the big, you know, 500 a man spreads between the, the spots. I think Adam's using the uh, the new blue as a spare ball. Is he? Makes sense for the way he throws it. He can flatten out his wrist and he can travel somewhere and, and, and not have to bring a, a plastic ball. It gives him an extra weapon in his bag. Makes a lot of sense. Or it's a ball change because he usually just doesn't change balls. And yeah, happened to, I happen to see him throw the new blue down the lane or at least something that looked just like it. Which
<clears throat> just confirmed win-loss records for the morning with tournament staff. Jerome and Howard are five and one. Good to see you guys. Yep. Jerome and Howard five and one. Farish and Flora five and one. Thompson and Troop just five hundred. Three and three. 599 doesn't hurt. Jarvis and Johnson have four wins. Doyle and Hanrahan have four wins. And everybody, everybody is on the board. Everybody's got at least one win out of six. Tournament leaders here on 31, Jared Thompson and Kyle Troop. Both got some strings going. Putting them way ahead. Jerome and Howard are down on 43 and four. They're in second place in the event and look to be ahead in their match against Lay and Cleveland. Jerome's gonna shoot 224. So they're ahead by Enough. Give them their sixth win out of seven. I believe we're going to get a guest here in the booth here for some insight shortly. Insight bowling? Yeah, insight, insight bowling. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Looks like somebody changed my uh, down there banging on the table. Great shot there by Liz Johnson. She's trying to shoot 269. The team can get to the 490s. The opponents can get to 49.
Flora's been on fire. He and Ferris have been bowling pretty well. Mm. They're going to they're gonna win their match. That's really what's been carrying a couple teams, Mike. Ferris and Flora today are 6-1. and one. Jerome and Howard are 6-1. and one. They're bowling great, but they're getting the bonus pins. Ten back for Barda. All 43 of his kids are cheering him on. That's right. He's picked up seven <laughs> since last night. Yeah, I think he. I think you're right. Such a good dad, too. Sometimes they have to wear those stickers that say, hello, my name is. But once, uh -huh. he, once he remembers their name, it's uh, a great guy. <laughs> I want to go over to the Bardas for Christmas one year. I think that would be fun. Probably have to eat in shifts. Maybe. Probably a buffet line. About 17 workers. Thompson and Troop. Yeah, you can come right in here, K-Will. Oh, man. Yeah. How we doing? Let's see. Joining us now here in the booth is uh, my broadcast partner from Springfield. And ev everybody loves it when he comes in. Is Kevin Williams. Hey, bud. Hi, guys. If you, uh, this is your volume right here. So if you want the mic loud or okay. you want to hear yourself louder or softer, it's that one. Oh, I definitely don't want to hear myself louder. Okay. That's for sure. Well, thanks for coming in. You just texted me a little bit ago and just said, hey, if you need any help in the booth, I'll be happy to sit in. So always love having you in here, your energy and your insight on what's going on in the lanes. And you know all these guys. So thank you. Yeah. I might as well kill some time because I'm going to be here until 6 because that's when my flight is out. And I'm not a good enough bowler to be bowling today. So let's kill some time with you guys. Let's let's talk about real quick who you bowled with and, and kind of your experience here this year. I bowled with Michael Holloman, who I've bowled this event with for a long time. We kind of had a couple years where we went didn't bowl with each other, but we've bowled together for a long time. Um, in qualifying, our low game was 470 and our high game was 490. So we oh. were just a very consistent... 480 shooting team and then we got in the catcher's round last night and we just could not strike simple as that and it's hard in this format if you can't get more than nine half the time because scores are high and these guys are good this is definitely the most stacked tournament of the year it's the biggest event of the year we had how many bowlers 460 this year yeah that's so many bowlers we could have more if we had more room it's crazy i i and so this tournament is hard to make the top 12 now. There was a span where we didn't miss the top 12 for six years, and I haven't made the top 12 in a while, honestly. So, um, yeah, everyone that's bowling today is obviously a bunch of studs. Bunch of studs. What's uh, I haven't really looked at scores too much. I saw that Jared and Kyle were leading. Is they're that right, still the right, case? They're right in front of you. Oh, they are right in front of me. Perfect. Yeah, and we had uh, we had two 599s today uh, to those that are really? just joining. Yeah. We, yeah, two 599s. Who was it that shot those, the top two teams? No. It, so was, what, it was Troop and, and Jared. Jared did bowl 300, and Troop bowled 299. Okay. What did he leave? Tempin? Uh, I believe it was a, a light seven. seven. Yeah, mm. it's a little light flat. Seven. And the same is true for Doyle and Packy Handerhand. Packy had 300, oh, and Cameron had. couldn't get the seven to go. So we've had three guys this weekend right in front of us, ball in hand to shoot 600, and, and we are 0 it. for three. Didn't it? I, I heard that the team that shot 599 didn't even make the cut. The, the in no. qualifying, correct? In qualifying, no, they did yeah, not. It's tough. That's crazy. They did not know. cash either. Yeah, that's crazy. No, it is. It's right off camera, biggest game of this block, or uh, this game, not the block, because it's 599. Ferris and Flora, 543. 66 for Ferris, 77 for Flora, plus 30 bonus. So the top five are battling to win, because I think you get to six well, at 66. they just 66. shot 540. Oh, okay. It's so that's the team now. that shot 540? Okay, yep. so top six. I don't know this team in second. 
Jason Howard and Rich? Yeah, they. they I yeah. don't know them. So Jerome um, has bowled 900 before. Okay, that's a lot of strikes. And uh, I believe uh, Jason, um, Jason Howard just uh, got inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, okay, so they're area. good. So, okay. Real yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 Mar they're, Maryland Hall of Fame. They're, 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 right? they're stone cold killers. Which which team is that? They're the, the red, red shirts. shirts. They're the red, they're, here. They're the red coats. No. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're they're definitely coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, there's They've been coming now. all. They're six and one. Cost. Um, okay. Well, scores are pretty tight within the top six now that they just shot 540 with a win, I would assume so. We have a very close match here in front of us. Eric Pollock took a look at Plastic for his fill shot, left at Greek Church, and they lost the game by two. Yikes. Yikes. Beyond on them. Oh, they're in seventh. They were crushing qualifying, yep. too, so they're having a rough go at it in yep. the match play. And they bowled exceptional last night. Yeah. Today hasn't been. They had a big lead pretty quickly last night, which is hard yeah. to do in the catcher's round because everyone's striking. Yep. All right. Game number eight, Kevin, and our 15 or 100 or so fans out there from left to right, 29 through 32, Martel McGaney, Johnson McLean, 31 and 2, Farish and Flora against Barda and Johnson. Farish and Flora have won six of seven. Barda and Johnson are on a four-game winning streak. In front of us, 35 through eight, Doyle and Hanrahan against Lay and Cleveland. 37 and eight, Thompson and Troop are leaders against Jarvis and Johnson. On the second stream, 41 through four, Thompson and Buttruff against Jerome and Howard. And the last match, Lambert and Wolf against Biondo and Pollock. We shall stay here and give the Pac-Man some love. Pac-Man Jones, my boy. Do you guys call him that on tour, Pac-Man Jones? I call him Pac-Man Jones. No one else does. On the House Bowling Channel. I call him Pac-Man Jones all the time. Subscribe to their channel, of course. 100% subscribe. We both vlogged this weekend, so you'll get two point of views of a guy who bowled really good and then a guy who bowled, like, not bad. Oh, <laughs> Just wow. all right. That's cool. Just all right. You guys are cranking out some content over there. <laughs> Trying to be the biggest and bestest thing ever. Well, it's, it's, that's a tough gig, but, I mean, the thumbnails are great. The All the stuff that's going on over there, man, you guys are killing it. We if you want to find that. a spot here for this so you can yeah, actually I utilize won't spill, it. I you promise. won't. No, you're good. You're all good, man. I'm an adult. We'll put your logo on here. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep, there it is. I'm going to use exactly that on my jerseys this year. A nice look to it. All right, now that I'm in the booth, I want to see a 300 from someone. I just <laughs> want to see something cool happen. Lanes are going through transition here. But they're too good for that to affect them. All right, maybe Kyle Troop. Cameron. Maybe Kyle Troop right here. You think Kyle? Kyle's right. kind of in that moment right now where they He's are leading, but they're only leading by 15. Yeah. And he doesn't like to sweat it out late. He'd rather have a little lead going in. He'd rather get the work done early. So Troop's got that touch, and, and this pair is a little tricky. We've seen the left lane kind of go during qualifying, a lot of four pins. Uh -huh. And then uh, as you move in, it is sometimes tough to get the ball to tip down lane. We see a lot of five sevens. For straighter players, actually, on lane really? 37, and we saw him qualifying, yeah. Oh, he's but, hooking it. But oh, oh, okay, so no 300 because he just Do, over well, the top decker. Now, Kevin, you've, you've watched Kyle compete. You compete against him on tour. Yes. Does he, he looks laser focused right now, right? He is. He's got that look every single shot like it's life or death. Well, that's why I love Kyle Troop, and I think the sport needs more Kyle Troops because – even, you know, like a guy who made half a million dollars and set the record in a single season for earnings, he has major titles and stuff. And this might be a quote unquote to him a smaller event. It's not a smaller event, but when it comes to the money and stuff, you wouldn't tell by his demeanor right now. He's bowling like he's bowling for a half a million dollars. And I love that. He's always he's always in it. He's always passionate about it. When he throws a good shot, you can tell him he's talking to himself. He's fist pumping. And I think the sport needs more of that entertainment side of things. you got to show the passion. And, and and Kyle and Jared, they just won the Nightmare Doubles, so they're looking to go back-to-back yeah. -back on inside bowling. So funny thing is when I – Kyle, this is his first year bowling, as you know. Uh-huh. And 
when I first saw him, he came up to me and he goes, hey, can you put me and Jared down for your doubles tournament? We've decided we're going to try to win every doubles tournament. And I was like, all right, pump the brakes. You won yeah. one doubles tournament. You're just going to go win them all. And now here they're leading. So I guess I don't know anything yeah, about and he, anything. Yeah, and he was, he was he told me this week. I talked to him ahead of time, and he said, you know, we want, we were, I never bowled the, the Nightmare doubles, and we won first time. He goes, this 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 is a tall task here. But he's like, yeah. it would be amazing if we could win this one. Yeah, this one's hard go to one win. Go one for one and one for one. Yeah. Yeah. And Troop, he, he's been kind of off the reservation for a while, hasn't made it out to inside bowling live stream events. Right. But if you remember, that's kind of where, I mean, he was winning some regionals, which were important, but they weren't necessarily covered on a live bowling telecast. But when yep. he won the IB Open, he won his first title a couple couple months that's later. That's where I first was, met Kyle. He, he was off to the races, man, off to the races. And his career has just skyrocketed. Now he's back. And, yeah. and he's one for one this year bowling on inside bowling, and he's trying to make it two for two. So what you're saying is inside bowling made Kyle Troop who he is? No, I'm just saying. I'm just <laughs> that's saying, exactly what he's saying. I'm just saying there's some sort of formula here that when he comes to one of these events, we get we get a good version of Kyle yeah. Troop. I think the camera always gets a good version of Kyle Troop, though. That's he, true. He, he just likes to be in front of the camera, and I, that I appreciate about him, even more than his bowling, because I the entertainer side of me, I just like that. But, um, yeah, they're pretty locked in right now. Yeah, let's look at Kyle's focus here, and then I, I will do an invert here and take a look at the other matches, but we've got Cam Doyle over there. You know, Cameron's going much straighter today as well. He's humming it. He also just picked up a little split conversion to start the game, so they're trying to stay in it. Yeah, where I f I, the first year I met Kyle Troop, when I first met him, was at the IB Open when I was the first off the stepladder when Angie Ramirez made the stepladder. Yes, yes. I, I finished sixth that year, and I bowled against Kyle. And that's when Kyle could only throw it 1,000 up five. Yep. Like, he just threw it 100 I, everywhere. I was talking about he that would, earlier. He would fall on the lane once yep. a turn, like once a block. He would <laughs> foul three times. He would. Kyle would foul at least three times oh. a tournament. Now he's become this very Obviously touch he's player. Good. <laughs> well, I mean... We've seen him come in light a couple times now, going left to right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be fun to see what Kyle does to make adjustments here because he, he knows that shot wasn't his best, but it also, that might have struck yesterday. So to give you guys a little bit of insight on ball reaction when it comes to tour guys bowling on house shots, when a player 2-8-10s on tour, like you looking at, you know, Kyle and Farrell's just 2 8 10 Usually when we 2-8-10 on tour, it's because you missed too far to the outside. Where when you bowl on house shots, it's usually the other way around. Not always, but the oil is in the middle part of the lane a lot more. So sometimes you get into that oil a little bit too much, and it goes by. So the misses are the complete opposite. So I used to I used to always be confused of why tour guys couldn't strike on house shots. I'm like, you're the best bowlers in the world and you can't strike when they're the easiest they've ever been. And now that I've bowled on tour enough years, I understand that our adjustments are kind of the bipolar opposite. When you want a ball to hook on tour, you usually kind of get your angles in front of you a little bit more, throw it a little slower. Where here, you throw it away more to the dry. So sometimes they miss the move because it's the opposite of what you see, which is, which is something I used to not understand, but I get it more now. But you're right, lane 38, which you guys can't see right now, well, you can on the little one, is much tighter in lane 37. Yeah, at least where they've moved to, it's appearing to be yep. tighter, yeah. which probably means they've had to move in because there's, it's more extreme wet dry, meaning the oil in the middle is extreme and then the outside is hooking, so you got to try to try to blend that out as best as you can. You can do that with a bowling ball, too. You can you could grab a big A-sim on that yeah, right lane. Yeah, that picks up in the middle. Uh-huh, and you could go to something like that. You think it might be an advantage to have somebody – who's a great bowler but not a tour bowler on your team to help. Yeah. Like, you got A.J. Johnson, Stephen Jarvis. I think have, that's the perfect bowled, match. Who have both bowled on easy stuff yep. and in college. Mm -hmm. A.J. is bowled in the pros. Stephen knows how to handle house shot. He's like, yeah, just, A.J., just go two and one left and yeah. and get the ball down lane. And A.J. is probably yeah. like, a thousand percent. okay. The thing is, like, you see you know, some of the people just watching – it's 2 8 10 again. Yeah. yeah. So the people watching, there, there's a lot of faces in here that might not be that familiar to you, but all these guys are know how to bowl. Like the two people that I didn't know, and then you guys throw out that they have 900s and they've won and they're Hall of Famers and stuff. Like there's levels to bowling where there's guys that are weekend warriors and have been doing this for 20 years and know how to strike on stuff like this that just didn't take the next step to try to bowl on tour, whatever that may be, if they have family or a job that they like and, you know, whatever didn't fit their lifestyle. But uh, you are right. I think the perfect blend is 
you know, the tour guys just know how to bowl because we do it for a living. And then you get the guys like a Steven Jarvis or some of these other names out here, Daniel Ferris and stuff that are weekend warriors that know how to strike on stuff like this. So, yeah, I think it's a good blend. I also think a lefty-righty combo is really good in this event because you can kind of get both sides and not, not one side's ever really oh. shut out. Hey, by the way, um, Kyle Troop just went down to get another bowling ball. And I'm predicting it's going to be a big ace in. Something earlier, stronger? That's my that's my prediction. Or Kyle could also go to a weaker ball and attack the dry. He's got a lot of tricks. Yes, he does. I think he's going to want to hook it at this point. I think he's going to want to stay in where he 2 8 10 and find a ball that picks up a little sooner. Liz the Goat Johnson on 31. How good is she? Stud. Cameron and Packy are picking it up now. And I say that in Cameron's 10 pins. All right, after seven, Thompson and Troop have grown their lead. It's still not very big, but it's 38. It's been five and 15, so 38. At, at least Four nine. That, that sucks. <laughs> that is nine. like the worst. Got a ball a little more round, you could see. It was a lot more, like, slower off the spot, a little continuous, but four nines after yep. going 2-8-10, 2-8-10. And he's All looking right, at 40 in the fourth. Rest yep. of the standing, sorry. All right, no no, no problem. Thompson and Troop, your leaders right in 37 and 8, plus 1963. Jerome and Howard have been in second for a few hours now, 1915 over. Here come Liz Johnson and Adam Barta. They're all the way up to third. They're within 100 of the lead, 1875. Jarvis and A.J. Johnson almost within 100, 106 back of the lead, 1857. Right behind them, moving up to fifth after a 540-something game, Daniel Ferris, Brandon Flora. And right behind them at 1793, Cameron Doyle and Packy Hinderhand. Then it's 200 back yep. to the next six. So you're... You're kind of running out of time if you're 7 through 12. I you would might, agree. You might be out of time. You probably need 550 to fix that. The thing is, there, there's, there, the pattern calls for a chance to be able to bowl big scores, but that's for everyone. So sometimes it's hard to make up ground when everyone's shooting 480. But also as they're getting trickier and there's bonus pins involved, any team, like you just saw, can shoot 540 with 30 bonus pins. That's 570. That's going to get you up the ladder. Now, for the people outside of the top six, you're going to have to do a couple yeah. of those giant games to do so, Yeah, just, which is kind of hard when your momentum's kind of where you're at. You're not quite right. figuring it out yet. I mean, but. look, look at, at Brandon Floor and Daniel Farish. They were 170 or so. Yep. In sixth place, yep. they shoot 540. They move up a spot, yep. but they're still 120 behind. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's hard. And, and how how many games are they going to shoot 540? I mean, they, they they're good <laughs> enough, but it's just that's just hard to do. They, I think they have at, two misses. I think they're at four, five, five hundreds today in seven yeah. games. But the 540, you're Kyle point got is, that one. Ugh. Kyle tried to shut his angles down. If you guys could kind of see from that angle. Where the last couple shots he was getting it to about five six down lane. That one he trapped the three pin a lot more, got it to about ten down lane, rolled it a little more forward, and he stuffs a nine pin. So Kyle has gone nine spare, seven two, seven two, eight one, and he's gonna go nine spare. To have sixty in the fifth. So I have a feeling we're gonna have a little bit of a lead change. So the team in second, Jerome and Howard. They're on our second stream. If anybody's on 41 through 4, you can just click on there. One just has the front six now. Yep, so that is Rich Jerome. He's got the front six. Jason Howard has nine or, uh, seven spare, nines per strike, nines for nine spare. They Should are uh, still pretty close match early against Thompson yeah. and Buttram. Pac-Man Pac Jones, wrap seven on 35. Hmm. Who's this team on 36 that packing and them are bowling? So this is Matt Cleveland and Mike Lay. They are. Are they from here? They are. Yes, they are from here. I know Matt, Matt, Cleveland. Matt's from yeah, Troy, Mike. which is probably 20 minutes from here. Okay. Mike, uh, I don't know exactly where he lives, but it's I've about seen. the same distance. They are um, as tough as you can find as an opponent in this in this area. Yeah, I, I've seen the name Cleveland before. So so Matt has made the top 12 in this event before. Uh, not with Mike, although they could have made it together. I'm not. 
I don't, want, I don't want to say they haven't. I just know Matt has made it before with a different partner. Who uh, Who was your pick to win this event before it started? I know you guys usually do stuff like that. Did uh, you pick someone? We talked about it this morning. And I was stuck between Biondo and Pollock, who have had a rough Their go. worst finish is like 14th. I know, right? That's what. And, that's what, and uh, my other, other pick was right here, Thompson and Troop. Because Biondo can throw it hard if he needs to. Yeah, yeah. And Kyle can go as far Biondo left. Biondo has a lot of the house shot tricks. Right. And Kyle is also one of the best bowlers in the world. Yes. And he got a lefty-righty. So you're, if one side's in trouble, yep. like, I agree. like here on 37-8, Jared Thompson's doing just fine. All right. He's, Kyle got one. Can't shut him out. He's got two. You know, he's got 269 better. left. You know, they can still bail it out. Kyle Troop is well capable oh. of throwing the back seven to shoot 214, and if his partner can bail him out with a 240-plus, you know. Right. It's, it's, it's not going to be the end of the world. Right. They're going to lose some ground. Right. But, but, you know, A.J. Johnson and Steven Jarvis are saying, well, all right, you guys can get to 480. Flat 10. But uh, that won't be enough for bonus spins. Yeah. We have anything to say about it. Of course, A.J., we start talking about them, and that's how, how this usually works, as you know. Somehow we let two five ninety nine slip through, but front five flat ten for AJ. Yeah, you know when you're Kyle and Jared right now, and you have a fifty pin lead, you can just try to salvage what you can here. You're gonna probably lose a little bit of that lead, but you're still in a good spot. You're still gonna be in second place, probably be about a hit out of back well, in the lead. So if if uh, Rich Jerome keeps striking, that it might be might a lot be gone. more. Yeah. Yeah, Jerome has the front yeah. seven. His partner can strike out for 237. But his partner only has two strikes so far, so he's grinding a little bit more. He's one for his last one, though, Kevin. One for one. You're only as good as your last shot. Packy was a 379. Steve Jarvis. I don't I'm I don't want to say for sure, but I'm relatively positive. He has thrown that yellow vibe all day long. Uh, it's the only ball I've seen go down the lane whenever I've watched them bowl last night and whenever. Which to me is pretty impressive because when you grab those mid-price balls that are like those bright colors like that, a lot of times those balls are very skid snappy. Yeah. And on a house shot, you would think that would just insinuate the pattern and make it more extreme, but he's been able to make it work. Well, he's got a pretty unique ball roll. Where I don't, I think his ball roll blends it out a little bit. He's got like the kind of top spin type ball roll. The frisbee slows down a little bit down lane. See if AJ can get back on the strike train after the flat ten on the hooking lane. That one's a little steeper. Come back, steeper as in he got it further right quicker. For people that yeah. want to know some bowling terms, if we but say steeper, we open up them angles. You too. You got nine out though. Those are those are easy leaves or easy looks to to leave nines or for us eights. The thing about AJ is his ball gets through the pins pretty forward because he has good like a good forward ball roll. Oh, uh, wasn't a very good shot by Kyle. You could kind of see he kind of helped it with his follow through, kind of flared it out there a little bit. This just goes to show that over the course of 12 games and the lanes transitioning, even being on a house shot, how how much the standings can fluctuate. Just when oh, yeah. you think a team is going to elevate oh, themselves yeah. and start to pull away, you get a little hiccup here, like what we're seeing right now in game seven or eight. There's just too much talent. Too much talent here. You can't give guys like this a chance, you know. You gotta pretty much be pedal to metal the whole time. As the team in second right now, the leadoff bowler has the front eight looking for the front nine. And Jared just flat sevens. Still has 240 left though. They just gotta bail out and get what they can here. Try not to lose too much ground, essentially. Don't forget, everybody, here on Inside Bowling, we have two channels for you. You can watch lanes 41 through 44 on channel two on our YouTube channel. Also want to thank Hammer, our sponsors. Don't forget, you can have the opportunity to go over and win the new Hazmat and the new Blue Hammer. The new, new. Go over to InsideBowling.com and click on the graphic that you see right there on your screen. Love it. And you can enter in to win those two bowling balls. And, of course, over at Inside Bowling this weekend, we have Brunswick bowling balls on sale, yeah. deep discounts, and also you can save 20% off all apparel with coupon code HOLIDAY. That's how you can support the stream oh boy. here. Oh, it wasn't even close. Inside Bowling. Thank you. 
one noon cross. So you guys can't see, but on the second channel that Mike just threw out for you guys, the team in second place, leadoff bowler, has the front nine. And if you look on the very right, you can see he's about to bowl on 41. Yep. His partner's bowling on 42, who has only two strikes to eight frames. He's looking to try to grind out a two-team 2-0. Two so you can barely see over there 42 Ooh. as he's missing. Hope he got the seven But the out. team in second. <laughs> we can't see it, but yeah, he did. Okay. He did get the seven out. But the team in second, one of the bowlers has the front nine. So he's looking to kind of yeah, carry the load while his partner is figuring it out, yeah. which is exactly how it should go in a doubles tournament, you know. I'm I'm a big believer of I don't care who's who's striking or who's not. You just look at the team scores where um, Packy bowled really well in the casters round last night, and Cameron was pretty upset because he struggled a lot. And Packy yeah. said, "It's the double score. We don't I don't care if it's me carrying the load. I got you. You'll get me yeah. whenever I need it." So that's exactly what lane 41. You can barely see front nine team yeah. in second trying to take a pretty big lead. It pretty much as that's so, ten back and. So so Rich Jerome, one, he's got the front nine. Two, front ten. No, now he's, I, I was trying to talk that shot up. He threw it so quickly. <laughs> um, they were only up in the match at that point by 31. Yeah. Now it's 44 as Greg Thompson goes through the face, leaves the 369. If he were to you know, not strike on that shot, I think Greg Thompson strikes. Yep. We were looking at a 10-pin match. Now yep. the bonus pins are in play. Yep. Now it's 40-something the other direction. This shot becomes a little more free and easy for Rich Jerome on 41. And he can't wiggle a two out. 280 for him. And then Kyle throws a much better shot on 37 there, where the, you can actually see he actually hit up on it a little bit. Kyle can still bail out 194. His partner can shoot 236. You know, 420 is not an ideal game, but it's, it's not going to kill you. You're just going to have to make up some ground here these last couple games. But that team is well talented enough to do so. Packy strikes out for 235. Cam can strike out for 227. Cam pretty much just needs to stay clean to wrap up this win, correct? 225, yeah. Cam just needs Any? a mark to win his match. Any mark. As AJ is striking. Looking for the ninth one, he has 279 left as a max score, which is a lot of points. And that was, you guys could see like how straight his ball goes through the pins. That's such a, that's that's what you want your ball to do. His ball is hooking a lot on the lane and creating a lot of angle on the lane, but as it gets through the pins, it gets very straight. That's why you don't leave those nine pins. Another term that people use for that is forward. It's going forward, forward. through the pins, yeah. And Bo Burton would say that's a working ball. That's a working ball through the pins. This ball is you, working. You, you can see it rotating the yep. label through the pins. Yep. You'll so, see a lot of tour guys there, no matter how much angle they create on the lane, their ball gets very forward through the pins, yep. which is it's just crazy to see. So with that six pin for Jared Thompson, that is a lead change. Yes. Because they can only get to four, four ten. They were they had a lead of almost 50, but how uh, Jerome and Howard are in the 470s. They're gonna win with yeah they're gonna win with 470, yeah. five I think if he gets the count. Yep, yeah. and and yeah the 30 bonus whereas Jar and Jar Jarvis and Johnson. So let's just take a look at them here. They came into this game in fourth. They were 106 behind the lead. They might win this game by 106 scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the 30. Yeah, plus Good the 30 point, is Lee. huge. Big, big lead changes. Pretty, I mean, it can happen fast when scores are like this. You just hit a pair that doesn't quite yeah. match up to you, and, and then some team shoots 540 at you or 520. Yeah. And then when we, we get done here, we'll take a quick look and see where uh, Johnson and bar to see what they're doing this game because they came in ahead of Jarvis and Aja. It's, 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 it's overwhelming how many things are going on. But right now, in front of us, well, not so, now. Just so taking a quick peek <laughs> at the scores for you guys. Bart, you can see you Bart, can see AJ on the small screen on the yeah, left. Yeah, I'm going to bring him back. Bart is on 32, 31 and 32. Oh, they're having a great game. They're striking Look at lot. that. It's AJ looking to get the first one. It is very possible, Kevin and Mike, that Troop fall and Thompson fall from first Third. to fourth. Fourth. 
AJ's in the 260s now. Kyle needs to bail this out. He needs to bail out 190. Just take your loss and uh, get back to the striking they've been doing all weekend. It's pretty good. Little, a little steep. Hooked a little bit, four pin. Liz Johnson can strike out for two, eight, zero. That's almost maximum points. And her partner can strike out for 258. Is that what that says? I mm -hmm. can't quite see. Yep, it's 250 right. something. Liz doing the thing so, where she throws it in front of her better uh, than everybody else ever. So Jerome and Howard finished with 81 plus 30. One, 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 2,000 and 26. Okay. For Jarvis and Johnson. Our leaders are going to bowl a minus score this game. They only have 386 maximum if Kyle yep. strikes in this field ball. Just, yep. so, pair just got to him a little bit. Yeah, so that's a 144. So that's 1957, 1997, 2000. So they didn't quite catch him. But close. But they're 25 by close. They they Just came a hit. or or no no wait I have list. I haven't put the, that's so they didn't catch the lead, but they just went uh, Troop and Thompson minus 14, 19, 49. 40, 49. So yes, they did catch them. So right now we've got Jerome and Howard 2026, Jarvis and Johnson 2001. Liz Johnson and Liz Varda and are aren't done yet. 500 right now. Thompson and Troop, 1949. Liz is going to cover this because she's the GOAT, and she's going to pick this up like she picks up all her spares. And for 268, and Adam can strike out for 258. And I'm going to say Adam is going to strike out ah. because he strikes a lot. As Flora converts the one three nine, so it's gonna be a. They've been bowling so well today, and they ran into a, a, speed, a speed bump, and they're gonna shoot minus themselves. Yep, happens just, fast. They, they just got into the conversation, and Ten now back. they're Adam Barta. And guys, they're I, now in five hundred. I'm gonna be getting individual scores from the from the office, um, because I think, you know, I like to look and see how how folks are bowling in different parts of the block, you know, yep. as the lanes transition. And we're starting to see some of the guys that are hooking it Get. are starting to have some problems. But Liz Johnson going straight at him is, is heating up right now, right? Yep. You've got the three phases of this event. You've got the fresh, you've got the first transition, and then, you got the and then you've, you've got, like, the, the second into the third transition. Maybe there's four, and then you got just burn, yeah. right? And we are, we, are, we are going to be getting into burn here probably end of game nine. Yeah, say the last three games is probably where it's going to get down to the nitty gritty. But you're right. You're starting to see guys, they're going through their bag of tricks. Like you're seeing guys start to make drastic changes, not just little progressions. Usually when you see guys, you know, kind of struggling, they'll just move in a couple more, a couple more, maybe an arrow. Now you're starting to see guys move 10 back right, throw it harder. They're trying to loft it. They're trying to do some stuff with their hands. It's not It's not my new, my new moves yet. All it's right. hard to say. Uh, Mike and Kevin, by my quick count, we have new leaders. Yes, we do. It's Liz Johnson and Adam Barta. Yes, That's amazing. 150, Adam 156 out. over that game, including the bonus, takes them to 2,031 over. They have a five-pin lead over Rich Jerome. Who's still in second. And Jason Howard, <laughs> even though everything else is moving around, they're yep. just still in second. Good place to be. Third place by my count, Stephen Jarvis, A.J. Johnson, plus 2,001. Oh, Martell. Good Jared effort. Thompson and Kyle Troop with that minus 14 fall to 1949. So not only did they fall to fourth, they're almost 100 out of first. That's crazy. There's, Happens fast. There's now a big gap to fourth. Fifth, Cameron Doyle and Packy Hanrahan at 1885. Well, it's not that big. And then Farish and Flora at 1808. I mean, that just jumbled up the scores, and everyone's in a different spot besides our Everybody's second place team. Everybody's in a different spot. Besides uh, our second place team. I, I don't. Adam usually. Have they? Adam has usually, Adam won this event? 
No, they finished second with uh, I feel two or like three they, times. They, uh, yeah, I feel like in, in, made... every, in every center they've made match play. Yeah, Adam sometimes likes to know what's going on, but he usually comes and asks, so I don't, mm. I won't go bother him unless he wants to know. Game number. Uh, Nine. So I'm all right. I got one more match to record a winner on. It's the only match that's going on still. Martell and Martell partner. and uh, Pat McGaney can get to minus 10. And this guy's got a double to beat yeah, So then we got McLean and Johnson. It's in the whole way it looked like. To oh, maybe get, so they can get to 03 and 95. So that's. He needs this one. Needs this one. Needs minus and we have the first and second place team bowling in front of us right now. Yeah, uh, the newly they, first place right, team. They, and they, the, they may or may not know that. They they don't. But I, I bet they have an idea though. They they got to know. Everyone, that, everyone, when you're bowling, everyone kind of knows where you're at and what you need to an extent. Especially but, when there's only 12 teams, you can kind of yeah. see what everyone's bowling. And with the gaps in between the pairs, you can, you you know. Yeah. All right, here's this is for a win. Ten back. All right, so now he just needs. Just count. Oh uh, well, they're already at 93 minus. Well, he needs three pins, four pins. Just, just throw a hey, diddle diddle. Throw it down is, the middle. Is Greg Thompson throwing backup balls? Because he just threw at a two four seven ten, and I just don't think he would have left that. That's throwing. a tough lead for a right hander. I don't think he would have. <laughs> I didn't see, but I saw he threw at that spare backup. I know he does pull out the backup sometimes. Yep. All right, game number nine, Kevin. Nine. In on the screen is uh, 29 through 32. We should probably flip it here in just a second. They're just getting started in front of us. The little screen is where you guys need to look at. For yeah. Right now. Uh, bottom. I I I'm more than capable. I just have to <laughs> I just have to make sure not to decapitate you when I do this. Yeah, that's all right. If that's how I go, commentating bowling. Actually, that sounds miserable. I'm gonna be honest. All right, there we go. All right, 37 and eight. This is the newly first, but not newly second place team <laughs> bowling each other now, and they're both striking. So I think there's gonna be a lot of strikes thrown on this pair because, like Mike said, I think these guys are doing what the lanes are asking of the bowlers now. The guys that the guys and the girls that are keeping their angles a little more in front of them. They're playing more of the volume in the middle part of the lane, the oil in the middle. Um, versus trying to go all the way around it and get super steep with your angles and throwing it to the dry. The dry is a lot less predictable than the oil is. So the people that are trying to play that oil around 9, 10 um, seem to be doing the right things and yeah. shooting 250. And the guys like Kyle Troop, who is the example that I can give because he was right in front of us and when we were kind of talking about his game, yeah. he was trying to go way around it. His break point was like 5, 6. And his ball just a little too erratic. Yep. He would four pin. He would two eight ten. He just his ball didn't want to do the same thing twice in a row. Where you watch Liz here, as yeah. she's going about dead up twelve. It looks like twelve to like ten. Gets a little light mixer. Her ball is going to be very, very more predictable. Very much more predictable. All right. His words. And the other thing I've been keeping an eye on, Kevin. You know, this is match play. There's thirty bonus. We have Rich Jerome and Jason Howard, who are seven and one, winning those bonuses. That's pins. a lot. Of Bart, wins. Liz, and Adam lost their first three matches and have won the next five. Oh, really? So they're That's, on. They're on be, a heater. To be yeah, to be winning with three losses is uh, speaks to their scores that they have been bowling. On 35 and 6, we will have Lambert and Wolf against Martell and McGaney. On the low side, Jarvis Johnson, who are now in third place. As far as, uh, Mike Wolf is my ball rep on tour, and I crossed with him at the Cashers round last night. And the first thing I said to him was, you got me tonight, right? You're going to ball rep me? Can I ask you when I'm bowling bad? And he said, ask me every shot. <laughs> I, got a, I got a quick question. Why is this graphic up on the screen? Which one? Man, I have so missed having Lee on the broadcast. Such a natural. I don't. I don't know. So how did that just appear on the screen? While I, I did it. I just felt. I just felt uh, it was necessary. Well, I, I thank you for the. Uh, yeah, I know how to do all compliment. this stuff, so I did. 
<laughs> I mean, we did we did have this one too. Always good to have Lee in the booth. Always enjoy his commentary. Man, because Lee's the goat. Lee is the goat. He's the goat of holiday doubles. That's Jerry Anderson. I will not. I will not take that. You know what cracks me up about bowling the most? Maybe not the most, but something that really cracks me up is it's such an unassuming sport for when some people are good. Like some people, you can watch them and they just they kind of look boring. They don't look like they're going to be anything special, and then they're just like never stop striking. That's that's the beauty of this sport is you can't judge a book by its cover at all when it comes to bowling. Other sports, you can kind of tell the people that are good on how they're built and how they kind of carry themselves, but bowling, you have no clue. You have silent assassins everywhere. The lanes are coming to Elizabeth, though. When she's got the light hit like Elizabeth. that, mixing them up, and these lanes are starting to fry for everybody else, she's they're just attacking the dry and getting the light hits. Ooh. They're going to bowl a big game on 37-8, and eight, both teams, because this is our yeah. first and second place teams, and they're both striking. Yeah. And I love the ball Bart is using. He's using that obsession towards, so he's pretty much used the entire tournament. Low RG, uh, and it has a ton. It has a ton of games on it, and it's just evening everything out. <laughs> you know, there's something to be said for a ball that's got seven, eight hundred games on it. You think he has that many games on it? Yeah, let's ask him, Adam. Hey, Adam. We have a question I'm gonna for you. I'm going to set the over under at five hundred and take the 500? over. Five hundred. Do you how, think? He how knows? many games do you think are on that ball? Uh, I'm gonna he said lose. not as many as you would think. Wow. 300, 300 what did I just win? Okay. What did I, I just won something. This is the I, first I bet I've ever were, won. I thought, I thought you had five to 700 games on it. Well, it's been out of commission the last two years because it only holds this tournament. It only uses it. it, only uses it this, this is the holiday of, doubles mm -hmm. ball? Well, yeah. Yeah, it's the holiday <laughs> doubles ball. Is that what I'm doing wrong? I come in with fresh <laughs> equipment? Yeah. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, the balls that I'm, I threw that struck this weekend, I'm only bringing here for the rest of my career in this tournament. You're, you're balling good. You look good fundamentally. On everything. Yeah. Fundamentally. Has she ever not looked good fundamentally? <laughs> uh, one, one year in your knee was bothering her, and they finished like sixth. Oh, well, you can, that's nice of them. She fell off some shots every so often. Well, that was nice of I've, them. I've been watching her bowl for a long time, and, and there are times that, that Liz – Liz doesn't quite have it. She's got a no, little mechanically a issue, but right now she looks really good. And that, when when she's carrying that light hit, that light hit, Liz, it just keeps falling. That's oh, she just she told me to zip my mouth. She told me to zip it. She doesn't want to jinx anything. Adam Barta with the 300 games bold bowling ball. And see, and that's how it lays off in the puddle. Even the light makes her. That's where Troop was two eight tenning. Yeah, because Troop Troop missed missed like basically just made the same shot Barta did, but because their styles are different, Barta mixed them up and Troop leaves the two eight. Well, the thing is too, and I touched up on this while you uh, were running around grabbing some scores, is that Troop was just a little too steep with his angles. He was trying to play too much of the dry, where it's way more unpredictable. Versus Liz and Adam are playing more of the track now. They're playing around ten down lane. They're playing the oil that is there. Jarvis too. Jarvis yes. is doing the exact same thing. And so you just your ball's going to do the same thing a lot more often whenever you're playing the oil on house right now. Where when it gets to the last couple games where it's just going to be hooking from everywhere, then you're going to go back to those steeper angles. You'll never really see Adam Barta and Liz have steep angles. That's just not their game, and that's not what, they're, that's not what they do. As Michael Martell is probably going to have really steep angles here on lane 36. But that's super that, hooking it. That's his comfort zone. It is his comfort it's zone. That's my comfort stand zone. Stand right, throw yeah. left. Yours just goes faster than his. It does a little bit. I haven't had to throw it hard in a long time. I used to throw it hard all the time on house. Not so much anymore. Man, I am impressed. Is that Jerome? Is that which one that is? That I, is I Rich Jerome. Yep. Rich Jerome. I am impressed. I would. He was the one I was kind of referring to of like the unassuming. Like if he just kind of gets up there, he's not. Like over excited or anything, he just gets up there, throws a shot, gets oh. off the approach, oh. and he's missed once in since I've he's been on my radar. So by the way, well, he you can uh, ball wrap him anytime. Oh no, I think he's doing good, just fine without me. I just want to tell you guys, I love their jersey setup here today too. They're just both, the red they, t-shirts. They, they came in in red t-shirts. Obviously, one is on Columbia 300 staff, one is on Storm staff. He's got the bolt under the collar on the back, got the C300 on the back under the collar. They've got their logos on the front. So Just they, nonchalantly. So they are matching. They yep. are matching, but at the same time, they're like, 
Oh yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> they're, un, they're unassuming. Yeah. Like they're like, we don't want anybody. We don't want to draw any attention to ourselves. But at the same time, we're being respectful with our clothing. Yeah. I like it, and to our to our ball companies. Well, you know, there's that, and a lot of people, because this is a tournament that so many people just bowl every year, that they have like their holiday doubles jerseys and stuff. So they're yeah. just like, let's throw on a t-shirt and let's just uh, let's just bowl in second all day in match play and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> As Liz has the front five. Yeah, the lanes have I just bet, I bet really the ball ball that Liz boys. is throwing has a little less games on it than Barda's. You know, I don't know. I don't know about it, that. I feel like she would probably drill new balls more often. Maybe not. I don't I don't really know. I'm just kind of guessing that she would drill fresher stuff. I feel like fresher stuff would just roll better for Liz's game. I mean, it looks like a phase two. Yeah. But that Dang. could be looks a. Looks amazing. Well, well I'm going to ask, her. ask like, her. She's going to come sit right by. I feel me. like it's got to be pretty fresh. I feel like she doesn't throw old bowling balls. I'm going to say that she drilled it two months ago. Okay. All right. Right when we talk about, hey, Rich Drum's only missed once. I clouded him. Yeah, you're getting the hang of this, Kev. I Liz him. just said that she, she drilled it two months ago at the LBC yeah, in May. event. Yeah, in Yep. Um, and she uh, she says the ball's been in the line for four years, and it's her go-to ball. She loves yeah. it. Okay, so fairly new cover. I would expect her to drill new covers pretty often. She's got she's got her favorite bowling ball, most comfortable bowling ball. She's getting playing her favorite part of the lane, and she's able to get the light hit right now. That that's a recipe for 850. For um, three games. Well, she has the front six, and two shoot 850. <laughs> you need to have the front six every game. Mike Wolf on the new. I, so last night crossing with Mike Wolf. He started off 270, 270, 280, and he blind ball changed after having the front nine from the new on this end. We go down to the low end, and he just ball changes to a new ball and has the front eight just blindly. Did he go to the GB2? Yes, or the, he did. I thought and so. And then he went back to the new like game four. I'm like, man, you are a professional bowler. Ooh, Ad, Ad, sure Adam, these hits right now for Adam Barda, he needs to run to the casino, and he needs to – do something, play a slot or something. No, he's not. He, instead of doing that, he's just gonna win ten grand at the holiday doubles with the goat Liz Johnson. They have a little bit of a cult following in St. Louis too. They got a they got a big cheering section. People fall in love with this team. They have fallen in love with Johnson How do you and not? Barta. Adam, Adam has four million people turn it, tune into his game three stream on League every Wednesday or whenever it is he does it. He has a huge following. Michael Wolf with that new blue hammer. By the way, if you're new. just joining us and you're new to the broadcast today, maybe oh. you just came over at halftime, maybe. you can win a new blue hammer. Over at InsideBowling.com, you can win the new blue hammer and the hazmat. Just enter in your name and email address and answer one question for us, and you'll be entered in to win those two bowling balls we'll be drawing on Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Be there, there, there. <laughs> All right, Mike, that's what you asked for. Oh, yeah, my individual scores. There you go. Beautiful. That's Thank the you. The new scores that we yeah. already knew because Lee is a good commentator and data gatherer. I almost have him right. He's a little bit of everything. I have I had Thompson and Troop score wrong, but that's close. They're still in fourth. I don't have them yet to put them on. Oh, yeah, I do. Never mind. They were on it. So we're, right now we're looking at four teams in your top four that have pulled away. Cameron Doyle and Pecky Hanrahan are within shouting distance in fifth at 1885. Yep. You, you can't have any blemishes at that point. Farish and Flora need some more of their 500 games that they've been shooting all day long. Uh, it's going to be tough to get to 450. This is almost kind of a position round for most of the teams. Our, our one and two are bowling each other. Five Three. and six are bowling each other. 
They're down on our second stream. It's going to be tough for Ferris and Florida to shoot 500, but they could still get to a uh, solid score in a very competitive match. Ooh. All right, Adam's looking to just take a huge lead here. Looking for a six-bagger. Light mixer. Oh, it didn't go. So I want to do a deep dive into the averages through eight games, everybody. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to do a deep dive. Numbers. The, per the first person I want to go look at is Elizabeth Johnson. She is bowled 1978 so far today. Do you know what Adam Barta is bowled today? No, I don't. You're going to tell me, though. 1978. Oh, they're, they're both the same score? The exact same score. That's team bowling. They're both averaging 247.3. Today for the today. match play. Yep, today. Yep, and Liz... Her last two games, 269, 268. So game seven and eight, 269, 268. And I mentioned something about 850 just a little while ago. Yep. She's working on 300 this game. The lanes are really coming to Liz here in the transition. Yep. Her games today are 237, 245, 236, 238, 278, 207, 269, and 268. Bart has been a little more consistent throughout. Didn't have the low game in there of 2-0. He bowled 250 the last game, but those, those, those two are both averaging 247.3. Also averaging 247.3 with the exact same score <laughs> is Packy Hanrahan. Bowling with Cam Doyle, who's averaging 237.1 today. Those are just today averages. Packy struggling today this game. Kyle Troop is averaging 253.4, and that was with 173 the last game. That's crazy. Tells you what, what Troop's been he doing today. He was crushing them the first eight. Yeah, first seven. I've got after eight seven. here, so that was game That's eight. Right. Brandon Flores is averaging 244.8 today, and Daniel Farish is averaging 237 today so far. Steven Jarvis is averaging 255.9. A.J. Johnson, 236.4. 255. Yeah, Jarvis with one bone ball. Rich Jerome's averaging 246.1, and Jason Howard's averaging 237.3. That's well, what it takes to be competitive today. Your low guys got to average 237. Yeah. Your leader's coming in. Oh, uh, get it! Biondo oh, and Pollock. Yes. Pollock averaging 209.8 today. Brandon Biondo, 224.6. Yeah, they're struggling in the match play portion. They really are. They really are. Jacob Butcher's averaging 234.8. Greg, Greg Thompson, 219.9. So, yeah, so it gives us an idea. Martell, 222. McGainey, 227. Matt Cleveland, 233. Ma Mike Lay, 215 today. So it gives you a little bit of perspective on what we got going on around here. Mike Wolf averaging 236.1. Tony Lambert not giving him much with 200.8. Oof. Yeah. Even wow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here for you, gentlemen. If you want to take a look at anything, it's there. Liz with her third consecutive triple. To Wait, start Kyle this had game. back to back two ninety nines. So Kyle had 202, 299, 299, 268, 260, 258, 268, 173. That is crazy. Yep. They started with 599. I don't. Or no, it was game two. No, it was game three. That's how long ago they all run together. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of bowling going on in front of well, us. Well, they did us. It was game three. My apologies. It's been a long. We had the two right. 599s in the first three games. It's crazy. I can't keep all my 599 straight. We've had three of them. Adam back on the strike chain, trying to keep up with his partner. But they're bowling a big game. They have 558 left if they strike out in the 10th, both working on strikes in the 9th. Um, and the team in second has 265 and 217 max scores left wow. going into the 9th. And uh, the lefty, Mike Howard. When we, Sorry when for we get not a, his name. Yep, Jerome, Rich Jerome and Jason Howard. Howard. Like, so it's right. Gets a double. Right, First uh, double of the game. There, you can keep it right there. So you got it for you. Perfect. Can we take a quick look at Jarvis and Johnson, Mike, on the 
on the big screen before we before Liz starts just to see what they're doing. In third place with uh, so they are on lane 29. Not not a super strong game for them. Looks like they have 240, 220 left. Yep, 245, 228 score max. All right. 37 and 8. Liz Johnson. Front nine. Our Does she strike out to shoot 850 like you said? Yes, she had 70, 60. Well, six no, 68, 67, I believe it was, right in here. Let's see. 68, 69 maybe. 68-69, so 31 and 32 is And she's re-racking. They've been Doesn't re like what she's saying. They've been re Adam and Liz have been re-racking 37 most. She can, she, can bowl, she can bowl 837. It's close to 850. And I just got a text from a buddy of mine, player to be named later, who says, if Liz can keep piping it up 10, good luck beating her. <laughs> I would agree. And it's really not quite a pipe up 10. She's not, she's not. Uh, oh, she's got a little touch in there. She, yeah, she does have a little touch in there. I was going to say the same exact thing. She's touching it up. She's I looking good out her. there. She's throwing it good, throwing her favorite ball. Are you a Liz Johnson fan? I am the number one. <laughs> I, Jim, the number Jim, one Jim, fan? Jim Callahan and I make a joke. He goes, he goes, that's my girl. I go, no, that's my girl. <laughs> Gym. She's the people's girl. I got to I got to know Liz quite a bit because there was no women's tour, and I was streaming bowling tournaments like the Boot Hill, and, and yep. she was one of the few. Oh. Man, I wanted that for her so bad. She was one of the few lady bowlers that kept bowling weekend warrior tournaments yep. against the guys. Yep. And, and I truly beating them. <laughs> yeah, and that's why when she, when the tour started back up for the women, she was the player of the year the first two years. I truly believe it was she because was she sharp. stayed sharp. Yep. Yep, she stayed so sharp. And remember, she's also got a regular PBA title. Yep. And she's made PBA I kind of forget about that, to be honest with you. Yeah, she's she is she's a remarkable human being and a remarkable bowler. She is. She is. Every time she, I've never really, like, every time I see her, she always says hi to me, have a quick conversation. She is a sweetheart, and she's just a good bowler. This may not be doing her enough justice on the female side, but she reminds me of Norm Duke. I feel like she's the Norm Duke female How bowler. How would it not do justice? Because here's Norm why. Because because when the you third look at greatest of all time. Well, what, what is Norm? He's like top five, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Liz L is one. Liz, Liz is top two. Who's one? I, I don't really know like the women. Wagner. What Lisa Wagner is, is the one that you know okay. most titles all time. Do but, you think that determines the greatest of all time to have the most titles? No, but from her era, L Wagner was the best. Yeah. And, and and Liz is a little bit later, but then she also didn't have a tour for many years. So uh -huh. she, she kind of got hosed, but she's remarkable. And she just bowled 268, 269, 279 when the lanes are going through transition. And, and it just goes to show straighter is greater at times. It is. When we saw Troop averaging 250 with the big strike ball and bowls 170 yep. on this same exact pair, by the way. Yep. Okay, Troop just bowled 170 on his pair, hooking the whole lane. Liz goes right up at him. Could have bowled 300, really. Yeah. And it's rap, just, it's just that's what I love about our game. It's just so different. It's like, fun to watch. It is. It really is. It's fun to watch. As Adam is also fun to watch, looking to double. Ah. He leaves the same exact wrap dime. They're going to shoot 79, 38. Still, he almost a great just game. took out Buttriff at the at the score table there. He didn't know Buttriff was walking behind. Buttriff was running out of room, and that was that was that was almost a problem. As a matter of fact, I did a All right, good bailout right there. I did a replay at the score table lefty. the other day. I'm gonna do it again here. From Jason Howard, good bailout. I, he was kind of struggling last game too. He shot 2-0. His partner held him up with 289, um, and he didn't have a double until the eighth frame there. So to throw the back five for 217, that's it's a good sign. You, you take what you can get and you run with that. So it looks like he kind of figured out something on the lanes. And, uh, you know, they've been in second all day. So I would say don't give those guys a chance. But right now, our, our leaders, I think, are Adam and Liz as they just shot. Yep. Yep. One Guys, five, look, look at this Look at this replay. Here's Barda after the 10 pin. He comes back. I want you to watch Buttress going to come flying in from the left. Here he comes. Look at how close this is. Oh. Oh, and... and Oh, Adam had no wow. idea. No, he didn't. It was it was uh, it was almost disaster. What a great replay by uh, I appreciate Michael that. Flanagan. Yeah. Mike Wolf looking for a four bagger, throwing the new. Oh, he hated it. Ten back. Yeah, he hates a lot that's, of them. 
That's a uh, that was a slide issue, a typical, evidently. That's, that's another typical, Norm Duke thing there. That's a typical like pro bowler thing. Yeah, hates it. Ten back. And there's no, and and so there had to be something wrong. So let's blame it on the approach. Yeah, four eighty two for Flora and Farish. Looks like four thirty nine for Packy Pack and, and Cameron. All right, so we have a win for. This is a close match here, isn't Cle it? 23, 23, 28, 31, is that what that is? Yeah, this is a three-pin match. And again, Jarvis, match. Jarvis has been killing him today. He's the high average in the house. He and True. Oh, that's huge. Missed seven pin on a double. It's a three-pin match here. Let's see Jarvis with the yellow ball. Looks good. You see, even though he's sliding a lot further left than where Liz and Adam are, his ball is still getting to the same part down lane as theirs is. They're, they're kind of trapping the three pin a lot more than trying to get it to like the six pin. So they're at like 10 down lane at their break point. As you watch here, he, he might be sliding at 39, but. I just want to bring Kyle, in Kyle real quick. Kyle's ball a little more steep because his ball hooks a little bit more. I don't know how much he can shut his angles down out here. Hey, my buddy Brady with the comment of the day in here, he goes, having to watch on my phone right now, annoyed Buffalo Wild Wings doesn't have the holiday doubles up on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. There will be a win for Troop and Thompson. Yeah, and I didn't share this, but I, I talked to Kyle, and I said I went down and talked to him and said, hey, what's going on? What are you thinking between the ears? What are you thinking about doing here? He goes, that pair is just cliffed. Yeah. He, he said, uh, yeah, just a bad pair I just got to you know, just erase it from my mind and go back to what I was doing. He goes, yeah. I'm going back to phase five in the middle of the lane. And I said, so just, you know, just question for you. You know, back in the day, you were always piping it up the gutter, you know, or attacking the dry. I'm like, you know, lanes are kind of coming to the straighties. Would you would you consider doing that? He goes, all my balls hook too early. Yeah. And he goes, I wouldn't even know where to start. So I'm yeah. going to go with what I know. I'm going to use the touch in the middle of the lane. I said, okay, cool. There's the thing. Sometimes you get handcuffed off your game. You just can't do what some of these people are doing on the lanes. Like, it just, your ball physically can't do that. Where, like, you know, when lefty, sometimes when lefties are striking, they're laying it down on seven. I, I haven't been able to lay my ball down on seven since I was, like, a youth bowler throwing plastic balls at 12 years old. All right, AJ needs the first one to lock it up. Good shot. Right? Math, 33. So it's not, three. It's not locked up yet. So they can get to oh, 39. Biondo can get to 33. Needs to strike to force a response. No, did he shoot? Is that 213 or 203? Two, 213. And he has 228 left? Yep, so plus 39. Biondo and Paula can get to 33. So AJ needs this shot for 30 bonus, which is important because it's not going to be a big game either way. Yeah, you need those you need 30, the 30 You always need the 30, even if you're bowling a little Yep, so you this is another 40 pin shot. So they can get to 41 here. 441, right? Yeah. Right. 441. 433. So yeah, he needs a strike he here. Yeah, he's got to have it. And watch this. It's gonna it's gonna be a strike. And the bowling ball is gonna be driving Boy. towards the eight pin. There's shot. I can't I can't quite see. Is that a missed single pin that he missed in the sixth? That it's looks not like? a, it's not a split. Is it? So yeah, it's I a, can't whatever tell. he missed. Yep. I can't quite tell, but uh, yeah, it's a. Good bail out there. Nine, I mean, yeah, throws the nine, back six. Nine whip. Throws the back six to bail it out and snag a, snag a dub and 30 bonus. Like you said, it's not a huge game compared to some of these other wins, people shooting 500, 15, whatever, but um, that 30 bonus is going to go a long ways. The scores are so tight. All right, so 41 plus 30. 71, 2,072 over. So I missed this, the final score for Troop. And um, it, it went away too fast. And I was watching these guys. 
But for our, our teams that entered this in the top three, Johnson and Barda plus 21.78. Their lead has grown to almost 100. Uh, Jerome and Howard plus 2,085. Jarvis and Johnson plus 2,072. Thompson and Troop plus 2,000 and something. Maybe the chat has it. Well, Greg, just pocket seven tens on a strike to start the game. You hate that. Packy starts with a double as Cam, the anchor bowler today, is going to look to get an early double as well. Hi, Pack. Pack just mouthed the word at me. Darn it, that's what he mouthed. Greg's oh. gonna pick up the 710, I feel it, because he can throw it 1,000 miles an hour. Nope, for what? Dang All right. it, I thought he was gonna pick it up. Game 10 in front of us, 35, 6, 7, 8. Thompson and Troop against Biondo and Pollock. 37 and 8, Doyle and Packy Handerhan against Buttruff and Thompson. On the low side, 29 through 32, Jerome and Howard against Farish and Flora, who are yes. still in fifth. If you shoot 300, I'll sing on stream for you. Cam asked me if I would start singing. So if he shoots no. 300 here, guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to just own up my bet. All right. An entire song from start to finish, if you shoot 300, deal. Sorry, everyone in the chat. I just made a deal. No, oh, don't apologize. Um, and uh, you guys are just going to have to live with it if he shoots 300. But you guys get to see a 300, you know? 31 and 2, Lambert Wolf, Johnson McLean on the second feed, 41 through 4, Barda and Johnson against Cleveland and Lay. And then we have Martell and McGaney against Jarvis and Johnson. So two of our top four teams down there on the second feed. From a match play perspective, Jerome and Howard are now 7 and 2. They've lost to 517 and 599. Well, I mean, what can you do? Or not 599. Oh, it was a big number. It's 500 something. Back Thompson and Troop are only 5 and 4. Barda and Johnson have won six in a row. Yep. Jarvis and Johnson are 7 and 2. Farish and Flora are 7 and 2. All right, Jacob Butcher, front two, looking for front three. I'm curious as to what ball he's throwing. He is back to the hammer axe. That's the plastic ball? It's a plastic-ish. Um, he was throwing a black. You're throwing a plastic ball from 20 or whatever you are? What he, is life? He was throwing a uh, black hammer for a little bit. Do I need to drill one of those for tour? <laughs> Do I need to drill one of those for tour? I should. All right, you heard it here first. Jacob said 100% need to drill one of those for the tour, which starts January 9th for us. Could I get a runner to have and a note it. sent down to Mike Wolf on 29 that Kevin Williams needs the axe? <laughs> I mean, Jacob strikes. I'm going to listen to the guys that strike, and he strikes on my side of the lane. I made a bet with Cameron, and then he gets up here and he 10 pins. So, so he, he saved the chat from having well, to hear me sing. So what was the other side of the bet? If he um, didn't shoot 300, Cameron Doyle has to do what? Just be my friend. Okay. He's just going to be my pal. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> we clouded him to a double in. <laughs> the third frame. Yeah, it's tough. You guys almost you guys almost would have had to put the stream on mute for three minutes because I would have had to sing a song from start to finish. So, and I was going to sing a Justin Bieber song. I just wanted everyone so to know that. So you've got this uh, right here. Yep. Just the mute button. Greg is hooking it. Ten back. See how steep his angles are, how left to right his angles are, but how straight his ball went through the pins. It's, that's what good bowlers do. Now keep an eye on everyone, all these guys, what their balls do through the pins. As Kyle hurt his knee? or I didn't quite see what happened. Did he hit his ankle? Oh. I don't know how to do a replay, but he's sitting right down. He hurt his knee, it looks like. I didn't see exactly. I don't know how to. I do I think it. he just stuck. But I don't. I don't know how to do replay. Sorry, only Mike does. The axe has a low friction reactive cover. 
You guys, I should know this because I bowl for the brands of Brunswick, but there's so many bowling balls that yeah. I just get right. lost. Hey, Mike, hey Mike, how far back on, on, on replay can you go? Uh, I don't know. We what have you? an injury by Kyle Troop right now. We didn't see it. Right in front of us? Right in front of us on 36. His last shot, he stuck. I don't know if he hit his ankle, but he he immediately sat down and he's holding his knee now. And he seems pretty frustrated. I don't know if oh, he's maybe it's okay. Maybe he just kind of tweaked it for a second. I don't quite see. Greg is super high on it. Trips a four pin, leaves in the nine. Oh. Packy stuffs a nine pin. Oh. And he told me earlier when I walked in and they were in like game three or something. He said that when he's bowling good, he leaves one or two of those a block. So he's like, it's kind of a good sign. You hate to leave them. All I right. left a bunch of them this weekend. All right, let's pay attention. Kyle Troop, lane 35. Yeah, let's see if how the shot looks. Ooh, grabbed Holding his, his knee immediately. He still Strikes. struck, but that left hand, that off hand went straight to that left knee. And he's limping and he's kind of. All right, guys, I have the shot. All right. I have the shot. It's. It, um, it's it's right at pointer. It's getting very close to pointer release. So I've slowed it down. You ready? Okay. okay. Oh, so it just gave out a little bit. Yeah, might have just tweaked it. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. Maybe just a lot of bowling for the weekend. And I mean, from a uh, very you know today perspective, he came within a half an inch of fouling with both feet. Yeah. Good thing he didn't slip. I don't know how he didn't foul, honestly. Hopefully that's nothing too serious. I don't know that he's had a knee injury that I've known of. Everything was on cruise control until he came to 30, 37 and 38. He yeah. bowled 170, got all confused, went down and bowled a pretty good game down there on 41 and 42, and then just came down here, and now he's dealing with a knee. Yeah, like some sort of, yeah, I was like, it just tweaked it when he, when he kind of stuck or whatever happened there. Cameron's throwing heater oh. stuff, sev stuff, seven nine right after Packy just stuffs a nine pin. Packy on a four bagger, and then Cam on a strike looking to double up. And they yeah. stuff nine, stuff seven yeah. nine. That so is Adam brutal. and Liz took a few re racks in that last game, but they were but all on, on the left. They lane. were all yeah. on thirty seven. Some of these racks are a little wonky. Let's right, see if Packy can get after it. Light mixer. Go for the see, mixer. You won't, you, won't, you won't stuff an eye and leaving a. No, but even you might then, leave one. But the, the four pin just kind of fell in the gutter, and the seven just barely fell. It's kind. Of, it's not a hit you want to see, but the stuff seven nine from Cam is pretty deflating. Jared on thirty five or thirty six. I mean, after the miss seven pin, he's missed a couple of them since I've been sitting in here in the stream. Greg Thompson is way he's deep. hooking it. And he's also eight foot tall, so it's hard to see. That ball landed on fifth arrow. Yeah. As in, it looks good, though. It, it landed it on, the, on the arrow itself. For the people that are watching, if you uh, know any of the qualifying scores, Greg carried Jacob in the first eight games of qualifying. He struck a lot. He had 190 in the middle of a bunch of 270 games. All right, let's see if Kyle's knee is doing a little better. A little better. Yeah. Kept that one in. Definitely knee is better because he got real low after yeah. he threw that shot. The thing I liked about that is it looked like he missed a little in, and it didn't ring 10. Yeah. I think that's what that's the miss you want is the miss in. I don't think you want the miss out. I think at this point now people need to shut their angles down a little bit and try to play that oil. Jared, Jared, just, throw, Jared just throwing straight. Well, that's, he's going to do that live or die by. That's just what his game is. I was in. Ten back. Greg's a good bowler. It's fun to watch. I can't believe Jacob is throwing a plastic-type bowling ball. It's crazy.
My ball doesn't hook enough to be able to throw plastic like that. Which is saying something, because you can hook a bowling ball. I know. No stuff nine that time for Pac. Little light mixer. He's starting to roll it pretty forward, keep it in front of him as well. I think everyone's starting to see what the lanes are asking of them. That was a much better, and he's walking and it out. Dialed in. You don't you don't walk out shots like that if you're slide like saying, "Don't do this." It still might be a little sore, but that was a well executed shot. Good Guys, balance at the line, perfect shot. Stuff, stuff seven by Biondo. Guys, I get to watch uh, Jacob Butcher week in and week out bowl on tour, and I'm still just so impressed what he's doing right now with his ball. That's it's just that's kind of crazy to me. That just goes to show sometimes like when people are doing their little trick, you're just not gonna mimic it. Sometimes whenever he's leading by a mile and we're talking to the ball reps, they even know they're like Jacob's just doing the Jacob thing. I mean. Just try to keep up, but the fact that he's throwing that ball from 17 and he's got 270 pace right now, it's crazy. Yeah, I look good from Pac. I mean, man, give those, give that fifth fame back to Pac and to Cam, and they're bowling a huge game. They're bowling 79-300. Instead, they got 79-45, which is still a huge game in itself. Greg, I think Greg's the only one really going around the pattern that much that's making it work. <laughs> Everyone else is starting to shut their angles down. They're looking more at the three pin. And when I say that, you can kind of see the line that the ball's taking more at the three pin. And Greg's going at the gutter. He's just throwing it right, hucking it right, and watching it do the thing. Biondo gets the mixer on the lane that he hasn't missed on yet, but he hasn't struck on the right lane. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think that one was gonna strike. It was in the whole way for Jacob. The other ones were definitely a little steeper, a little more angle through the pins. All right, Kyle, after the knee scare. Oh, that one didn't. Uh... That's the miss though, he wants to get it in. Starting to shut his angles down. He has the front six now. They have 567 left. Where, what place are they in? Well, they were in fourth, and they're probably still there, but I didn't catch their score. We will have the standings here, I would I would guess, within 60 seconds. Well, My Falcons are down right now, the Bucks. Darn it. A lot of striking going on, people starting to figure it back out. You know, we kind of saw, like Mike said, that weird transition period from game seven-ish. Yeah. And we're kind of, you're kind of asking the lanes something different of you. And uh, now everyone kind of sees the picture again pretty clearly. Well, And we, we've got strikes all over the place in front of us. We, we do have one developing story, our leaders, Johnson and Barta, ahead by almost 100. Are minus are minus 16 through three. I have one open. And then we have one strike on the board. One strike total. Pack down down in their match. As Adam makes a mess of a 10 pin. He picked it, but he put it six feet in the gutter. <laughs> the aggressive 10 pin conversion. Well, he's using that new hammer as a spare ball. Because, you know, Strike Ball's got 300 games on right. it. So he's trying to limit. He, oh. There you go, Shaker Dick Hub. Five pin. And now he's going to throw <laughs> throw his new hammer at, at the Deadwood. So Jacob, 258 left. Pack can pick this up for 257 left. So that's minus one. And then Cameron has 224 to Greg's 247. So Jacob and Greg are currently up going into the 10th frame, both on strikes. They're gonna, Cam and Pack are gonna need a little bit of help to win that match. Troop and Jared are striking like crazy right now. They got a pretty big lead as Biondo hasn't struck on the right lane yet on 36. He's looking at a Dutch 200 pace.
and Kyle and Jared have 79-67 max left. So the guys that were leading for a good amount of time fell out, and now they're trying to make a little bit of a roar back into that lead and contention. I, and I can see Kyle, if they if they finish this game strong, we, we'll probably hear Get a little loud. Well, if you guys could hear him in the seventh, he yelled, be right, when he threw his shot. And I think that term can mean so many different things. If someone threw it really good and they're hoping that's going to do the right thing, or maybe they didn't throw it that good and they hope it still does the right thing. As Jared just, 10 back, <laughs> no-brainer. Dead up 10. He's going for what, ball. what we call a St. Louis 267. Knuckleball. All strikes with a 9 somewhere Team a in the bagger. Middle. That's my theory. I mean, that's... That's literally my theory to a T. You don't have to be that good at spares if you can back it up with a bunch of strikes. It's today's game as Packy stuffs an eight pin. He's gonna shoot 246 because he's gonna pick it up and strike in the fill because the fill always strikes, guys. We know this. Us bowlers, we know it. Kyle, a uh, little steep. Yep, four pin oh, trips Oh, it. baby. Little steep, you can see, got a little right. Came off the spot a little too quick. He's got to shut those angles down a little bit. AKA get him more in front of him. AKA keep it in the oil longer. Try to give you guys insight on the terms that I be using. So many terms in bowling. People say forward, people say tumble. And they all mean the same thing. For everybody on your team, but one strikes. In some places, it's hung. Some places, it's stuck. <laughs> exactly. Means the same thing. So many terms to bowling, and how people describe it. Jared, striking the ninth. That's how you back up. Oh, Packy super hooks it. That's how you back up the nine dash in the third with a six bagger. Packy shoots two forty six. Greg, can, Greg is standing on lane 37 to throw on lane 38. Currently, as you guys can see. <laughs> Cameron's got to wait for him. He's ready to bowl. Greg says, pardon me, I'm now landing at three feet past the sixth arrow. Impressive. So 20. Jacob needs the first one? Or does he need 37? Well, Cameron's going to bowl first. Ball Jacob needs hand. to fill like 18. Not and anymore. And he does not need to fill anything. Cam big four, it's gonna be a loss for Pack and Cam. Yeah, that's Thompson and Buttrip's first win in the last four games. Jacob is playing 19 with a oh. plastic-ish ball, and he just tripped the eight pin. That's crazy to me. And I see this guy do some crazy things three months out of the year. <laughs> All right, Jared Thompson. This is a big game for these guys to get yeah. right back in contention. They with um, Barda and Johnson a little left con back. continuing to run into a rough game. They still have they now have two opens and two strikes through twelve combined strike shots. This could be another lead change yeah. where happens it, fast. It could just be Jerome and Howard staying in second again. <laughs> For That's like crazy. The, Everyone's for just fifth, jumping around there. For the fifth time. And they're just keeping it in the game. Well, we'll check on them here in just a minute. Was that a hazmat pack he is throwing? I don't know what he threw in the field ball. It looked like it might have been. It was very colorful, but I'm not sure. I didn't see it that well. It happened so fast. Jared looking to double to get into the 260s after the nine dash. Oh. Stuff's an eight pin. I think he'll be okay with the 250 still. As Jacob shoots 256 for 482 for Jacob and Greg, they get a win after not having one in a little while. Over Packy and Cam's 431. Packy and Cam just running out of juice. She can't quite get there. As Jared converts his eight pin, fiery guy. I love people that are fiery. I, I gotta admit, I like people with some passion. 
there's a time and a place for all of it, but I do appreciate when people get yeah. like that. But I'm, I'm still thinking, I mean, for a quick second there, Kyle Holden's leg. Yeah, that was scary. I'm glad and it's now, nothing too and serious. And now it's all good. Yeah, I'm glad they've it's got, nothing serious. As far as we can tell, he they've, got, they've got a chance to potentially retake the lead yeah. that they've held for most of today. He's going to get loud here if he strikes and too. if he throws the first two, I think we're going to hear him. I think we're going to hear all of them. That's in a little bit. No, it's just a quiet fist pump. He wants the Ooh. second one. He wants, he wants 530 here. Big game right here. See, it happens fast. I mean, it, it just goes to show, like, when it gets pair to pair like this and there's so much match play in teams, what pair, how pairs develop, that you get to a pair where you just, you just, you're striking and then you come to the pair and it asks something different of you. It doesn't take much for you to shoot 190, which is not what you want to do right. when scores are high like this. So Yeah, I mean, with, with Barda and Johnson, they can max 220, for, for, for 427. And they've thrown one of their shots in the eighth. Here's Troop. Second ball Pretty in good. the tenth. Oh, we're not yelling yet. No? Maybe next game. Nah, there's a time and a place for it. They know. There's still a lot of work to be done, but this is definitely what they what they wanted to get back into doing. All right. 535. It's a huge game right now. I think it's going to be the highest game that we can see. Yeah, I think so. We'll watch Kyle throw one more shot, and then we'll see what's going on on the low end here. Kyle, after a very scary-looking shot very early in this game, trying to shoot 279, make it eight. Doesn't matter. You can, give, you can get rid of that one pin for 534 and a win. That is 564 with the 30 bonus pins. That's Mike. Hooks out a bucket and misses it for 171. They're struggling a little bit. Our second place team, who's been in second er, ever since I've sat in this chair. And they were there before that too. Are struggling. We've, we've got some, except for Troop. Troop and Thompson may have picked the best time to go off. Yeah. 164 teams all around them have nothing. some combination of not much or nothing at all. We just witnessed 137 bolt on 31 and 2. Pair looks pretty brutal. So 182 for Jerome. Goes open, open. Looks like 7 2, 7 1. Yep. The last two. His partner can strike out for 213, 223. I've seen him come around a couple times for scores. I bet we're checking on something. So we don't have game nine. Check it twice, get That's it right. It looks like, and it is. He leaves a two pin. All right. So our second place team is going to lose this match. And they can get to about even, for about 4-0. Yeah, I don't think Little they're gonna, less. I don't think they're gonna hold second. Jarvis no. and Johnson are way down on 43 and 44. Steven Jarvis, Ho Hum's got a five bagger. Yep. Uh, however, the it's a close match over there. Uh, they're gonna be two ahead. Two seventy. They're gonna be ahead on the bottom line. AJ is ahead of. Oh, as Jerome, uh, as you cloud him from a distance, he yep. just gets the six. clouds travel through yeah, the jet course. stream down to down to the high end. Of course. As everyone's finishing up in front of us, everyone's pretty much in the 10th frame. Not really any super close matches going on. The one that you guys can't see that's on the second stream is a pretty close match between Martell and AJ Johnson. Yeah, we'll, we'll get down there here in just a second. We're gonna watch our, these guys finish their match. We can catch their scores so that we can do 10 right after we get nine. Oof. Four nine after he just tripped so, the so, four nine. All right, second place team. Oh, we, we have go. scores after nine. After nine, B Johnson and Bard at 2177, Jerome and Howard 2085, Jarvis and Johnson 2065, Thompson, Thompson and Troop 2048, Doyle and Hanerhan 1924.
Farish and Flora in 1920. So Thompson in Troop 164. So 2148, 2208, 2212. And then we've got the team of Jerome and Howard just shot, was that 394? So minus six. 2079. Can, hey Mike, can you switch that five seconds too soon? I just need the score off for uh, while they are. Yeah, come on, Mike. Is that what you needed? I needed the score off of 29, but they've already changed it. All right. Now, now we can go back to the high end. So, Martell has 279 left. And his partner only has 180, I think 88. I can't, 86 left, 80. I can't quite see what that 1.5 is. I think, I can't quite oh. tell, 158 maybe. Yeah. He has 180 left to his partner's 270. Yeah. Yeah, the the big the big story here is the the scoreboard on 41, which is to the left of this. Liz. Well, Jarvis and them are in a close match as yeah. right as Martell just opened. Yeah, so they had a chance to win. Our leaders are going to shoot minus, I think, 24 and 83. They could go plus seven. That's all that's left. Jarvis and they're has getting 201. A big score shot at him too. Yeah, they're not going to get the bonus. They've got 500 getting shot at them. If their opponent doubles in the 10th here on lane 41. Martell looking to slide the three into the seven. Just misses it, hooking at it. He shoots 243, I think is what that says. Lane 41 gets the first one. So 43... Partner can strike out for 180 something. 20. I think a AJ needs the first one still to win, assuming that his opponent would strike out. Yeah. So you I don't know the exact math. I can't quite see the score to know the exact math. So you've got 43. Big and, messenger. And I think. 43 and 88. So 43 and 88. So 31 over. Uh, Jarvis can get 21 on himself. AJ can has 25 left. So 46. Yeah, but if AJ misses, it's 26. And now it's it interesting. Yeah, they could get to 27 over if he goes spare strike. But Martell can get to 31. So he needs, needs a hit. Yeah, he needs the first one. Either way, re either way, oh, no, the other guy is. Troop and Thompson have passed Johnson and Barda. They have passed Jerome and Howard. And they have passed Jarvis and Johnson, regardless of this outcome. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they are game. once again the leaders. It's a big shot right here for AJ. Got to have the first one for a 30 bonus dub. There you go. Light, light mixer. They've now won four in a row and eight out of ten. Deadwood conversion on lane 44. Oh, they're bringing you the individuals after each game yeah, now, this too. Is That's updated. All right. Sure. Adam Barda, one out of the first six, all of the last six. What did Kyle bowl after his 240? So after his 170 mishap, he got back after with 240, and then he just had 270 there. So he's striking. Liz Johnson's now averaging 250.7 after nine games. 830 will help that. Steven Jarvis, 251.1. 213 the last game. Got three guys averaging over 250. So he had 30, Well, 50, three people, 70, sorry, Liz. 20, 40, 40 team. Oh, this is the old Where's uh, Steve Jarvis from? Right here. Right here. Yep. 
He is? Yep. Yeah, he works in the pro shop here, doesn't he? Oh, really? Or yeah. at least he did. Part-time, I believe. How did I not know that? I thought he was, like, more north. Nope. Huh. This is home. Oh, okay. House bowler. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> kind of. Kind of like that guy that led his, the PBA tour stop down in Springfield earlier this year. <laughs> House hey, coming bowling. back, by the way. I bet you were tickled to see that that was coming back. I love that it's coming back, and uh, it's on TV this year. Yep. It, it wasn't on TV when I was the one seed. That's okay. We'll just have to run it back and just give it another go on national television. But, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. Steve Weimer is the biggest bowling nerd I've ever met, so he's pumped to have it. All right. After 10 games, we have... Thompson and Troop, 22-12. Johnson and Barta, 21-83. Jarvis and Johnson, 21-30. Jerome and Howard, 20-79. Farish and Flora would have moved into fifth because they won their match, but uh, they're going to be, they'll probably be somewhere around the high 19s. So they're going to be 100 out of fourth. Okay. So that line of where you need to be Who's probably to probably just went from sixth to fourth if it wasn't there already. If you don't know who you're bowling this game, just go find the team you're, you haven't bowled yet. They're <laughs> the only one left. 29 through 32 is what we're watching right now. We have Lambert and Michael Wolf against Thompson and Troops. This is the team that Troop and Thompson want to bowl right now. They're bowling the team that is struggling so they can try to get some 30 bonus yeah. pins not have to bowl a huge yeah. game against someone yeah Lambert, they still want to bowl a big game yeah lambert and wolf have won one of their last five yeah thompson and troop are now they're only six and four but there's so many big games to yeah. handle that and they had they had a, a big lead getting into match yeah. play and uh doyle and hanrahan are on 31 against jerome and howard who aren't in second anymore. No, they struggled in, last game. They're in fourth. Jerome's struggling. The last couple of shots I've seen, a couple of splits. Seems like that low ball speed that he has is starting to catch up with him as we get into the nitty gritty of the last two. Yeah. On the middle block, 35, Jarvis and Johnson are bowling John, McLean and Johnson. 37 and eight, we have Cleveland and Lay against Farish and Flora. And on the high side, Martell and McGainey against Biondo and Pollock. Barda and Johnson are bowling Thompson and Buttress on 43 and 4. Man, everybody's hooking at their three sevens and their two tens. Yeah, they are. That's weird for me to see. I just don't. I hook at all my right side spares, but not splits. Jared, striking the third. Our leaders leading with a lead. They are leading with a the lead. They're leading with a lead because they are the leaders. Best way to win a bowling tournament, Kevin? Go to the front and prove your position. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> that yellow ball. The yellow ball been striking all weekend. Go get you that yellow ball, people. And you too will strike all weekend. And if you'd like to win a bowling ball, yeah, you can head over to InsideBowling.com and Hammer's giving away two beautiful pieces here, the hazmat and new the new ones. blue hammer. All you gotta do is fill out the form. On the website, it's just a couple of quick fields to fill out. So you can. And one question, and you have a chance to win both of those bowling balls coming up Monday. We'll send out the email on who won, and that is a way for us to find out how many people are watching and engaging with our sponsor, which could lead to more sponsorship dollars down the road Love for it. these fine bowlers. So make sure you check that out. And also, if you want to save 20% off all of our T-shirts and hoodies, all the cool stuff we have, over 500 designs, you can use that coupon code on the bottom left. Holiday, it's good through Monday over at InsideBowling.com. You know, I, I, I bowl for the brands of Brunswick, which Hammer is part of those brands. 
But I'm not always biased when it comes to people asking me knowledge about bowling. But let me tell you, the new, the non-urethane bowling ball, there's been a lot of honor scores with that ball since it's came out. A lot of guys have been shooting some scores with it, and a lot of people seem to like it. I haven't thrown mine too much, but what I've, from what I've thrown, it rolls pretty good. I just haven't thrown it enough to really give a full insight from my perspective. But I've seen a lot of guys striking with that ball. So if you guys want to find out if it rolls good for you, just listen to all the things that Mike just said and go win one. That's right. For the free. For free. Everyone likes free 99. It's the best price, best cost. Free 99. Free 99. Getting down to the final two games. People are tired. It's a lot of bowling, and it's a lot of mental, like, exhaustion, thinking about how many strikes are being thrown and all the adjustments. And you're now in games 11 and 12 where they're getting pretty hard. You're starting to see some people miss some spares. They're just, you know, you get – everyone's human, you know. You're going to miss a couple spares here or there and a couple opens. Hey, quick question for you. F favorite three balls right now that in your arsenal? Mine? Yeah. Widow 2.0 Hybrid, Piranha, and what's the last one? I want to say Ghost because that ball has just been so good since it came out for me. But uh, I got to say Ghost. The ghost. That's uh, that's one of the balls on sale at InsideBlowing.com. Somebody out there love, wants to grab one. That might be arguably my great, my favorite reactive ball of all time is the ghost. Wow. It's just rolled that good for me. I and will tell you something about, good too. about the Brunswick balls, too. A lot of the tour guys talk about this. If it's got any sort of white pigmentation in it, those balls hook a lot. Yeah. My uh, 3D offset attack has some white in it, and that thing was hooking last night. Not really in a good way, but it was hooking. Big time special edition also has some white in it. Yep. Ball hooks a lot. Yeah, that piranha I threw this weekend and it looked really good. I really like that ball. It's making its way up. But yeah, ghost, hybrid 2.0, piranha. That's probably my three right now. Do you like those answers? Yeah, I just I just balls? had a special request come in for that. Yeah. Somebody wanted to know the answer. You know, everyone always asks, what's your favorite ball of all time? They just think I'm always going to say Purple Hammer. And I'm like, hey, guys, that ball is the greatest ball ever made. Um, but that doesn't mean it's my favorite. It's a necessity. It is. It it's is. kind of like a washer and dryer. Like, I don't it's wanna, not your favorite thing in your house. But, but without you it, it, you would just be just. I, I don't want to have to throw the Purple Hammer everywhere. But I can. <laughs> so I do. <laughs> Not on house shot stuff, not stuff like this when they're easier. I never throw the purple hammer when they're, there's some ratio in the pattern. But, uh, I mean, that's the obvious answer, everybody. They, they don't want to always hear me just say purple hammer. I threw the Widow 2.0 hybrid um, a lot. I would actually say the mindset's probably in there, too, with the Ghost. I threw the Widow 2.0 hybrid and the Ghost, or not, sorry, the mindset on tour a lot this year when I couldn't throw the urethane balls. Those balls bailed me out at some, some events this year where I snagged some checks that I might not have snagged had I not had those. Brandon Flora, looking on a double, turns it into a three-bagger. Him and his now partner he is striking. playing way left. Yeah. You know, you're at the point now where you have no choice to, and he has a little bit of rev rate. His ball's going to do some hooking. Much better start down on the high end for our second feed, Byron Johnson. Liz has the front, front four. four. Adam has went, <coughs> excuse me, strike, spare, strike. He might have more. Liz has more strikes than she had the last game. Adam is, he saved that plus six. So what is there? There's six pairs in play, right? Or eight pairs? So How many six pairs? pairs. Six uh, pairs. Wait a minute, hold on. One, no, two, no. three, four, five. Six. Six. Oh, shoot. Twelve I, teams. Tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it's two. Been a long it's weekend. Six. Six pairs in play. <laughs> so you're hitting pairs multiple times. The guys that are at the top, I promise you, they have notes of what pairs are doing what, what they bowled, and how they bowled that score. Like you see, Liz struggled the last game when they were on 41 and two, and then she goes to 43 and four, and she has a whole new ball game of a ball reaction because she hasn't missed through four frames. 
we saw Kyle shoot 170. He goes to the next pair and he shoots 240, and then he goes to the next pair and shoots 270. So all these pairs are doing something a little different. It kind of catches people. It's hard to make those adjustments on the fly a couple frames in. Next thing you know, you look up and you have three misses through five frames, and you need to throw a seven bagger to get to 230, which is just hard to do mentally sometimes. Yeah. And what we're really going to pay attention to, the lead for Troop and Thompson. So 22-12 to 21-83. It's 29 pins. But the last game is position. AJ round. just winked at me. Hey, don't wink, kid. You stop that. You stop being yeah. nice to me. The, the lead as we have it is 29 pins. 29 in, pins. In a position round with 30 bonus, a lead of one and a lead of 29 yeah. are exactly the same. That is crazy. That is crazy how that works out. Those bonus pins and, are so important. And with Johnson and Barda down on the high end, Adam's going to throw a strike for me. Weird uh, reps. He tried. Ten messenger they at least missed. have eight out of the first ten. They keep striking like that. You're not going to pull away from anything like that. We'll... Yeah. Um, We'll take a look at our leaders here in just a minute. Actually, let's do that now. Watch Stephen Jarvis for one more shot. His uh, yellow vibe is going to need a good bath after <laughs> after today. Nah, you want to leave it like that. It builds character in the bowling ball. I don't ever clean that, my that, bowling balls. That's, that's my biggest problem with Blackwood of Ghost is it keeps turning other colors. It's it all dark and gross. Oh, oh, look at that. Trips the four. Slaps it out front four. You couldn't really see it. He was kind of walking it out in the way, but a lazy little pin comes crawling across the deck and trips the four pin. All right, let's check in on oh, Kyle, Kyle Troop. The and leaders look, are look leading. Look what we found with this score. They're leading and they're striking. Thompson, Kyle 280. Kyle slaps it out, runs it out. Uh, gives left. a little hoo. Kyle, 79. So... We're uh, going to get this off of here. Hang on. It didn't matter what their oh, opponents sorry. were. You're good. It didn't matter what their opponents were bowling. Kyle and Jared are dialed in as they have 79-80 max scores going into the eighth. Striking. Damn, them boys good. Not much effort coming from Mike Wolf. I think he's, this is probably the most games that Mike Wolf has bowled in a weekend in quite some time. He doesn't do much bowling anymore. So he doesn't even bowl back-to-back -back days anymore, he said. When he made the cashers round, he said it's the first time he's bowled back-to-back -back days in a while. Who's that? Mike Wolf. Oh. My my beloved tour rep, who I love ever so much for tour repping me on tour. All right, Kyle, looking for a three bagger in the eighth. Money. <laughs> Doing the Kyle thing, I love it. I love watching Kyle bowl. I love his antics and his animations and yep. all the stuff and things that yep. he brings to the sport besides just striking. Yep. And down on the, the high end, Liz spared. Which, all right, here we go. After 10. 10 games. Thompson and Troop, 22 12. Okay. Johnson and Barta, 21 83. Okay. Jarvis and AJ Johnson, 21 30. Jerome and Howard in fourth, 20 79. Farish and Flora in fifth at 2017. And then Cameron Doyle and Packy Hanrahan. Six at 1955, it's 200 more pins to the rest of the field. We have three people individually averaging 250, which is, actually I lied, one of those is a team. <laughs> Wait, I lied again, I'm confused. Don't lie to the people, Kevin. Oh no, only one person, only one person. Only one person averaging 250? Only one person averaging 250 now. Is it Jarvis? And can you guess who that is? Jarvis, Liz? No. That would be a Kyle Troop, 250. Five is what he is with, averaging with a dollar seventy mixed with one hundred and seventy, but around that one seventy is two sixty, two sixty, two ninety, two sixty, two fifty, two forty, two seventy. 260, 260, 260, that boy striking, and he's doing exactly that right now too. Is his partner just hit a seven pin, 
which, mind you guys, he's missed a couple of these. I saw him take some tape out and fiddle with the thumb a little bit last time he missed one. Let's see if he covers this. Yes, he does. With his, like, that looks like an a Rubik's Cube bowling yeah, ball. Yeah, it is. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's cool looking. First, At first look, I thought it might be, like, the autism logo. Yeah. But it's not. It's a Rubik's Cube. Nice. And... Uh, It just looks better when it knocks the pin down than it's supposed to. Pac-Man Jones doing a little striking now. It's a little too late for them as he holds his hand up and well, wraps the seven. it might be too late for them to win. Yeah, Kevin, but you want to get every spot matters. They can Cash, realistically money. get to fourth, which is probably an That's extra good. two grand for the team. Yeah. All right, Kyle, looking for a four-bagger strike in the ninth. 279 points left. Runs it out, stomps it out. Little My, fist pump. Question for Mike Flanagan. Yes. Are we using the same position round order as we have where we start on 29 and 30 and move onwards? I, I haven't asked that question. I'm assuming okay. that's what we're doing. Because if, if that's the case, that's a huge advantage for Troop and Thompson. They wouldn't have to move. I can't bowl with Packy in this event. Person who asked me to bowl if I could bowl with Packy. Because I have a national title, I cannot bowl with another pro. Bowler. I think that's right. Is that right? Or is it just two non tash Yeah. I can't bowl with him. We both have a title. Correct. That's the only rule. That is the rule. Yeah. I can't bowl with him. He has a title. I have a title. I'm going to check on that position round. I'll be he right He also back. is locked in with Cameron on a five-year uh, deal for them to be partners in this event. So even if I wanted to bowl, I, I can't breach their contract. You know, they're doing their thing. Mike Wolf is looking to shoot 2-0-0 zero, zero, and get out of the way of the leaders as Jared opens in the 10th for 233. I didn't see what he left there. I was looking at the chat for a brief second. But Kyle is doing the heavy lifting as he should because he's one of the best bowlers in the world. Looking to get the first one to be in the 260s. That'll put them at 500. Keep their lead, I would assume. Kyle's going to get a little loud this one. Ooh. All right, I have confirmed position round is the same as it was, which means the top seed is on 29 and 30. It's that's the, where they're bowling right now, and they're shooting 5'10". Right. So they're not going to have to move. That's huge for them because they know exactly what the pair is doing, and they're striking on the pair. That's huge for them. That's a good draw. Well, they earned it, but it's also a luck of the draw to it be is luck on of the that draw. pair. The game before position round. Game 11. Yep. Sometimes you make your own luck, Kevin. Um, you know, they say good bowlers create their own luck, and I tend to agree sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I just think I have all the bad luck. As Kyle, four pins for 268 when he picks it up. That's going to be a dub, 30 bonus pins. They're going to be in the lead, I would assume, still. Because the team in second is Liz and Adam. And they've got a good match going down there, Kevin. Liz can shoot. Oh, no, yeah. Liz can shoot 79. And Adam Barda has 58. can shoot 59. But wait, there's more. Greg Thompson can shoot 280. And Buttruff can shoot 243. This match is super tight. And then Greg Thompson goes through the face. <laughs> <laughs> and the cloud continues. I hand the cloud just The clouds never covered. go away in the Midwest. Tony Lambert going to finish up. He has 150 left. They're just struggling. So they're down 30. You said 29. They're down 29. And Kyle. Yeah. So all, all Kyle and um, Jared Thompson have to do is expand their lead by two. I don't think they can, though, because Johnson has 79 left. That's 11 better than. All right. So they're, that's 11 better than Kyle's score. So what they And shoot? then 59, 33 and 68. So 101. Yep. 131. 131 with the bonus. 23, 43. So that's the number that Barda and Liz have to get to. They if can they, get around that. If 
if they match it, just win, Whoever baby. wins, yeah. If they match one, so 501 plus bonus or better. Yep. I don't. I don't think you can get to five. Yeah, they have seventy. I they don't, have seventy-nine. I don't, I don't think. I don't think they can get to one sixty-one with bonus. Or can they? They have. They have seventy-nine fifty-nine. Nine one thirty-eight. One sixty-eight. Yeah, Ooh, they can go around. Yes, them. they can. They can go around them if they get them all. They need them all. Uh, a nine on a fill shot be fine. So that open in the tenth from Jared is pretty big now. It's huge. It could cost Even them. Even though they bowled a big game. It could cost them ball in hand. Either way, we pretty much know that it's going to be Kyle Troop, Jared Thompson versus Adam and Liz in the position round, trying to win the event 2023 holiday doubles. So what Sponsored by. So what do we have here? Pac so Packy just finished with 58, but Jarvis, or no, it's Jerome and Howard. Shot yeah, no, Packy had 20 63. and 30. So Jerome and Howard, 63 plus 30, correct? 93, 21, 70. AJ and Jarvis are striking right now. 290, 262 left. 152 plus 30 bonus pins is 182 up for grabs for them if they can strike on the ninth and 10th. Kyle averaging 255, and he uh, is bumping that average up. That's crazy. AJ Johnson, ninth frame, 290 points left. That's almost max amount of points that you can bowl in one bowling game, if you guys didn't know that, which you all know. That. So they're gonna try and they're gonna try and make this interesting. Yeah. How far out were they? They are 80 out, essentially. 80 out. 560 would fix that. Yeah. Not as much as you would think, though. It's crazy. <laughs> Not, not, as not as yeah, think. not by much. They're, they could make up 60 on true. Because Liz just got the first one, so she's in the 260s. And Adam has 259 left going in the 10th as well, which you guys can't see. It's on the second stream that they have streaming on Inside Bowling on YouTube. And by they, you mean we? And by they, you guys. And by we, I mean Mike. And by you guys, it's Mike Flanagan. I'm just here to speak words into a microphone. A talent of yours. That is a talent of yours. I'm pretty good at it. No question. I'm pretty good at it. I can't even lie about that. I've been thinking about writing you a song. Write me a song. Let's hear it. I would. You'll be my ghostwriter? That'd be fun. Do you want credit for being a ghostwriter? I mean, when, it, when, when you accept the Grammy, yeah. <laughs> But nothing else. <laughs> Only when oh, you accept the huge. Grammy. Okay. That would be your speech. Thank you, my ladies, family. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to want to thank the people most important to me, my, my family, God, whatever. And then and and then for the rest of my speech, it was written by my ghostwriter. We made a con we made a <laughs> the deal. The speech too. Yeah, we made a deal. This is his thirty seconds of fame. So here here it is. So you want to write me a song and my speech when I win when the Grammy? Me. Yep. All right, and it's gonna be the it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be for a children's movie. And the first time I'm reading it is when I read the speech. Like I Correct. don't get to hear it before, obviously. Right, you just pull it out. It's in a sealed envelope. And I just have to trust that yep. you got me. Yeah, yep. trust is a must. 
That does sound fun. <laughs> that also sounds terrifying. Don't you think winning the Grammy is enough? Everything else is just whatever. It, it's enough until I get canceled 30 seconds oh. later for my for the speech that you wrote for me. Adam Barda left a four pin. First ball in the tenth, so they can only so get to 79. 30, and they still gained a little ground. A little. Not much, <laughs> but it, they gained like 11 or something. Well, math. Well, they're going to get. 79, 38, and 30. So it should put them in the lead or get them very no, close. No, it won't get them the lead. It's going to be super close. It won't get them. They'll be down by like 20-ish. I know I should know the exact number because like well, the every pin matters at this point. But, well, you know, guys, bowling math. I, I didn't go to if college. Adam, if Adam strikes with bonus, it's 547. So they'd pick up 16. So most importantly, they stayed with 16. So they're going to be down 13 going into. So it's essentially the same as still, still whoever where wins they wins. were. Yeah. But Jarvis and Johnson are could try and pull a Gonzalez and Anderson last year and go over the top of both of them if they're not there already. Well, Jarvis is going to strike out in the fill for 240, and then AJ has 290 left. That'll get him to 530 plus a win. So that'll be 160. So they would gain 29 on the lead. So Biondo tried to clear a dead wood and he kept it on the lane. I've seen that happen <laughs> three times this week. I don't understand that. How is that even possible? All right, so let's talk through Johnson and Jarvis. They can get the 160 of this game at the bonus, which would put them at 290. That would be 50 behind the lead. That is certainly close enough for the yeah. leaders to have to and they're right next. The goal. big outlier of this is the position round is going to, for the first place team who just shot 5'10 or whatever it is they shot, 501. they're bowling on the same pair. So they're going to have know exactly what that pair is doing. We're Liz and them are flipping all the way from the highest end pair to the lowest end pair. And then AJ and AJ and Jarvis are bowling in the same pair too. Oh wait, are they? No, they're not. I lied. They're bowling one. Ah. Yeah. What is the rule of that? If you're going to clear Deadwood and you keep it on the lane and you get count. <laughs> I've never thought about right. that as AJ's right. it, 10 pins. It, it's more uh, a gentleman's rule. If you say that's yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. doing. Well, obviously, you know, if you're clearing a dead wood, you're like throwing it off the wrong foot one mile an hour into the gutter. All right. AJ is going to strike in the fill because the fill always strikes, as I've said before, for but, 269. But not. Not getting them all there. It makes a big difference. Makes now a down huge 70. difference. So this is going to get them to 109 yep. plus 30, 139. See, so here's what we're looking at. Jared Thompson, Kyle True, plus 2,343. Liz Johnson, Adam Barda, plus 2,330. Down 13. Stephen Jarvis, A.J. Johnson, plus 2,269. Rich Jerome, Jason Howard. Down 74. Plus 2,172. They can't get to the win. So the 3 4 match only matters if Jerome and Howard win by more than 70. Let's talk about the prize fund, but just for a second. Let's talk about it. First place, 10 grand. Yep. Second place, 6 grand. Yep. Third place, 5 grand. Uh huh. Fourth place, 4,500. Okay. I don't think any of the top four. Drop out of the can top drop four. out of the top four unless um, something crazy happens. Well, hang on, I take that back. That is not correct. Ferris and Flora shot 490 plus 30, so they're now at 2137. So yes, they could move up a spot. They, Ferris and Flora can move from fifth to fourth, but no further. The top three are locked in. The top three. Yep. And bowling for the dub. The so title. We got, we got a three horse race with a game to go. Just like last year. It Is makes that it what fun. It was last year? Yep. Well, nice. The one and two teams had all sorts of not much, any fun, and 
Anderson and Gonzalez, not only did they they jump and win, they had it clear with two frames left that we knew that was going to happen. It was a little bit closer than this, but still. And not to mention, if you are Jarvis and Johnson, even if you only can get the second, it's still an extra 500 a guy. Yeah, every place matters in events like this, you know. Those those spots add up to your total earnings for the weekend, you know. Every bracket. Gazoon tight to Mike. As is gonna finish up four pin, two twenty three. They win. There's a couple plastic balls going down there yep. right now. Uh, Eric Pollock's been throwing his for I better just part of the last hour. I just hour. think that's never necessary, in my opinion. All right, ma know. match play records. We had Johnson and Barta started 0-3. They lost one more to go to 7-4. and four. Jarvis and Johnson, 9-2. and two. Hi, Pac-Man. They lost games 5 and 6, won everything else. Thompson and Troop, only 7-4. and four. But when they won, they shot a whole bunch. Well, Kyle's the MVP of this event because he's averaging 257 or whatever it is yep. for match play. Um, Dan Ferris and Brandon Flora are 9-2. and two. Mike Flanagan. Lee Vidoris. Kevin Williams. I'm Kevin That's Williams. That's us. You know your name. Now you know ours. Thank you for watching. Yeah. How many people are tuned in? 1,500? Yeah, something like that. It's a good number. Six, oh, 1664. What a great year that was. 1664. <laughs> oh, yeah, what happened in 1664? So this land right here, actually, in right. 1664, there were three pilgrims that came across the river. Nice. Right? Uh-huh. And they came back this way because they got scared once they crossed they in. Didn't they saw go. that big arch that wasn't there yet. And <laughs> said, we well, they it. saw it, though. They envisioned it. They did because they were on shrooms. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> so then they came. So then they came back over here, and they settled right here. Uh huh. And they actually made a straw bed right where this booth is. And this is when uh, this is when they decided they were going to grab ten little totem poles, mm -hmm. and they were going to take this block of wood from a tree stump. Uh huh. And they worked on it, and they shaved it around, and made it into a round orb. Okay. And they set up the very first bowling match right here. What was the score of that bowling match? Like 61 they to had an <laughs> they didn't They didn't invent the scoring system yet. Oh, okay. So all they did was just mark it one pin. For every pin. knockdown. Yeah, yeah, it was just so the, a max score there would have been 100. Because uh -huh. it was 10. They said, we're going to throw 10 of these. And it happened right here. And fla wow. flash forward into the, the 90s. Chris Schenkel and Bo Burton were right here oh. for the final match on ABC television between Walter Ray and Pete Weber. So there's a lot of history right here in this sacred ground at St. Clair Bowl. Who was the, what was the name of the two bowlers that first ever bowled a bowling match with bowling? What were their names? With bowling. In 6064. 1664? Yeah, 1664. It was uh, Frank Dogwater. <laughs> I've heard that name before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've heard that you call back before. Yesterday. And it was a co-ed match. It was uh, Sarah Shields. Okay. Who won, though? Sarah. Oh, yeah. handily, right? Yeah, because... Uh, With a score of 30 or... <laughs> no, 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 no. It was... Uh, I mean, look. Uh, it was 50, Let 50, me look. 56-42, Sarah. Wow. Yeah, Sarah 56, Shields. that's a pretty good She score. took down the first ever championship. It was right here. <laughs> The sacred land after seeing the arch that wasn't there on shrooms and came back over here it happened right here unbelievable i mean it's you can't make the this history stuff of up. the game is you can't you literally can't you, make that you up you cannot make you that you can't up. make that up it's impossible that is just actual factual stuff that just happened wow you know i'm not one that knows much about bowling history and by much i know like none at all but now that i know that i really appreciate that i'm a professional bowler right after hearing the first ever match Man, the games came a long way. It really has since taking a tree stump and carving yep. it into an orb. And Did they have weight holes back then too, though? Or? 
Uh, I think they actually had uh, grain holes. Grain uh, holes. Grain holes, yeah, grain holes, yeah. Man. So not only we came all the way from there, apparently, yeah. we had. No, it's not apparently. It's We happen. had two 599 games today. Today. Yeah. Right here. And the third of and the we had They a, would be appalled, honestly, and we had how a, scores are now. The, they, and the third one earlier in the event. And they were all on the four lanes right in front of us. On camera, and we went 0 for 3 for 600. Yeah, we that's did. tough. So I am a firm believer that a trend is your friend. So if a guy walks into 7-Eleven every day at 3.15 and gets a banana Slurpee and does it for 74 Gross. consecutive days. terrible. Seven, banana Slurpee. 74 consecutive days. Would you stand there and bet that he's not coming on the 75th day? No, you wouldn't. No, you would bet that it's going to happen, yeah, right? Yeah, banana slurpee day. Right. So, Which, so no, I I'd, I'd take the odds that he wouldn't show up, pay some people to those delay odds are high, delay him, and then pocket the difference. So 20, that's how this works. Twenty three times in a row, they threw a strike. You wouldn't bet against it on the twenty fourth, right? You would though, because like the moment and pressure and okay stuff, you know. I mean, so, you you ever thrown a shot, Kevin, for six hundred for a doubles event? No. Uh, no. I said no immediately, and then I I think I have bowled 640 over under one time. I don't know, actually. Probably not. No. I don't shoot 300 like that. So back to the banana slurpee situation. Yeah, So gross. are you basically saying that uh, on that particular day there was an ice storm and you would possibly bet against the guy showing up getting a slurpee because there's an ice storm similar to pressure on that last shot here? I mean. Would that be equivalent? No, because I'm trying ice to put storms. apples to apples here. Yeah, banana slurpees to banana slurpees. Yeah, the slurpees to the bowling 600 here. No. You know, like, Fox had the million dollar deal for the couple years, a 300 and a title match of a couple random yeah. events picked. And I said that it was never, the reason they put that up is because they didn't think it was going to happen. Just because of statistics of 300s bold and title matches don't happen very often. Also, no one was gonna. If someone had the front eleven, no one was gonna throw a good shot in that twelfth. I don't. I, I don't think anyone would have. Brian Goble with incentives and all the accelerators and everything at the uh, landmark lanes at the at the uh, True Value Open had a chance for two hundred and fifty thousand and got six against Norm Duke. Yeah, think, just think, no bowlers thrown a shot for that much money and pressure in one shot to have the yeah. front eleven for a million dollars. I don't think anyone. Would have made no, it happen. They you might have gotten lucky. Yeah, you might throw a bad shot. You and might get lucky. throw a bad shot and get Triple, lucky. Triple four but nine six eight whatever. I truly just don't know if anyone would have just like stone thrown a gorgeous shot like yep. in that. Because yep. you've never seen it. Since uh, fifty people have asked in the chat today, this is we got a position round coming and then that's it. We got one more game for all the marbles. Yeah. And by I mean, a marbles, lot of bowling in two well three days now three days of bowling but. Two for the people that bowl on Saturday and Sunday. Well, we're just waiting for the scores to be tabulated. We'll go right out to position round, everybody. Thanks for being with us today on Inside Bowling. I did just get a message from a friend that says, get me on that live feed. I can come up with a better story than that nonsense. Mm. Okay. Well, I dare you. I don't know why you would say it's a story because it's 100 percent true. I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't make that stuff up. No, literally. Right? I mean, it's impossible. It's like what I tell people when they ask, like, what I do for a living. I'm like, I'm a rapping bowler, and they're like, okay, what? Do you? I'm like, I couldn't make that up if I no, tried. I it's exactly. So random. Yeah, there's this guy that was a rapping bowler. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and Sarah Shields won the first bowling tournament ever. You know, like, come on. Facts are facts. And three and three teams shot 599 in the same event. None of them could shoot 600. Right. Yeah. Wooden tree stump. Pressure's too big. Shaped into an orb. Do you guys, have you guys ran out of gifts yet? I know you've had the same gifts I, for I, years. I don't know. I don't know what happened to the gifts. I think there should be about three, four left. I've I never still even. never opened up a gift. The the one time I bowled 300 at this event, you guys didn't have gifts. Why do you say you guys? You're a we part of this have, movement. Okay. You probably had a say in the gifts because that's a no, Mike Flanagan actually, thing. No, I, really? I you can't at, say it's not a Mike Flanagan thing it's to do. It's a cool idea, but I <laughs> it, but I it's, I stay in my lane anymore, man. I well now I promote the tournament. And I just make well, sure it started, it's full. It started and it as a bag of Cheetos, thing. which was it did. you. Yeah, it's grown past See? then. That was true. If you ever shoot 300 and he's around, 
and there's no gifts. Just say, go to the vending machine. Is exactly. it regular Cheetos or Cheeto Puffs? Your choice. Oh, Aren't Cheetos I want the puffy puffs. to begin with. If you want flaming no, hot, the crunchy it's all ones kind of suck, and they're not puffy. Okay, get your Cheeto game right. <laughs> Okay. Cheeto, sorry, I'm sorry to fly off the handle right there. You ever say that sentence before in your life? Get your Cheeto game right. Never, but Cheeto puffs are the best. There, type of there's Cheeto. your next uh, inspiration. You're the meaning in my life. You're the inspiration. Want to hold me, have me near you? Want to hear me near and say yay? No um, someone asked you. about the ball giveaway in the chat. Mike, oh, really? Do you want to fill them in on that? Yeah, because I don't know everything ball, about it. Ball giveaway. Yeah. You call Mike Wolf. That's it. For everyone else, I can give you guys his uh, give you guys his number too. Oh, he look, would love look at, it. Look at this. He would love it if you guys. So this is awful. Him. There's the ball giveaway. Well, you got a hammer billboard on, so I thought I'd put it right <laughs> above right. the billboard. All right. You Wait, uh, right. we're giving away two hammer bowling balls. I get that dome down a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's better. I, I, yeah, thank you, Lee. <laughs> uh, so you can go over to InsideBowling.com and and uh, yeah yeah that those oh, wrong th sleeve. those two balls that one that are just there you, you go get thank you for hammer. Hammer. <laughs> my hand those two balls are available to win uh, on InsideBowling.com you just click on the banner that's there and it, it, you just put in your name and your email address and you answer one one question what is that question the question is where do you buy bowling balls Amazon uh, where do you e buy bowling balls where do where do I buy balls yeah where do you buy bowling balls from I know people. So you don't buy bowling balls? I uh, tip out bowling balls. Wow. Yeah. But if I were to buy a bowling ball, I would head over to InsideBowling.com oh, and cool. buy the ball. Yeah. That's cool. Yep, that's what I would do. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's how you win the ball. We'll be drawn on Monday. There you go. And all of our apparel's 20% uh, off with coupon code HOLIDAY. I love that. I'll put Lee right back on the screen. You guys got some good apparel up there? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go swap the graphic out over there before I forget so you guys can uh, wrap, wrap it out. Maybe you can teach Lee how to wrap while we're waiting. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm simply not going to do that. Nor should you. You know, Ice Ice Baby goes, I went bowling, shot a 2.50, and now I'm here with the scores to show, and that's about all I got. That's about all I wanted to hear, too, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Now, which uh, way did you shoot the 250? The traditional spare strike, spare strike, spare page, or did you, no, or like did you get real hole. creative? When is Kevin going to sample a Barry Manilow song? I don't. I know the name Barry Manilow. I don't know a Barry Manilow song off the top of my head. Could you sing one to me? Do you know no. a Barry Manilow song? Mike, Mike, Mike can. So is Barry Manilow like a? He's like an old school guy. Probably. He's apparently 80. He's apparently. That's your favorite word. Have you ever seen that? Uh, the kid that's like, apparently, I've never been on live television before. I've not. That's. I think that's your long lost son. So we. I want to autograph Kevin Williams' card. Um, you just go to Leaf Trading Cards website and you buy. I think they have packs right now, and then you just hope you get a Kevin Williams trading card. They're in there. I've actually seen a one of one Kevin Williams trading card on eBay for three hundred dollars. So if you want to just pay for that. You can get a one of one. So there you go. Hey, who's Barry Manilow? What's a good Barry Manilow song? You don't know who Barry Manilow is? I know is? the name, but like, give me a song. Everyone's judging me now. Look, guys. I, I write the songs. Barry Manilow. So here's Barry Manilow right here. I took that photo when I saw him in his residency. Wait, hold on. What? You just pulled up a Barry Manilow photo that fast? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been the theme of the weekend. Barry oh, Manilow. okay. Very, this, very, this that this makes more sense. Friday, I was like, you're good at this. Friday, <laughs> very, Friday night, this lasted for two, <laughs> two, two and a half hours. Very, oh, I'm very sorry Christmas. I brought it back up. Hey, he's got a special Monday night. Monday night on NBC. Very, very Christmas. I won't be watching. Why not? Yeah. I am. I'm watching. What's yeah, a song by Barry Manilow? So his most famous songs, uh, in my opinion, would I just be want one. I Write the Songs. How's it go? I write the songs to make the whole world sing. I write the songs and everything. Yeah. I've never heard I, that I write song. the songs that make the whole world cry. I've never heard that. Or make the young girls cry, I'm sorry. No, I don't know who Barry Manilow is. I mean, I know the name, guys, but sorry. Right. He's the man. Well, I'll and take then your Mandy, word for it. And Mandy Copacabana. You ever heard Copacabana? Yeah. At the Copa. Copacabana. Yeah, I've heard that one. That one I've heard. The hottest spot north of Havana here at, yep. Weekend in New England. Kevin, how good is Ethereum? I've thrown it once. It rolled really good. Sick loft by me. Thank you. I only have so much in, in me to loft it anymore. I just can't do it. 
Mandy is another favorite. Man, I see that. People saying Mandy. You should do a Mandy, like, rap. You just want me to rap on here, don't you? I know it's what the people want. How happy you made me, oh, Mandy. Mandy, 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 Mandy. Is that, is that it? Um, when you came and you gave without taking and I sent you away, oh, Mandy. That's how it goes. It makes it really hard to, like, know that I know the song when you just talk instead of, like, singing actually how it goes. Like, if I just said a song, but I'm just talking. There you go. Let's hear it. I remember all my life. Yeah. Raining down as cold as ice. Uh-huh. Shadows in the... Mm, I forget the mm, next part. It's tough. Hey, guess what, guys? And nothing is rhyming, oh, man. The position round is upon Thank us. Thank goodness. It is upon us. You don't have to listen to me not knowing who Barry Manilow and Mandy Manny Mandy is anymore. Very, very Christmas. Monday they are night. throwing some practice shots. I don't know how much one, practice shots they get. One ball. One ball each lane. lane. And do we have the scores? You have them tallied up. Yep, so Whoever wins between Kyle Troop, Jared Thompson versus Liz and Adam. Adam Barta, Liz Johnson, if you guys don't know the last names of those great bowlers. Whoever wins that match is probably going to win the event. They will, so long as Stephen Jarvis and AJ Johnson don't, don't pass the ball. Huge game, and they bowl. Which is exactly what happened last year. Yeah, I, I don't think I see that happening this year, only because Kyle and Jared just bowled on this pair, and they just shot 500. So even if they bowl close to that, you would have to have AJ and them bowl a enormous game to do that. So Adam Barta and Liz Johnson bowled on this pair in games two and seven. In game two, they shot 502. And in game seven, they shot 524. Now, those were a while ago. Yeah. But I'd rather have some confidence than well, none at all. It's true. If you're striking, you know, it might there might be a little bit of a theme, but um, man, so much has happened then. As we're getting right into it, or are we not? No, we're not. One I ball, one ball per lane, and then we. It looked like they were keeping score. Liz just struck in her one ball. I'm surprised that Adam and Liz, Liz haven't won this event yet. I think it's their time. I think they're due. They are due. They finished second yeah. twice, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, two or three times. So yeah, 502 with a loss for, for Liz and Adam on this lane and four, 494 with a win. Forget it counts bonus pins. Troop and Thompson, 567 plus 30. And, five, and that was way back earlier in the morning. Yeah, it's a pretty irrelevant score at this point because it's lanes. The lanes are just a whole nother ball game. But that was the match that these guys bowled each other. Yeah. It was 567 for Troop and Thompson to 502 for Johnson and Barta. That's when they bowled each other. It was about 930 this morning, but it was on this pair. Yep. Competition has begun. Liz started with a strike. Jared started with a strike. All right, before we, we get too deep into it, Oh, I love to see that. My Falcons just scored. Um, what is going to be the winning score of the first and second place team here, Mike? You're good at this. What's it going to take to win this game in this position round? 483. 483 you think is going to be the winner? Yeah. And if you were right, that means that AJ and Steven would have to bowl 550-something to win to go past them which is a tall task. Well, but they almost had that on the board. Yeah, they're behind Thompson and Troop by 66. Yeah, they would need to be and by behind 66. Liz and Adam by 54. 483. I think it's going to be a little bit more than that, honestly. I think it's going to take like 508 to win. Yeah. I would I would take the over on over 483. 43. I would as well. I have to text Juwan that the Falcons just scored to take the lead by three. 483. Liz starts off with an early double. Oh, 
do want to sincerely thank everybody for watching this event all weekend. We are in our last game. I want to thank Kevin Williams for being here as well. Lee Bedoris anchoring this booth with me ever since Friday. I really do appreciate it, Lee, and to all the guests that we've had here in the booth. Jerry Anderson, of course, for having the event. Matt Schellebarger for hosting the event. He and his staff have done a tremendous job here at St. Clair Bowl. And, of course, Hammer for sponsoring this year's Holiday Doubles. Eighth year in a row for Hammer. Yeah, you guys do a good job, as always. Thank you for doing what you guys do. Thank you for running your event and having us there as well. It makes well. a difference. It ma this stuff makes a difference. Sure does. Even if people can't show up or, you know, even watching and supporting, you know, being able to tune in and watch these guys do what they do week in and week out and uh, you guys being as good as you are at commentating, it's fun. This is a fun weekend. I always have a good time here, whether I bowl good or not. It's fun to see all the faces, see all the strikes, see the different names that win this event. You know, you don't always see the household names win this event at times. Guys that people might not know that, you know, guys that are Hall of Famers that I didn't know about. It's cool to see people like that come out here and strike. There's about six plastic balls going down the lane, like for strike shots. I just don't think it's necessary, but, you know, I'm not one bowling in finals, so what do I know? Adam, the only one to not have a double to start on they've 29 been, and they've 30. They've been so close of the, that's nice to winning this event it's, they're so due. many times. They're due. But they've got Tall task. a mighty foe. Tall task. That was not close. Baby split for Jared in the third. He's missed a couple single pins. So this might be a little tougher spare for him to convert as Adam is looking like he's going to re-rack it. There's a handful of pairs that have some racks that are just a little off, and every hit matters when the scores are as high as they are. You know, 250 and 270 is one bad rack. AJ just splits. I, I don't think that, good spare by Jared. I don't think that the third place team can get there. I mean, they, they really can't have many misses. They would have to have a 550 game with a win. They're already looking at an open here. Yeah, and, and they've got one strike through four frames. So still, every every spot counts. Adam, Adam, Adam is still in his holiday doubles ball that he brings in every He's now year. He's got 310 games on Yeah, him. about yeah, 310 <laughs> games. Obsession tour. AJ just missed the whole... He has ten. to go. I mean, in that spot, you have little to lose and everything to gain for going for it. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But you also don't want to drop down too many spots yeah, either. They, I, I it, guess they are pretty. It high doesn't up. matter unless they lose this match by almost seventy. Okay. Kyle four pins, and that's important because that's a momentum. That's a momentum stopper. Yep. Both miss in the third. Adam's gone nine spare, nine spare strike. I didn't see what those nine spares were. How and crazy Liz, is it? Three. After all these games. We've got a difference of 12 pins between these two so teams. So crazy every year. You just the bonus pins, bowling different people on different pairs. It's just hard to just run away with this event. The scores are too high. I mean, you would have to bowl ridiculously good to just run away with this event. I mean, you'd have to both average 250, which is just so hard to do. If you were to handicap this game, Kevin, okay, you've got Kyle Troop, top five bowler in the world. Yep, bowling with. Top five bowler in Texas, uh -huh. right? Amateur player. Okay. Then you've got Adam Barta, top five amateur bowler in the Nation. country. Yeah, probably. With one of the top two female bowlers of all time. Yep. Where would you set the odds either way in a book? Is it minus one ten either way? I think it's pretty even money. I, I, yeah. Because you got to give experience to Adam and Liz. They've been doing it longer. Um, where Kyle obviously has experience. He's bowled on the highest stage and whatever. But yep. um, you got to give it the edge to um, Liz and Adam. They've been here more often. Okay. And But also Jared and Kyle are young, and they're in what would be their prime. So I think it's, I think it's minus 110. I think it's even money both ways. All right. I think it's two pins difference, plus and minus two pins. I'll give the plus two pins to, to uh, Liz and Adam. Only because they're the two seed. I would give them the plus two pins this match. Yeah. And remember, if there's a tie, Thompson and Troop win. Because you just split the bonus pins. Yep. 
We have not had a tie all day long. Oh, oh my almost goodness. a seven nine for Barda. Fortunate just to leave the nine. Oh my goodness, that they was could have struck brutal. too. Jarvis gonna Messenger? roll that. Nar. No. Big Nar. Jarvis and uh, AJ are kind of starting to run out of some room here early. I, they are. I, I, I don't think they had any room to miss. They only had two misses they could give up. They needed a 550 because I think these guys are going to shoot 510 to win this match first and second place. All right, Liz, front four. Looking to make it front five. Keep her partner in this as he's got a couple taps through four frames. He's close, just can't quite get him to fall. This pattern did um, Flat oh, tan. did yeah. did transition, but I, I'm very happy to see that this has not turned into a loft contest. This pattern is not really up very a loft nice contest, today. but you, there also is some plastic balls going down the lane. And they're, stuff. they're hooking. I mean, no question. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but it's not like everyone's just throwing it halfway down the lane. Exactly. As he, Jared, almost baby splits again, leaves a two pin. That's going to tell me that that left lane's hooking more for him. I, I didn't really see that shot, but I know the one in the third was a bad shot. It was yeah. missed. But you, unless you just know you threw it awful, you got to make the move. you got to trust that it's also the lane as well as maybe not a very good effort. So he's going to run down this two pin, I would assume, yep. make a little bit of a move. That's not the lane he finishes on. That might matter here in a little bit. Yep. I, I, that, there's a limit to Jared's game on how much he can move right because he just he throws it so hard and he doesn't have a high rev rate that there's going to be a point where he gets too deep and his ball's going to flat seven some. So I don't know if he just balls down from the same spot so he gets through that spot a little easier. I would assume that's probably what his, his move would be is he'd try to stay in that same spot, throw something cleaner, and try to get away from that two pin reaction that he has. Kyle looking to get a double in the fifth. Missed in the third on this frame, on this lane last frame. Oh, he's feeling it. Slaps it out. I think that leg's Talks okay. A little stuff. <laughs> I think the leg's just fine. It's love to see that. I hate, hate to see that he would have tweaked his knee on some freak little slide stick situation. All right, Adam, can't quite get him to fall with his 310 games That's bowling good. ball. That's good. Man. I think it's got to be a ball change at this point. No, he, he no, he's sticking with his rock. Is he? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a zone, it's a small zone yeah. change. He's pulled it's it's a speed change. He's not going to take his he's fall sick. out of his hand. Oh. He's pulled 25 games in the last 24 hours with that bowling ball. Look, here's he so here's my opinion on this is he's a good enough bowler, he's a great bowler that you can't have one strike through five frames and not miss the hole when you're down trying to win an event against people who are striking. You can't just tweak because if he doesn't ball change here and he ends up shooting two, 207 because he can't get more than nine very often, you, you don't oh. want to say what if because you because you have the wrong ball in your hands. He's good enough. You got a ball change. You got to be aggressive. No. Yeah. I don't think he, I don't. I, he's just he's just gonna make a little little change. You think? With, with, yeah, with his release, he may move a little right. I mean, whatever it is, you got to trust the process. But um, I would hate to see him throw the same ball. And if he has three strikes by the end of the game for 190, it just. You would hate to see that because he's good enough to throw a different ball and make an adjustment. But, you know, I also could be wrong. He has a very simple game. So maybe a one-in-one -one move or a little bit of a hand change to roll a little more forward or something is the huge difference for him. Everyone's game's a little different. But me personally, I got to see a ball change right now. If I'm his teammate, I got to say, hey, man, I don't think that ball's going to be it. You've, you have one for five right now. So here comes, but we'll see. Here comes Kyle. He's got the... 279 still left. Yeah, it didn't look great. No. Cut it off. You can tell in this you can tell in this follow through. Kind of cut it a little short. When he throws it good, he keeps that hand right in front of his face. That one he kind of fluffed it out there. When he sticks with the same ball. Jerome and Howard are, are, are they're flirting with the idea of possibly getting a third. Well, they have 590 left. Oh, no, looking at the wrong score. It's Ferris and Flora who have 590 left who can come get Jerome and Howard, so yep. they got to pay attention to that. 
I guess Kyle Farish Oliver and Flora could get the third. Because Jarvis and AJ are not bowling yeah. much right now. But if Jerome and Howard win and stay ahead of them, they can only get the fourth. But it's certainly live. Yeah, I'm just saying if they bowl yeah. 590. Take your, you get what you, <laughs> you take your chances, right? If it's not good enough, it's not good enough. Did all you could. Jerome looking to pick up the bucket. He does. He hasn't struck on that left lane. Looks like it's a little tricky for him. All right, Liz. Back-to-back -back 10 pins. The last 10 pin on this lane was a flat 10. She got it in a little bit. Just didn't quite want to do the right thing in the middle part of the lane. That one's in. Lays there. In the right spot. Here's Lays what we're there. talking about, folks. 590 is a big score. It'll definitely get you where you need to go. They can't get to the win, but every spot matters. Well, we look uh, at it and look what Twitter. happens. Yep. Just like what all we can. Now, this is not. This is exactly what I'm talking a, about. This is not a gimme spare for Jared either. That's exactly what I'm talking Got about. It. I didn't see it, but I assume that he probably moved in a little bit off the two pin, two pin reaction. And his ball, it just it doesn't have much time to hook because he just doesn't have a lot of rev rate and he throws it so fast, so hard. I think he moved in to that oil and his ball just never saw it soon enough and he bucketed. So Jared's struggling on the left lane. You don't like to see the two pin, three pin reaction. <laughs> You know, it's a big difference Especially between a not 10 now. and a 4-pin. 10-pin, 4-pin reaction for the righties. 7-pin, 6-pin for the lefties. See if Barta can get his first double. And he does. Looks like he's stuck with the ball. I don't know what I'm talking about. Mike knows everything. All right. Bro, that's so crazy. I just keep looking at yeah. Jacob and just striking with a plastic ball from 20. It's All right. Kyle Troop, double spare. Double spare. He gave that one room. A little better. That was nice. Halfway to a double. A little bit better. So, max scores. 238 for Jared Thompson, 257 for Kyle Troop. Is uh -oh. Jared just six oh boy. eights? I think it's Liz and Adam's time. I think it is. They They're, can put all the pressure in the world with a strike apiece here to put doubles left. up. Yep, 68 and 48. 68, 48. I said 510 would win. 509, 510 would win. It's about where they can get to. Oh, that's frozen. Oh. Yes. Buried. <laughs> That's her thing. That's her trick. Oh, we need Elsa. We need Elsa around here because that one was frozen. That rope was no frozen. No way the Bucks scored. Yep. Kate Otten. But there's a flag. All right, Jared needs to pick this. He's hooking at it. Oh, he oh, got it. Huge what a spare huge conversion. Huge pick. Keeps that a minute. Is massive. Keeps a minute. That may be the slowest ball he's thrown the Ever entire of tournament. His whole career. And he comes that up with the 6 8 when he needs it the most. That was very impressive. It's hard to do hooking at it, especially when his ball doesn't hook a whole lot. So he doesn't really know what his ball's going to do covering that many boards. Here it is again. This is the uh, Hammer Tough Spare replay of the day. It's a six, really good eight. spare. He would have got Big the seven, moment. too, if it was there. Big moment. Adam did strike, by the way. It was 10 back. Big moment. But also, at the same time, too, you, you can't forget that, you know, he hasn't struck very much in the last five frames. It was a good spare, but got to throw some strikes here to finish this out. In a little bit for Kyle. That's the miss. There's a little bit of... There's a little bit of oil still in the middle part of the lane. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. Pretty impressive, honestly, how much oil there is in the middle part of the lane still. My nice shot for AJ. All right. Three pin or two pin, two pin bucket for Jared. What's the move here? Got it a little left. Oh, shaker five, shaker five pin, and it's it's not and gonna it's fall. Not gonna pick it that up. could have been a strike. It could have been a five six ten. Instead, yeah. it's just the just the nickel. 
Yeah, he's just throwing it so hard. His, bo his ball's just not trying to change direction enough. Just a little bit. Elizabeth in the ninth. Bang. Yo. See, real, real quick, take a look over here. Yeah, they're striking 79, 290 left. They're going to make a big jump. Oh, look at that. Chip four pin. Jared did cover the five pin. Jared only has 215 left. His partner, 257. Liz and Adam are... This shot right here in the ninth is pretty much going to lock it up. I don't see Liz or Adam really doing any disaster split. They just keeping the ball in front of them, keeping it in play. I don't, I don't see anything crazy happening from them. Only thing here is maybe a wrap 10 from Adam. It's pretty good. It looks great. It's pretty good. And what he did is he, he moved his eyes a little right, stayed in the same spot. Yep. Got Started the read to just a, a little, little bit. Sooner. Yep, that's it. Yep. You're right. Yep. Liz and Adam. This might be this it. This might be the year. I don't want to say I called it, but I did call it like five games ago or something. Sparta Nation and the GOAT. Liz Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> if Troop and Thompson want any chance, Kyle must we strike, have to strike out. right now. A miss here locks it up for Adam and Liz. Pretty good. Kyle with the strike. It's not no, over yet. No, they can you, get to you need help. So they can get to 82 over, Troop and Thompson. Need them all. And uh, now let's 71. I just don't think it's going to be enough. You, you you need to open now from either a Liz Johnson or a Adam Barta. I don't think to that's going to happen. To win a tournament. Uh, yeah, and, and also on top of them even opening, they're both on four baggers and three baggers. So no. they haven't missed a hole yet through nine no. frames. By the way, Packy had 173, Cam Doyle 279, 278 for... Daniel Farish and Flora can now bowl to 69. Buttress working on 290. It's pretty good. Greg Thompson, 205. Great shot. And Liz strikes and first shot says, in yes. the 10th. A little emotion from Liz. That's going to do it. He's at 250. Even if Adam opens, he's in the two teens. Well, I guess it's not technically over. Considering the bowlers who are throwing the shots yeah. and the look they've got. Yeah, I'm just going to assume. I, I, I think the worst that happens here is a 10-pin, 10 10-pin 10 from Liz and Adam, and they clean it up. But I don't even think that's yeah. going to well, happen. You know, Troop and, yeah. um, and Thompson can only get to 61. Yep. Liz has got that by herself. Yep. Adam has 28-58, 188 with count Even blocks. if he opens, yeah. Mm -hmm. Liz and Adam. After a couple second places in their career in holiday doubles, they've been bowling. They finally they have been chop bowling, up a win. They've been bowling this event since it was back at Redbird. I do probably miss 2014, Redbird. 15. I do miss Redbird. I don't know. They probably found out about it from Mike Flanagan here at InsideBowling.com. Good time to leave the mixer seven. 267 for the goat. When you need it most, she <laughs> she throws ten strikes. Nine strikes. Still really good bowling from Kyle and Jared. I mean, really good bowling. Kyle and Jared almost went back to back inside bowling events. Yeah. They won the Nightmare Doubles. And, you know, today was kind of a weird day for them, for me. Um, when Kyle bowled 170 over here on 37 and 8, and he's the high average in the house today. By a lot. That was very bizarre. And then and then just dealing with that, and then the, the, the sticking issue earlier yep. where he stuck and tweaked his knee, but yet he's just persevered, and they are just going to come up just a little bit short. They just they got out bowled and outscored in this final game. Yep. Cobbled sick, though. He's the only one that's going to average 250 in match play, and he averaged 257. And and uh, and that's no and that's no slam on on Jared because no, Jar not Jared at bowled it's awesome a team as event. well. 235.6 today for yeah, Jared. That's unbelievable. Awesome. They both bowled really good. This is just a hard event to win. Too much talent. Adam. Too many strikes. That'll do it. There we go. It's a dub. Adam and Liz catch a dub. Adam and Liz are your 2023 
Hammer Holiday Doubles Champions. How about that? Are we shocked? No, no we're not. Take a Buttruff 290 <laughs> to finish. Yep, Buttruff, that was 290 for him. Well, fellas, I gotta go catch a flight. I'm glad I got to. Likewise, thanks for stopping come by. Do this and see the win. I had nothing else to do. Yeah, I've, thanks for I've coming in, Kevin. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, and it's we appreciate fun. being involved in your event every year and down yeah. in Springfield. And looking forward to seeing you in February at, at the event there for yeah. the PBA. Yeah, I'm ready for all the stuff and things. The tour season is upon us. And uh, we got a new look at the PBA League. That's fun. I'm excited for that. Yeah. So I'm sure I'll be seeing you here very soon. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate you guys. Kevin Williams, everybody, right. spending time with us during match play. Much appreciated. Brings a nice perspective to our broadcast. Always does a great job. Hats off to Kyle Troop and Jared Thompson on a second place finish here. At least tabulating all the scores. We'll have it for you here. And we'll bring in our winners, Adam Barta and Liz Johnson for an interview here in just a moment. We thought it might take a bunch. 67-47, 5 plus 30, 144. Johnson and Barta plus 24, 75. Thompson and Troop, 24, O one. Jerome and Howard are going to shoot sixty four over to get them to twenty two thirty three. So they did drop a spot. Well, they really didn't drop a spot. Farish and Flora took it from them by shooting five forty seven. Now what can Johnson and Jarvis get? 94, 44. So 244 for AJ with the strike. 236 already posted for Jarvis. So this would be 110, 23, 87. Johnson and Barta, your winners, plus 2475. Jared Thompson, Kyle Troop, second, plus 2401. Jarvis and AJ Johnson held third, 2387. Farish and Flora up a spot, 2314. Rich Jerome and Jason Howard built fantastic all day. They were in second for most of the first half, if not more. Finished fifth, 2233. Not sure about the rest. We're going to tabulate the scores and do some announcements and prizes on the lanes. And then Mike and I will have the long awaited interview with Adam Barta and Liz Johnson as holiday doubles champions. Man, that is a fantastic sentence to be able to say. Yep, we've been Lee. trying to get this for most of the time we've been involved. Better part of the last decade. They finished second a couple times. Yep, and Liz has even had uh, situations where she hasn't been able to come in and bowl due to, like, Team USA or other requirements. Um, I think it was uh, might have even been World Championships. So uh, they haven't been able to bowl every year, but they take it down here. I'm going to go get Adam and Liz at this time, Lee. All right.
Check, check. Okay, they are on their way. I have been. I, I've, I haven't even bothered you at all. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna go we're gonna go three way here. Actually, four way with Lee. All right, let's see here. We will bring it into La Booth. Lee, I have a massive head, and your head must be bigger than mine. This is loose. Are you wearing these? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Ladies Lord. and gentlemen, uh, we have our champions here, and it's been a long time coming for these oh, two. Boy. They finished second a couple times in this event. We got Liz Johnson, Adam Barda. Guys, congratulations on winning this one. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mike. What I a got, day. Crazy. I got to ask you, you know, I guess we start with, how, how did you guys even get paired up together to begin with back in the day? I don't even know. I know. Oh, he remembers. I remember everything. If you ask my wife, Marcy, it's disturbing. Um, but we were bowling the Bud Light Challenge, and we were bowling. We were crossing together, and we... Liz had said there's this doubles tournament that's out near uh, St. Louis area in Illinois, and um, would I have any interest in bowling with her? And it took, about, it took me about, I don't know, three seconds to say yes. That long? <laughs> Ten minutes. So, um, no. I mean, anytime you get an opportunity that, uh, without a doubt, the best woman bowler to ever touch a bowling ball asks you to bowl a tournament, I don't care if it's in uh, the middle of Russia, I'm going to go bowl it. I'm going to write so that down. Russia. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> We're going to get him to Russia, I guess. He's not going to Russia. <laughs> yeah, maybe not this time of year yeah. or this time. but Somewhere. I'll go anywhere with you, Liz. <laughs> and, 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 Liz, I haven't been out on a PWBA tour the last mm -hmm. couple of years, but, you know, you came out like a, like a house of fire when they relaunched that tour. You're player of the year, back-to-back -back years. Mm -hmm. You're bowling really well. And I haven't, I haven't seen you up near the top of the leaderboard on a consistent basis here. But then – we get this win here today, and you've got the tour coming up next season. This sure. should help catapult you along. I thought you threw the ball so well today. Thank you. Fundamentally. Where's your game at now, and, and do you agree with some of those things? I mean, I feel pretty good. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, I feel pretty good. I mean, I do my, you know, when I'm home, uh, off season or whatever, I do my a lot of walking and exercising and try to keep my legs in shape and you know 50s coming around the corner pretty soon so um yeah I just try to stay in shape and, and bowl as much as I can when I'm not when there's no actual tournaments going on or any little things that are going on so um but I have a big trip coming up this week uh, I'm going to Korea in a couple of days so this uh kind of gives me a little extra incentive and a uh, little confidence uh, going into that as well yeah, I was even talking about that. Uh, you guys didn't get to bowl together because you had some uh, other events yeah. overseas. Yeah, over I the missed. Years. Uh, we've been we started bowling in 2012, and I missed a couple years because uh, I ended up going to Korea. I think it was two years in a row. And uh, fortunately, I said I told Adam, it's like if you want to bowl, find another partner. You're you know it's up to you. He says no, I'm not bowling. So. You know, he waited for me, and uh, we got to bowl again. And uh, you know, thankfully, we 2023 finally did it. So. Adam, talk me through the last game. You're you're going to the pair where the guys you're trying to catch already bowled yep. 500 while they were waiting for you. Your carry at the beginning of the game wasn't that great. Looks like you're throwing it well. Talk me through your th your thought process there. No, I mean it's just I mean the entire tournament. I mean the scoring pace is high, but um, you know you just you got to give your ball a chance every ball and just yeah you know, like you said the beginning part of that match it was four pin four pin and i'm like okay well the pair obviously hooks more but the problem that i had throughout the tournament was that when i moved too far left it would just because the ball i was throwing just it wouldn't get through the pins right so i was afraid to flat 10 so i was just making small moves to that point and um you know just when, when you have liz who's continuing to strike and keeping that pressure on the on the other team and give me a chance to get you know, lined up and just kind of never give up. I mean, that's that's the thing in these these kinds of tournaments or any tournament. I mean, just you never ever ever give up. You just never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, Liz, Liz and I have been around a long time. I can't tell you how many times when I was younger, you think you're out of a tournament and you go up there and you're just jacking around and you don't care. And then then your opponent gets up in big fours and you look up and you're like, oh well, if I would have actually tried there, I could have like advanced. You know, so it's just. So much on the line, but you don't want to let you know your partner down, and um, never you know want to do that. But um, yeah, I just got fortunate enough to get in the right spot and strike some more toward the end of the game. So, how's this feel for you guys to get this W? Oh, 
pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm about Adam. It's pretty awesome. No, it's awesome. I mean, like I was telling those guys, I mean, this tournament has come a long way. I mean, 230 teams. Um, and, and a waiting two, list. And 150 long teams list. on a waiting list. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, you, if anybody could argue that it's the strongest field in the country of any doubles tournament. I don't think anybody could argue that. I mean, yeah, it's 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 on a house shot, but you know, you're getting teams from what, probably 30 states, come bowl this tournament. We had everything from California to Maryland okay. and everything in between. So, I mean, that that's a testament to to everybody. I mean, Jerry, his staff, you guys. I mean, um, I mean, look how well the the live stream is done, and um, it's it's just an unbelievable tournament. It, it's a huge accomplishment to win it, um, and. You know, I do want to tell you, Mike, I was actually in the uh, on driving on the way here. Uh, Mike, I have to give you a lot of credit. Uh, you know, you you started back in the Reed Hawthorne days when you were pushing inside bowling. And, yep. and you know, you never, ever, ever gave up. You, you continue to keep your eye on the prize. And you've done so well through the, even the bowling transitions with acquisition, acquisitions and mergers. And, you know, just I, I can't. Thank you enough for what you do for the bowling world. Um, you know, you give friends and family the ability to tune in and watch from, you know, their home, their phone. And, uh, I mean, just keep keep doing what you're doing. It's it's great. Yeah, I was just thinking about you, Liz. I remember we were at South Point when I was working in a storm. We were talking about your contract at the table there, right, oh, at the yeah. deli. And, I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I still remember that. You know, I think about you all the time. And you're right, I've had a, I've had a lot of different uh, jobs and a lot of different things in the bowling industry, but inside bowling's been my baby all along, and this has just been a lot of fun. It's people like Lee and all the other people just come sit in the booth and everything that make this thing so great. I'll, I'll just get, give you one one final question here before we get out of here. I think they want to pay you some money. I know you guys need to hit the road, but uh, but Liz, this one here, bowling, bowling with Adam and, and this event here, uh, just if you can wrap it up with a, with a bow and a ribbon and mm-hmm. uh, thank all your sponsors, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, uh, got to thank Adam. You know, there's no better doubles partner than Adam Barta. You know, uh, you always have the confidence when he gets up on the approach. But uh, I'd like to thank him. Uh, Storm Products, Turbo Grips, uh, You Can Bowl 2 Pro Shop, Don and Carol, uh, for drilling that phase two and uh, my all time, one of my all time favorite balls. Yeah. So. H5G and um, all my sponsors. So uh, thank you very much for that for them. I wouldn't be here either. So a lot of support, Adam. For you, uh, I mean, first and foremost, my family, uh, friends back home. Um, I mean, the, the support group that I have is is uh, in all of my 48 kids. Uh, now, I mean, <laughs> hi Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, it's, I mean, to get to bowl with you know Liz Johnson. I mean, we're we're great friends and and. And, you know, she's a better human than she is a bowler, and that tells you a lot. Um, but, you know, w- without the support um, uh, of, my, of my family and my friends back home, I mean, it's, this stuff doesn't happen. I mean, Hammer, I've been with Hammer for 23 years. Um, and through the acquisition after Brunswick bought, um, you know, Ebonite and all the brands, uh, there was uncertainty of what was going to happen. And, um, you know, I was afraid, just like everybody else was afraid, but I could tell you that, you know, Brian Graham, Bugsy Kelly, uh, Dave Kloss, uh, all those guys welcome me with open arms, and um, I can't thank them enough for all that they do for me as far as, you know, supporting my all of my endeavors, the, the, the contests on social media, um, Coolwick, and Turbo. I mean, uh, and it's funny, real quick, Mike, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You actually helped me get signed to Turbo staff. I remember that. Remember at, that? We at, were in the, the booth at the with, Proprietor's Cup, right? With Lori Lauren, Mraz. Lori Mraz was in the booth, yeah. yeah. And what a great time. And, you know, she looked over and she goes, are you on an accessory staff? And I go, <laughs> that I go right. no. She goes, well, guess what? You are now. And it was, what a sweetheart she is, though. What a great family. And, um, and like, these staffs, it's, for me, it, it's not, to be on staff is a privilege. It's not, um, it's not something that... Uh, you know, you, you, you don't, you never take for granted, and, and I'm, I'm just fortunate to be part of these staffs, and I, I treat it as a family. It's not, it's not a job. It's just being part of a family. Well, you guys I, are part of our like InsideBlowing.com family, so thank you. thank you, Lee. I just want to give a real shout out to Jerry. Jerry, I mean, oh, yeah. you can't say enough about Jerry Anderson. So thank you very much and St. Clair Bowl for letting us uh, bowl this weekend. Guys, it's been real. Thank you so much. I hope to see you next year. I hope there's no conflicts, and we know you. Lo- we know that uh, we love you guys, and, and you got a lot of fans out there as well. So congratulations. You guys earned it. Long time coming, and uh, have a safe trip home, and happy holidays to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Marcy, uh, Logan, Blake, Brooks, Lofton, Loren, I'll see you in about 
17 hours on my road trip. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Love you guys. guys. All right. Uh, that's going to do it, everybody. Uh, that's uh, Adam Barda and uh, Liz Johnson, your 2023 champions here at the Hammer Holiday Doubles. And uh, it is a family here, and it is a great community that we have, all of you online as well as us right here. I'm going to step away for just a second, see what Jerry needs, and then uh, we will wrap up this broadcast. Okay, they want me to make announcements here, so I'm going to get out of here uh, as quick as I possibly can. One other uh, little tidbit that Jerry did let me know that I failed to mention is uh, Liz Johnson is the second female to ever win uh, this tournament here. Uh, Devira Buckley also won with uh, Terry Jones several years ago. Uh, so t TJ and uh, Devira, and now uh, Liz, Liz Johnson is uh, the second female winner here all time at the uh, Holiday Doubles. Uh, I, don't I don't know how to look. Give me a second. Uh, okay, uh, Lee, that's going to do it for, for the broadcast, bud. You got any closing thoughts? 21 was the final number for 300 games for those out there curious about that. And just happy to see Liz and Adam win. They've become friends of ours through this event. Been trying for so many long, long years, second, two or three times. Happy for them. Yeah, I am as well. And we're happy for you, the audience, for getting to watch such great bowling out there on the lanes. Don't forget, we still got a few promos with our sponsor, Hammer. You can still get in the bowling ball giveaway all the way through today. We'll be drawing tomorrow for the hazmat and the new blue hammer. You can check it out at InsideBowling.com. You can still save 20% T-shirts and hoodies over at InsideBowling.com as well with coupon code HOLIDAY that's down the bottom left of the screen. So we want to thank Matt Schellebarger, his entire staff here at St. Clair Bowl. I want to thank Lee Bedoris for being here with me all weekend long, being my rock. And I also want to thank Jerry Anderson and his entire tournament staff for all the work that they did. And, of course, Hammer one more time for being our title sponsor. So that's going to do it. We're going to get out of here, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have a good day. Have a very happy holidays. We'll see you after the first of the year. Our next broadcast on Inside Bowling that we know of will be in February from Waterloo, Iowa. It'll be the Ebonite Winter Classic. Have a good day, everybody. We will see you on our next broadcast. Take care.